Ringo TV Reactions, back at you again with another one. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Let's get to work. Just one question. Uh, from your experience with Pastor Dow in Strayway, where do you feel, if, if the, first of all, do you believe the allegations is true, that he took another man's wife? Um, but where do you think he got the scriptural understanding? Because I know, I think a day ago, I saw a video of him challenging uh, Ringo TV on a debate in regards to this whole allegation of him committing adultery. He feel he did not commit adultery and he feels that he would like to have a debate with Ringo about this subject. From your experience with him, where do you see where he will grab the, you know, he would scrap the lead that understanding. Did you ever had a conversation with him or there was a lesson you witnessed that would give you some insight what, what why he believes he didn't? He actually broke it down in this video saying how he don't believe that uh, secular marriage licenses are from Yah. So if you got a marriage license in the world, he don't believe that's being you put together by Yah. When you got married, I'm talking to everybody out there. When you got married, you can only get married one or two ways. That's it. Either you got married by the state and you reside, or either you drew up your own contract and agreement, and you and your woman signed it, and it was honored by Yah. The majority of you people out here, I would say probably have a secular marriage license. If you have a secular marriage license, then who presides over that contract or that agreement? The state does. So you have no power to dissolve any damn thing without the authority of the state. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenants with the foreign people of this land and 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenants with the foreign people of this land and 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. And you believe that you're married under Yah, you're deceived. You're greatly deceived. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You see, if a man has one wife on paper, a state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in this land. It's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of Yah. He's because he has not sinned. Yo, nigga, buy that paper. Real TV. Yo, nigga, buy that paper. True man, I'm free. I wake up a new episode. I pop out cleaners, keep me up a level though. She talked to me like I'm not me, I get it though. Yeah, I'm so eclectic, I'm me to the credits. Roll talk down to me, they might have this in medical. I'm out the league, I'm OD, they pathetic though. Look how I move, I'm protected. Shawty so soon in my presence. The world going through it outside, they ain't really, but I keep it cool, they can't press me. I keep it pure with intention. They see what I'm on, ain't no victim. I might slide through with that top down. I keep it tuned with a iPad. Put it on me, I'm blessed. Yeah, nigga, blessed. No stress, keep no evil around me, can't ground me. I've built it since when I had less. No hex on God, can't pause, nigga. Look at how far we progress. Whatever we doing, we keeping it fluid. I don't see a thing about that paper. Real TV. Don't think about that paper. 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 Hop on that jet, I just switch to the coast. 
whatever kind I've been playing that role They paid me to play me, I needed it for It's real if I said I'm at what I spoke I'm legend, it's written, I shake up the city's been blocked till I'm dizzy, won't ever go broke I'm chose, I must like the way that top down I keep in tune with a high power Put it on me, I'm blessed Young nigga blessed Big bag, manifest the sky, no stress Keep no evil around me, can't ground me I built it since when I had this No hex on God, can't pause Nigga, look at how far we progress Whatever we doing, we keeping it fluid I don't see a thing about that baby Just one question. Uh, from your experience with Pastor Dow in Strayway, where do you feel, if, if the, first of all, do you believe the allegations is true, that he took another man's wife? Um, but where do you think he got the scriptural understanding? Because I know, I think a day ago, I saw a video of him challenging uh, Ringo TV on a debate in regards to this whole allegation of him committing adultery. He feels he did not commit adultery and he feels that he would like to have a debate with Ringo about this subject. From your experience with him, where do you see where he- For the record, he was not asking for a debate to debate whether or not he's in adultery. That was not the case. He wanted to debate the subject of divorce and remarriage. That is what he wanted to debate, for the record. Well, grab the, you know, he would scrap the lead, that understanding. Did you ever had a conversation with him or there was a lesson you witnessed that would give you some insight what, what why he believes he didn't? He actually broke it down in this video saying how he don't believe that uh, secular marriage licenses are from Yah. Now notice, notice what Rufus just said. He just said, that Dowell don't believe that secular marriages are from Yah. Where's the Bible verse for that? Does that make any sense? Like logically, does that make any sense? To say that is to also say that all children that are born out of wedlock are not from Yah. That's to say that any woman that have babies out of wedlock, all of those children have no divine purpose, that they're not from Yah. That's to say that all of you that are here right now that came into this world via fornication, via, uh, 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 you know, affairs, one night stands, out of wedlock, that you have no purpose. You're damned. Do you see what happens when a man promote his own doctrine? And the only reason why Dowell is doing this is because he's in adultery. So he's moving the goalposts. He's, he's playing these, these, these flip-flop games to distract you from the obvious. Adultery. Let's get back to the tapes. So if you got a marriage license in the world, he don't believe that's being you put together by Yah. But he has a driver's license that's from the world. <laughs> right? Does that make any sense? He's telling you that your marriage from the world is not honored by the Most High. Where is that in the Bible? Chapter and verse. See, all of this debate stuff is for reprobates. We're going to get into that throughout the stream and to all you slow people out there all the slow pokes uh stop telling me stop don't fall for the bait and telling me don't debate this guy like are you slow are you not even watching my videos to pay attention do you know how wise i am do you know that like you're, it's almost like you're trying to tell me the right thing to do like i don't know any better do, are you paying attention to the videos 
Are you listening to anything that I say? Debating is for reprobates. Debating is for people that don't follow the Bible. It's for people that want to be heard, but they're not trying to understand and they're never going to repent. This is why the Bible says people that are of the rainbow, the most high gave them over to a reprobate mind, which means you're not supposed to be, be trying to preach to them. Hey, sister, I know you live in the alternative. You need to get saved. You wasting your time. You know why? Because the most high said he gave them over to a reprobate mind, which means they're going to do those things which are not convenient. And there's nothing you could do about it because they're never going to repent. And if you continue reading the scriptures, it says they're full of debate. Look at Kay Michelle the other day. She was in a video going crazy, losing her mind. Why? Because in her mind, she's like, I don't believe what the Bible says regarding the rainbow stuff and the, the fruity loop stuff. I don't want to believe. Why? Reprobate. You cannot tell someone who's reprobate the truth because they're not going to listen to you. So when it comes to debating someone over something that is true, you must be a fool too. Because if the Bible says what it says and the person is in adultery, the burden of proof is up to that person to judge themselves, not try to debate. What they're trying to debate is the lie, the lie that they follow. Do you understand? So what they do is they move the goalposts to make the audience be like, well, let's see if Ringo shows up. You know where you need to show up? Into that Bible. Because if the majority of you actually read the Bible, you would know what it says. So the reason why you're so interested in a debate is because you're reprobate too. You don't even follow the Bible. You just want to be entertained. Do you understand? This is my 12th live stream about this issue. Why Dowell haven't responded to anything? Why haven't he made a video to say, well, based on what Ringo says, this is what the Bible says. Let me prove him wrong. Because he can't. What is there to debate when the truth is already out there? The burden of proof is on P. Diddy Dow. Let's get to these tapes because it's getting crazy in these streets. And you got to pay attention when you're in class. When you got married. Listen. I'm talking to everybody out there. So he's talking to everybody out there. So anybody that have a state marriage license, Dow is now telling you his position that the most high don't see you as being married. Why? Because that is the reason why he took Eric's wife. He feel justified in committing adultery because in his mind, he's saying, hey, yeah, they might have been married by the state contract, but in the eyes of Yah, he don't honor that. Really? That's like saying if you had children that were out of wedlock, that the most high don't see your children. So anybody could just come in and take your children. So anybody could come in and claim their, your children as their own. So your children are not even your children. Isn't that, that's crazy, right? Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. When you got married, you can only get married one or two ways. That's it. Either you got married by the state and you reside, or either you drew up your own contract and agreement, and you and your woman signed it, and it was honored by Yah. The majority of you people out here, I would say, probably have a secular marriage license. Just like you have a secular marriage license with Sister Carol. What about that? Oh, you don't want to talk about that. What about that marriage? Are you telling me the most high didn't honor it? Come on, hypocrite. Speak. Let me get this straight. Uh, how many of the wives you have were non-virgins when you married them? So you're telling me the most high honor your marriages, even though none of the women that you married were virgins? How many were virgins? One, two? I doubt it. I wouldn't even believe none of them. I don't believe none of them were virgins. So the question remains, if none of them are virgins when you marry them, then how is God honoring your marriages? Let's take it a little deeper. <laughs> if you're going to talk about a worldly marriage license as if though, oh, the most high ain't honoring that. Well, then shouldn't you have married women based on their virginity? So how could the most high honor a marriage between you and a woman 
who belong to another man when he's still alive. When the Bible says she's not to be married again unless her husband be dead. How come you can't respond to that? How come you can't even quote the scripture? What's going on? Cat got your tongue? As a pastor, you're supposed to, I guess, encourage the sister to be reconciled back to her husband. How come you didn't do that? Instead, you wanted her to be in your bed. Oh, we got a lot to talk about tonight. A whole lot. A lot of cooking is going on tonight. Everything being exposed. Let's go. If you have a secular marriage license, then who presides over that contract or that agreement? If a man and a woman get married either by their own agreement or by the state, it doesn't really matter. It's honored in the eyes of the Most High. For you to come in at this point in time to say, oh, the Most High don't agree with this. Fam, I already have all your videos downloaded. Every video on your channel I have on a hard drive already. I downloaded every video. I have all your info, all of it, all the receipts. You're a hypocrite because I got videotape of you talking about polygyny and how, oh yeah, if you marry to a woman by the state, oh, you didn't break no laws. Matter of fact, you didn't even break no laws in the most highest eyes. Hypocrite, we got you on tape. Let's get back to that, fam. This is crazy. This is why you can't trust none of these people, man, in these streets, because they out here wilding. But hey, we're gonna cook tonight. Trust and believe that, let's go. The state does. So you have no power to dissolve any damn thing without the authority of the state. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. As if you didn't with Sister Carol. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. Now he's saying all of these laws out here that are telling us not to make no covenants with this land. If you've been watching all my live streams, I went through the scriptures. He violated and twisted every Bible verse he read to support a false doctrine that don't make no sense. The Most High was talking about the children of Israel when they came out of the house of bondage on how not making no agreements with their false gods had nothing to do with marriage in terms of a license. But if you're slow, dumb down and docile and don't read the Bible, you'll make this man, this wolf in sheep's clothing, mislead you because he's really trying to defend his position in his adulterous affair with Eric's wife. That's the real truth. Let's get back to the tapes. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. And you believe that you are married under Yah, you are deceived, you're greatly deceived. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. Isn't that crazy? He just said you're not married under the Most High. So he's basically saying the Most High don't see yourself as married. Married. So basically, hey, I'm justified to come in and take your wife. So if you come the straight way and you got a marriage license, yeah, you might think you married, but in the eyes of Yah, you're not really married in my mind. So I could take your wife. That's basically what he's saying. He's justifying his adultery, Yah. Let's go. Let's get back to the tapes. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You see, if a man has one wife Listen. on paper, a state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in his land. Is not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broke the law of Yah. He is because he has not sinned. Did you hear the hypocrite? <laughs> Pastor P. Diddy Dow just told us that if a man want to practice polygyny, <laughs> you done messed up, bro. I told you already. <laughs> you in trouble. <laughs> he just said, if a man got a wife by the state. 
he want to get himself another wife or two, three more wives. He could do that by a contract that's written up by himself and he haven't broken no laws in the land. And that's true. That's true because a lot of you folks that come to me and y'all be like, well, it's illegal to practice polygyny in America. No, uh, -uh. you got to understand context. In America, based on the state license, right? You can only have one wife on record in a state marriage. Do you understand that? If you want to have more than one wife and you try to go to uh, Florida, California, but you married a woman in New York and you try to marry her with another state license, right? That's called bigamy. That's a crime. Do you understand me? That's against the law. But if you want to have multiple wives in this society, nobody can stop you from doing that. For example, let's say I don't want no wives. Let's say I don't want to be married, but I just want five girlfriends so I can fuck. Could anybody stop me from doing that? If I just want five sisters to give me head and I just want to fool around with some sisters, I ain't trying to get married. I ain't trying to have no kids. Is that illegal? Is it illegal by the state for me to date 10 different women? See, anytime we talk about marriage, that's when everybody get religious. But if the truth be told, you have to understand context. If you try to marry women based off of the marriage contract, multiple women, that would go against the law because you can only have one wife on file in the land under a state marriage license. But if you want more wives, you cannot marry them by the state. You would have to have your own agreement with these women. Do you understand? Does that make sense to you now? But now what I want you to get out of what he said is he's telling you a man didn't break no law. But now look at what he said again right after that. Check out what he said after that. That's what really matters. And also this video of his was done two years ago. Check out the title, Divorce and Remarriage. Is it a sin? So he's basically telling you that if you have a marriage license, that the most high honor it and you didn't break no laws. But he was just finished saying that, oh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you didn't break no you breaking laws because the Bible says that there are laws that tell us not to make no covenants with the inhabitants of the land. <laughs> Listen, when it comes to exposing false prophets and false teachers, fam, this is my work. This is what I do. Do you understand? I will destroy you with your own words, bringing out the receipts for the people. Ain't no denying this. You a hypocrite. You done got found out. Let's go. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman is not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the only way that a man could commit adultery is what the status of a woman is married wow if the woman is not married he has not committed no adultery at all if the woman is not married he didn't commit no adultery at all that's what he said so you tell me this man is in adultery now he can run but he cannot hide not from ringo tv Cause I'm, I'm, listen, I'm the best in these YouTube streets when it comes to exposing this fraud. Everybody else is just doing extra work on the sidelines. I'm doing the work. Do you understand me? I'm cooking. Let's get back to these tapes. Let's go. You see, if a man has one wife on paper, state marriage license. State marriage license on paper. Listen. And if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws. He have broken no laws. In this land. In this land. What else? Is not only has he not broken any laws in his land. So he didn't break no laws in his land. Not only that, but remember, P. Diddy Dow, you said that 
we're not supposed to make any agreements because the law of the Most High says we're not supposed to make any agreements with the inhabitants of the land. But now, what, what are you saying next? What, what happens next? He's not even broke the law of Yah. He is because he has not sinned. Oh, oh, so I have not sinned. Hypocrite. I mean, we could just end the stream right here. The man has been found out. He has been totally exposed. The man has a double tongue. Now, what does the Bible say about that? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let him not even think he's going to get anything from the Lord. The man is double-minded. He have a double tongue. He's like a serpent. The man told you in one video, you got married by the state. Oh, the most high is not with you. Now he turn around and say, oh, you didn't break no laws. So, so now you aren't. So in one video two years ago, you're saying that, oh, if a man have a state marriage with a woman, you see it as a marriage. So how come you didn't see that with Eric Gonzalez? How come? Because right now you fucking his wife, his ex-wife. That's right. That's what you're doing. In the church, in the tabernacle. And because you got a bunch of spineless men with you that don't follow the Bible because they're in adultery too. See, what y'all don't know is that the majority of the men at Straightway are in adultery. All of them. And also, let me throw this out there. Just in case Rufus is watching. You got to answer for something, fam. You got to answer for something. Because I found this video, fam. This didn't age well. You got to an answer for this. You have a video on your channel titled True Honor, Respect, and Integrity. Stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. Everybody getting exposed. Listen, I'm not playing. I want to know why six years ago, you were telling people to stay away from people like Eric Gonzalez, but yet you were on Rollo's broadcast with Eric Gonzalez. I want to know. We need answers now because what this tells me is that you knew what was going on with the drama that was going down at Straightway. Because how could you be on camera with a title saying stay away from Eric, McGee, Eric Gonzalez and uh, 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 this, this, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Denza McGee. What's going on with this, fam? You got to answer for this one. You got to answer for this one because this was six years ago. This is when some of the drama was going down regarding P. Diddy Dow's adultery. Now, why would you tell viewers in a video title? to stay away from Eric Gonzalez if you didn't know nothing about what was going on at Straightway. Because in your testimony, you said that you were at Straightway, Georgia, and you didn't really know what was going on. If you didn't know what was going on, why would you tell people to stay away from a man that you really don't know nothing about? We need answers. Not no, not no answers in a chat. We need video answers. We need you to be on camera to give an, you, you need answers. We need answers. Because everybody getting exposed. Nobody's safe. No one is safe. You said, stay away. Stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. Those are very strong words right there. Very, very strong words to say. So if you were not around at Tennessee to know what was going down, why would you tell the public to stay away from Eric? And this kind of goes in line with uh, the situation that went down on Rollo's show where the brothers were asking you about, yo, what is your thoughts about 
P. Diddy dials adultery. And you were like, well, you know, I don't know. Y'all don't really know all the story. And you know what I mean? It's like you didn't want to give an answer. Now I know why. It's because of this. Something went down. There are things you know. I don't believe that you didn't know what was going down with Mr. Gonzalez. I believe you do. Because to make a video title, and don't try to edit it, don't, don't put the video on private, because I got it already, right? What we need to know in the court of public opinion is why at the time you made this video and you were mainly speaking of Denza McGee, but I understand code. When you spoke of Denza McGee at the same time, simultaneously, you were also speaking of Eric Gonzalez. You never mentioned his name, which is interesting. You never mentioned his name in the video, but you were mainly speaking of the McGee person. I don't know who nothing about that person. You talked about him in the video. I don't really care about that. My point is this. You have Eric's name in the title. So that means you had issues with Eric. To tell people to stay away from him, that's the same thing Dow said about you. I'm just holding you to your own words. Dow told everybody, stay away from you. And in that video title, you're telling everybody, stay away from people like Eric Gonzalez. So which one is it? Were you doing the bidding of P. Diddy Dow? You got to explain this one. I told you, nobody's safe. I am no respecter of persons when it comes to this nonsense. I want to know why six years ago you felt that people need to stay away from Eric. Bring it all out because you were on a panel with him. And to me, that's not a, look, a good look. This video didn't age well. I would have took that down. As soon as the drama would have took place, I would have took that video down. Quick, because why? People are going to notice it. People are going to want to know what's going on. You know, this is crazy, but hey, let's get back to the video. Let's get back to what we're going to cook with more of this later on. We're going to talk about this, but we need to know. Let's get back to this hypocrite P. Diddy Dow. Let's get back to this. Let's go. He's not even broke the law of Yah. He is because he has not sinned. He's not even broke the law of Yah. He is because he has not sinned. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. He's speaking of a state marriage license as if though you're in some sort of sin or as if though the most high don't honor your relationship. Think about how many marriages at straightway, he ruined with this false doctrine that, oh, well, your marriage don't count. Think about how many women probably came to straightway. Remember the other testimony from the sister that Rollo interviewed? And the sister said that um, when, when she got to straightway, one of the first thing they was asking her is, are you married? You know why? So that they can deceive her. Oh, you're married by the state? Oh, sister, well... You're not really married. God don't really honor it. So technically, you can marry one of the brothers. That's how they get these women, y'all. Through deception and manipulation. Let's get back to the tapes. He's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of Yah. He's because he has not sinned. He's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, wow. he's not even broken the law of Yah. He's because he has not sinned. So, we so, so he have not sinned, but over here you're saying one, one thing else. You're saying in one tongue, a man did not sin if he got a state marriage license and more than one wife under their own covenant agreement, but yet you're saying he have not sinned? If he have not sinned, then why could you, how did you use all those other scriptures to talk about laws telling us not to make agreements with the inhabitants of the land? So you're making it seem like we broke those laws, but then now you're saying that we're not in sin because we didn't break no laws of God. Which one is it? You're a fucking hypocrite. At the end of the day, you've been exposed. So when you talk all this stuff about debate, debate, debate this fucking video. Debate this. Get on camera like a man and respond and stop moving the goalposts with all this fake bravado. 
as if though you're some sort of tough guy about, oh, let's have a professional debate over here and do this and do that. No, debate these videos. Debate the truth that I'm bringing forth. Debate it if you can, because you can't. Got all these laws are telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. Notice he said we're not to make no covenants with the foreign people of this land. None of those Bible verses that he was using have anything to do with marriage. I already covered them. I already done exposed this already. This is the 12th live stream of me cooking this wolf, this manipulator, this deceiver, cooking him, cooking him, fam. And he still won't respond. But he's telling you about, oh, yeah, I challenge you to a debate. Yeah, whatever you say. Debate these videos. Let's see if you could do that. You already been exposed. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. You see, if a man has one wife on paper, state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in this land. He have broken no laws in this land. And also salute to everybody on the Ringo TV Reactions channel and on the Ringo TV Raw channel. Those of you that are on the Ringo TV Raw channel, if you're viewing right now, we are simultaneously streaming also on the Ringo TV Reactions channel where you can see all of the visuals that I'm looking at right now. Everybody that's on the other channel, they can see everything. They can see all the video, the footage. They can see all of that stuff, right? Over here on the Ringo TV Raw channel, you got the vertical view with the audio. All right, let's get back to the tapes. Is not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broke the law of Yah. He's because he has not sinned. He said you haven't broken no laws of Yah because you have not sinned. <laughs> that contradicts everything he previously saying in his earlier newer videos where he talked about how, oh, you know, the Most High is telling us not to make any covenants with the inhabitants of the land. Fam, you've been caught and exposed. The only reason why you're saying all of that is because you're trying to justify your sin. But you want to talk about debate? Bro, the only people who debate are reprobates. You're a reprobate. You're set in your ways. You understand? We're going to get into that a little bit later. Let's get back to the tapes, fam. It's crazy in these streets. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenants with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. All right, hey, so the topic of the hour today on YouTube is uh, what people are perceiving to be adultery. So this is what I wanna do. What I wanna do is, and since there's a lot of people out there that are talking and it came by our way of Ringo TV, Ringo TV, this is Pastor Dow. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate on a professional moderated platform on neutral ground somewhere between New York and Tennessee, a professional moderated debate on divorce and remarriage. Oh, check that out. Check that out. Let me rewind that back. Also, to the clown that's on uh, the Ringo TV Raw channel in the comments, he posts some scripture. Uh, Romans 3, 23, uh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Please learn how to read and how to understand. How did all fall short of the glory of God? Is that is that talking about today? No, that's not talking about today. That's talking about in the beginning when Eve took up the fruit and sin came into the world. Once that happened, all have fallen short of the glory of God. When the Messiah came, set everything back in straight, that don't even apply no more. Please learn how to read. Now, that being said, um, let's do what we need to do. Cause you know, you have a lot of people that are uneducated in the truth, uneducated in the word, and they love to use these type of scriptures. Like for all have sin. If that's the case, then we're all going to hell then. Right. That don't make no sense. Learn how to read, learn how to read, to understand. Let's go. Would you to, uh, a civil debate. So I will be in a dining hall eating and enjoying ourselves. We talking about this. Hold on, let me rewind that back. And went out there and got a state marriage license. He's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of Yah. He's because he has not sinned. He's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of Yah. He's because he has not sinned. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 
You see, if a man has one wife on paper, a state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in this land. It's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broke the law of God he is, because he has not sinned. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. All right, hey, so the topic of the hour today on YouTube is uh, what people are perceiving to be adultery. So this is what I want to do. What I want to do is, and since there's a lot of people out there that are talking and he came by the way of Ringo TV, Ringo TV, this is Pastor Dow. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate on a professional moderated platform on neutral ground somewhere between New York and Tennessee, a professional moderated debate. On when you look at stuff like this, right, you have to laugh. Because with all the videos that I've shared, you would think that a man like this would respond to the videos showing the truth. This is, these are not even allegations. This is the truth. These are facts. The man have another man's wife and had her for a while, covering his sins. Most High gave him time to repent, but he still haven't repented. Now he's being exposed. Exposed. I'm talking about, like, just, man. Look at all the videos I've made thus far. I brought out so much evidence. You would think that he would say, you know what? Let me respond to this. Let me respond to that. But no, he ain't responding to nothing. You know what? I want to challenge you to a public debate, please. <laughs> you sound crazy. Seriously, this is what happens when a man has been broken down and weakened. This is a weak state right here. When you look at this image here, this is when this is a man waving a white flag. Like, please, uh, I'm losing strength. I'm losing hold on my people. Uh, I'm looking weak out here. You're embarrassing me. You're making me look bad. Uh, I want to have a civil debate. Debate? What does the Bible say about debate, sir? You're supposed to be a pastor. You don't know what the Bible say about debate? Oh, we're going to get to those scriptures. We're going to get to them, fam. We're going to literally, we're going to embarrass you, expose you. I mean, we're, we're literally destroying your ministry. I, I promise you, your ministry is over. Trust me. I tell you. Y'all don't understand. When I'm exposing these false prophets, the Most High put this spirit on me to destroy them. This is not a game. I'm telling you, I've warned you, you're not paying attention. I told you, repent. You don't want to repent. Okay, we're going to deal with you. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. Divorce and remarriage. Now check it out. He came into my live stream, said, cut your hair, cut your damn hair, woman. Now, how could you have a civil debate with that level of disrespect? Well, you're telling a grown man to go cut his hair, you woman. Really? Civil debate? Man, we enemies. What are you talking about? We enemies, bro. You're an enemy of the Most High. You're an adulterer, a false teacher, a wolf. You're an enemy of Yah. Talking about civil debate. I ain't come here for no civil debate. You're going to be destroyed by the Most High. He ain't playing with you. You wildin', bro. You wildin'. Let's get back to these tapes. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. All right, we're up here in the dining hall eating and enjoying ourselves. We talking about this. What's his name, Ringo? Notice, what's his name, Ringo? Dude acting like he don't even know who I am. He acting like he don't even know who I am. The level of disrespect is unbelievable, fam. Check out what he have to say. Check this out. Ringo. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. Y'all know about for years he's been supporting me, right? I just withdrew my support on Patreon, my prerogative, right? But not only that, can you imagine somebody don't know nothing about nothing chiming in as if he's some type of biblical authority? Notice he said that I'm I'm literally coming at him as if though I'm some sort of biblical authority. So he he looks down on me as if though I'm not even qualified to speak. So why the fuck you trying to initiate some sort of debate? <laughs> Fam, why would you even do that? If you feel that I'm not even qualified to even talk, why would you even try to have a debate? You look crazy, bro. Seriously. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. And how in the hell can somebody who young, I'm probably old enough to be his daddy, Old enough to be my daddy. How the fuck you gonna be old enough to be my daddy? I'm 46. 
you supposed to be 57. Do the fucking math. How that make you old enough to be my daddy? Watch your fucking mouth, bro. Real talk. Talk about civil debate and you coming at people with this level of disrespect? So, so you think you everybody's daddy. That's what you think? You're everybody's daddy. So, so them same clowns that's up there in your church, you looking at them as if though they're your sons. This is how this man think. He believe he's everybody's daddy, bro. This is crazy, bro. Let's get to these tapes. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. How the hell are you going to say that? How are you going to rebuke me? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. These clowns right here, these clowns that's right there look like little children because the man just said that he's old enough to be my daddy. So then he's basically saying that he's these guys' daddy. That's basically what he said. Because I believe Kabir is like what? 45? So, so Kabir, you believe that Dow is old enough to be your daddy? Is that what it is? Say it ain't so. Kabir, are you telling me that Dow is old enough to be your daddy? You believe that? I want to know. Go do a video and answer the question, yes or no. Do you believe Dow is old enough to be your daddy? <laughs> this is crazy, fam. Let's go. Not even in it. Yo, yo, voice, your word, not, it don't even count in this matter. I he just said that my words don't matter. So then why his leader, his, his daddy, is asking me for a debate? There's nothing to debate. The truth is already out there. I already exposed. I already exposed this adulterer, fam, completely. He's already exposed. And to all your wives, stop being clowns. All you ladies submitting yourself to this damn hypocrite, this heathen who's in a, an adulterous affair, and you sitting there. What are you doing? Like, y'all can't see? Y'all all blind, right? This is crazy, man. Nobody over there at Straightway followed the Most High, fam. Because if the leader is in adultery and everybody over there following him, they all in sin, bro. Like, to challenge you to... Um, a civil debate. Yo, yo, voice, your word, it don't even count in this matter. I would like to challenge you to um, a civil debate. So whatever you feel. Whatever that's, that's the same thing that I said at uh, Kevin Brown, that he's old enough to be a brother, an elder brother, not no damn father. He wildin'. If you believe Ringo TV, you take that shit and stuff it right when you know you can stuff it. So you telling a man to stuff something in his behind, that's what you're saying? Bro, we got tapes on you. <laughs> we got tapes on you. Men hugging you from behind, kissing you on your neck. We're going to roll those tapes shortly. We got to make the world see this. You talking all this stuff, all this fruity stuff? Okay, cool. We got you, bro. We got you. I would like to challenge you to... Um, a civil debate. Anyway, folks, this is the type. This is what happens when you get out there on the public platform. Uh, you start feeling yourself, and then you, you think you know everything. You don't know nothing. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. Um, and beside that, the Bible says, "Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father." You definitely can tell. Him, I'm definitely an elder to him. He said, "Rebuke not an elder." but entreat him as a father. <laughs> First of all, you're not even no damn elder. You know who's an elder? Um, what's the brother on YouTube? The elder brother. I think his name is Rashawn. Mr. Rashawn. Um, it's an elder brother. He's a content creator. Um, he talks about various different topics. Put a one in the chat if you know who he is. We call him the elder, right? He's not no pastor or none of that stuff. But when you look at him, he's an elder. He's old enough to be your daddy. So when you look at somebody like that particular elder, I think I believe his name is R R Rashawn or, or, or I'm not sure. If, if anybody know his name, um, if anybody know his exact name, uh, put it in the chat. Because he is old enough to be your daddy. So with a brother like that, I'm not going to I'm not going to go make videos trying to roast an elder man. I'm I'm not going to do that. Out of respect for an elder, I'm not going to do that. Even if he say something crazy about me, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I think that's his name. Hold on, let me see. 
Notice how the people know. Notice how the people know. Right? Let me see. Let me go to search for the channel so I can show you. Because I want y'all to see the difference, right? Let me see. Hold on. Let me do this real quick. Let me turn this off. Um, Yeah. This is his channel. Yep. Let me see. Hold on a second. He went live two weeks ago. And he went live two hours ago. Yeah. So, this this man here, this is his channel. That's his channel. That man right there is an elder. You look at his videos, he's an elder. That's what the Bible talk about, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. That man is an elder. That man, you can look at him and be like, you know what? He rebuked me. I'm not going to say nothing slick because that's like that's like disrespecting my own father. That's what the Bible talks about. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Men like that. A man like me would be out of place rebuking and, and roasting an elder man like that. That would be out of place. You get what I'm saying? All of us got that level of respect. We know better. All of you guys, all of you ladies, when you look at that particular brother, Rashawn, you, you carry yourself with a little more respect. Now, that's not to say everybody that's elderly is doing the right thing or saying the right things, but we just know better because we remember our grandmothers, we remember our mothers, our fathers, and we just show respect. That's what the Bible talks about. This man is not no elder. That's just real talk. All these titles everybody wearing about, I'm an elder this, elder that. Man, sit down. None of you guys are elders. You got to be an elderly man to be an elder. So you got people out here trying to teach people the book, but they don't follow the book that they teach. He said that I don't follow the book that I teach. <laughs> Fam, we already proven that he's a hypocrite. I did that in probably like my... Uh, third live stream about the situation. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil. Why would you want to challenge a man that don't know the book? Debate. Living in the cities. Living in the cities. And he just said living in the cities and living in the slums. Watch this. Slums of New York. Living in the slums of New York. So according to Dowell, he believed anybody live in New York or in any city that you're in the slums. That's the kind of disrespect that he gives the people, guys. Let's go. That damn rat infested place up there. And think that YouTube congregation and stuff is, is, is actually um, some type of an assembly where you're following up. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. Man, you sad, man. You sad. But it don't make no difference. Hey, life still goes on, but I will tell you this. Give it a couple of years. Give it a couple of years. It's going to take about that long. Let's see where you at. Let's see where Rufus is at. Competitive jealousy. Let's see where you at. Let's see where I'm at. That's what he's saying. That's called competitive jealousy, y'all. Pastor Rupus is at, and let's see where we are. I would like. To and those that are viewing, we are viewing on two channels at the same time: the Ringo TV Raw channel right here on this camera, Ringo TV Reactions on this camera. Right? Okay. So if you're on the Ringo TV Raw channel and you're probably just tuned in, like, what's going on? What is he looking at? What's going on? I'm on two different channels. This is the vertical live stream that hits the algorithm of the YouTube Shorts community. The, har the um, horizontal is for everybody else that's on my subscriber list and those people that are in that algorithm. So I'm in two different algorithms right now streaming at the same time. Let's get back to the tapes. I challenge you to uh, a civil debate. And, and how do you have seven hours? What are you doing? I'm exposing you. That's what I'm doing. What do you do? What do you do? Do you make a video about somebody for seven hours? Ain't no way. Seven damn no hours. Don't you got better time? See, that's what I'm saying, man. Y'all niggas need to get to work. <laughs> Y'all need to get to work. Notice how he said we need to get to work, right? And watch he do what Jamie said he's going to do. Yeah, you know, work. He loves showing his dirty hands. Remember, Jamie in a video proved that Dow really don't work. That what Dow does is... He see all the other men working. And then what he do is he make little YouTube videos 
and then he try to show you his hands and make you think like, oh yeah, I'm just out here working all day. You ain't working all day. The young men are out there working all day. Let's get back to the tapes. Work. <laughs> I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. Matter of fact, I just got finished counseling with a couple, uh, a family that actually came to me because of your challenge today. He just said that somebody came to him for counseling because of my channel. What exactly? Prove it with receipts. I dare you. Prove it. What exactly are they? What, why would somebody come to you for counseling because of my channel? That's a play move to try to make it seem to his viewers as a though if you come to my channel, you're going to get wrong information. And instead, you need to follow him. Bam, I could read you. You're very, very easy to predict. You're predictable. You understand? You ain't counsel nobody. That's a lie. Let's get back to the tapes. Sure did. So I want, how many people? And you know what's so crazy about this is I don't counsel people. I don't speak to families. So why would anybody be coming to you because of my videos or because of my content? Make it make sense. I don't counsel people. You understand? I don't have no one-on-one -on -one sessions with nobody. So why would anybody be coming to you because of me? Who are they? Prove it. Prove it, liar, hypocrite, pretender. Come on, man. This guy's a joke. I think he got actually truly follow him as he follows the side. Or is he following the side? I don't think he's following the side. He just said that I'm not following the Messiah. But we already showed you video clips from older videos where the man was literally shouting me out, saluting me, telling me that I'm telling the people that I'm wise, I'm this, I'm that, and even told people to go follow my platform. But then you're going to say, oh, I'm not following this and I'm not following that because I rebuked you, right? See, right after I rebuked him, he pulled his Patreon support, which is not really nothing because I was supporting his as well. So it's not like I was gaining anything because I'm paying $10. He's paying $10. So it's like, it's like the money stays where it is. Get what I'm saying? But right after I rebuked him, he just went and pulled his support right away. So I'm like, whoa. So you ain't planning on repenting. You upset. Cool. Let's get back to the tapes. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. All right, I'm sitting here with Pastor Corey. And this is going to be my advice. We're going to see if Pastor Corey second the motion. Now, in this particular clip here, he already knew that he was in trouble. He already knew that Ringo is not going to stop. Ringo is on his case. Let me try to, you know, uh, put out an olive branch in hopes that Ringo and I can have some sort of conversation. There ain't going to be no conversations, never. I don't know what has happened with Ringo, TV Raw. Don't know what happened to him. Don't know at all. I know that he's not a true witness because he wasn't here. He don't know the truth about what happened. So my advice is since he's chosen to become an enemy of mine, he just said that I chosen to become an enemy of his. So from his own mouth, I'm his enemy. So when you folks hear me say that we enemies, that's because he said it. He said that we're enemies. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not dumb. If a man say we enemies, we enemies. So why the fuck would I be doing a civil debate with you? Why would I even be around you if we're enemies? Why? Makes no sense. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. And I mean, it's just one of those internet YouTube shock jocks. You know, he's just looking for drama, looking for clicks, looking for hits and everything. Man, that's what it was about. And notice the camera angles, how you see him talking, but you have a background guy with an AR-15. Think about, think about what he's doing. Think about the intimidation that he uses in his videos where he tries to, I mean, out of all the videos, you always see somebody with a gun. The camera always got somebody with a gun next to it. Like, in other words, we're going to get you. Think about that. Have y'all not peeped that? Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. But anyway, uh, and believe it or not, I'm not upset at Ringo. I, I get it. I he just said he's not upset at Ringo. Really? But you're upset at Rufus. So let me get this straight. All these videos of me roasting you, exposing you and everything, but you're not you're not upset with me? Fam, you always been upset with me. From the first video I made talking about the Rufus situation, you was upset. 
And then I started to learn about your adulterous affair. And I'm like, hell, what? You think I'm going to let that slide? Nah, fam. I didn't know about that. Now I do. And now that I do, I'm holding you accountable. Since you want to hold everybody to a higher standard, I'm going to hold you to a higher standard. You're in sin. Repent. Let's go. I, uh, I, uh, I actually would like to sit down and have a conversation with you. Why would a man say he want to sit down and have a conversation with me? I don't want to have no conversation with you. You better have a conversation with the Most High about your sins. You better have a conversation about all the evil you've done to people. We ain't never having a conversation. Never. Do you understand? The Most High sent me to rebuke you, to expose you. That's my job. That's my duty. And I'm doing it very well. And the people are going to find these videos. They're going to look at these videos. And they're going to look at you for who you really are. A cult leader. That's what you really are. A deceiver. An adulterer. Because that's what you're doing right now. You're supposed to be a pastor, a man of truth, but you took another man's wife and made her your own. That's unbiblical. You twist and manipulate scriptures for your own personal gain. You're a demon, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The Bible teaches pastors to feed the flock of Yah, not to lord over them. But that's what you do. You try to lord over the people, control the people, control the women. And now look at what it got you. You fell into the condemnation of the devil. Personally, but I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. So I'll tell you what, man. Let me try. Let me try to reset this for a second. Ringo, you know the number behind me that's on there, man. Call and leave a message, man. I should call and leave a message of repent. I should call and leave a message of repent. That's the only message that I would leave. Get back to the tapes. And let's you and I have an adult conversation. Let's the adult conversation is already here. It's in all of these videos. Let's go. You and I have a, a talk, all right, man? What do you think? I, I can't be no more fair than that. <laughs> Notice the, the same clown in the background, the Corey guy, Pastor Corey, says it's fair. That's the same guy who told me that my words don't mean nothing. That's the same guy who said I need to take whatever, whatever, and shove it up here and there. These are the same hypocrites. Like, you guys have some nerve to think that there's going to be any sort of conversation. There's no conversation, fam. I'm not here to be friends. Do you understand me? I'm here to bring fire. I'm here to bring the word of truth so the people can turn from your cult. Trust and believe that. Let's get to work. Let's see if he wants to talk. I would like to challenge you to... Uh, a civil debate. Cause some dude was just sitting here asking, they act like we're scared of somebody who makes videos or something. All of you are scared. Let's go. So there, there's some dude, I put it up here, some dude named Ringo or whatever. Now watch what he's gonna do. He's gonna now play my music video in a world to further name call, post disrespect, move the goalposts, Typical stuff that a woman would do. Let's go. And I, I said on my show, the dude, if you have the sermon, you can see the dude is kind of effeminate. And, but yet a lot of people deem what he's saying literally as written word. That's how they're acting. If you have the sermon, you can see the dude is kind of effeminate. And, but yet a lot. And notice Dowell in the background with the hand gestures, like, like in other words, yeah, you know, he's kind of effeminate. But he want to have a debate with an effeminate man. <laughs> really? So you want to be around an effeminate man? <laughs> really? Says a lot about you, fam. Let's go. The people deem what he's saying literally as written word. That's how they're acting. If you have the sermon, you can see the dude is kind of effeminate. And... But yet, a lot of people deem what he's saying literally as written word. That's how they're acting. Again. Now watch this, ladies and gentlemen. This is from an event that they had at Straightwear, wherever they at, somewhere, some sort of celebration. Now check this out. I want you to look at this very carefully now. Listen to this, fam. I did all of my process into this to make sure that you can hear it very clear. Check it out. I'm telling y'all, Pastor Corey, I need, I need and teacher. And teacher. Just because y'all know I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to put this out there for the world to see as well. 
as well as every single other person out here that's recording everything. Please, again, tell the people, anything that comes to your heart, anything. Please explain that to me. Pastor Corey, the same guy who said my words don't mean nothing to shove this up such and such and such. Please explain this. Please explain to me why a man come up from behind you, hold you by your shoulders, and start kissing you on your neck. Explain that. I need chapter and verse for this one. Somebody please explain to me why is it that a man is coming from behind another man from the back? and looks into the camera with demon eyes. Look at him, he's looking into the camera. Notice, Pastor Corey, or whatever his name is, did not even flinch. Why? Because he had men behind him many times. <laughs> but these are the same guys who talk about effeminate this, effeminate that, but look at what's going on at Straightway. <laughs> you don't see no videos with me with anybody behind me. That's one thing. You don't see that. Come on, man. Told you guys, man, you guys are playing with the wrong person, fam. I'm just being honest. What is going on here in this photo? Let's get back to the tapes. Look at that. Anything that comes to your mind. My brother Rondo, again, tell the people. Anything that comes to your heart, anything. What is that? Anything that comes to your mind. My brother Rondo was just talking about how if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're none of his. Notice how he just looks back and... He didn't even say anything. You know why? Because he had that guy do that many times. See, if you're really a masculine man, as soon as as soon as soon anybody come from behind you like that, it's an elbow. <laughs> it's like automatic. Like, as a man, I don't know what it is, but we know there's certain boundaries like that you should not do. So if a dude come around from the back and hold you like this and kiss you on your neck, he's getting punched in the face, like, like immediately. <laughs> He's going to get checked right on the spot. That ain't going to stay like that. Like, what are you doing? And notice, Dowell was right next to him. <laughs> Dowell was right next to him, fam. Let's go. If you have the sermon, you can see the dude is kind of effeminate. <laughs> and, but yet, a lot of people deem what he's saying literally as written word. That's how they're acting. If you have the sermon, you can see the dude is kind of effeminate. And, but yet, a lot of people deem what he's saying literally as written. Listen, to all the crazy people that keep coming into the live stream asking what is going on, please go to my first live stream and watch all of the live streams, all 12. <laughs> because it's crazy when people come into the building and they ask, hey, what's going on? Are you slow? <laughs> like, seriously, that's like walking into a movie theater and you walk in while everybody's watching the movie and you asking them, hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey, what's what the movie's about, y'all? People gonna punch you in the face because it's like, yo, bro, shut up. Why don't you sit down and watch the movie? Why don't you read the title? Why don't you look at the thumbnail? Like, where you been? So hold up, you didn't see none of Ringo's videos about this dude? So hold up, you didn't do no research. So you didn't even watch nothing yet. So this is your first time here. You didn't even introduce yourself. Nobody didn't even know who you are. I mean, people just come here to get roast. Listen, I am roasting. You come and stepping in the way, you're gonna get roast. No time to sugarcoat. I'm not here to spare no feelings. If your feelings is hurt, leave. Do you understand? I'm here doing the work of the most high. Y'all remember the situation with Lot's wife? Y'all remember? What did the most high say? Get out of the city, right? Don't look back. What did his wife do? She got in the way. She looked back. Turned into a pillar of salt. <laughs> you know why? Because she got in the way. Don't get in the way of this work. Don't get in the way. You're going to get hit. You're going to get clapped in the crossfire. I'm telling you right now. Word, that's how they're acting. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. I just saw somebody come in here and damn near demanding, are you gonna respond to Ringo's stuff? Look, 
Y'all got to discern who's talking. Now, we, I'm going to put on 30 seconds of this. Okay, this, this is a music video on this dude's page. Now, now, now check this out. Now listen to this. Now, now this looked like a dude showing off his porn room that he whack off in. Really? This shows off a dude's porn room that he whack off in. That's the best you can do, fam? Man, I tell you. It just goes to show how much they project what they do. See, you're the one who whack off. Effeminate men don't have women on their monitors. I mean, with all the building you guys build, y'all don't got a straightway studio yet? Yes, it's, it was all out of jealousy, fam. As soon as they saw the studio, as soon as they saw the music video, they got jealous. As soon as they saw it. Because none of them guys could even edit or put together a video like that if their life depended on it. Trust me, they can. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. That's what this dude looked like. And, and, and like, y'all act- Bro, you sound like a clown. Because anybody that would look at that video and look at that setup, that is a fly, dope-ass setup. Period. Anybody that would hate on that is a fucking hater. There's no way around it. Like, you just got to be a hater. There's no way around it. That's next level. Next level production. Next level visuals. There's no way you could tell me that that's whack. You got to be a fucking hater. Period. Let's go. Like, this dude is, is, is the uh, bastion of righteousness that... I would like to challenge you to... Think about this. You just said that I'm looking like I'm this and I'm that, right? But your pastor is calling me out for a debate. So got, I got to be, I got to be somebody. Right? Got to be. I mean, if he called out Geno Jennings and now he's trying to call me out, I got to be somebody. Right? But see, the thing is, I'm not no dummy. I understand the play. And I also understand that there's really nothing to debate about because the truth is clear. The man is in adultery and he knows it. Uh, a civil debate. Hey, I want everybody out there instead of questioning us, I want y'all to question Ringo TV and New Breed. Show us your fruit. Show us what you're doing. And when he talks about fruit, he's not talking about righteousness. He's talking about fruits in terms of things that you build. That's what he's talking about. But the guy just dissed my studio. The guy just dissed this. I'm a carpenter by trade, but I'm not here to compete with all of that foolishness. Where is the fruits of righteousness? Where is the fruits of repentance? You're an adulterer. You're fucking another man's wife. You took another man's wife. You're in sin. And you're talking about Show me your fruit. Your fruit is rotten. On what grounds do you have right to take that man's wife? Obviously, that's the past. He don't want her no more. She already defiled. But on what grounds? He wasn't abusing her. He never abandoned her. You made her file for divorce. Where is that in the Bible? Where is it in, a, in the Bible where a woman can divorce a man? Chapter and verse. The burden of proof is on you. Debate this. Prove it. Where's the scripture that says a woman can go give a man a bill of divorce? Where is it? There are none. 
It's easy for you to point the finger and talk about everybody else. As old saying go, it's easy to get on, but it's hard to get off. Show everybody Pause. your fruit. He said it's hard to get off. Pause. Pause on that one, bro. And if you can't do it, then all you're going to do in your silence is going to show everybody the damn devil your ass really is. You damn satanic ass shits. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. You damn satanic ass shits. I would like to challenge you to uh, a civil debate. Ah! Now, now keep in mind, he's drunk. He is always drunk when he's on camera because when he's on drunk, that when he's drunk, that gives him a sense of uh, confidence to, to talk, to, 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 I guess, uh, appear to be bold. He needs the alcohol in his system because when he, when he don't have the alcohol in his system, right, that's when you see him trying to wave the white flag talking about, can we have a civil debate? Can we have a civil debate? Nobody ain't debating you. Debate what? Debate these videos. Respond to these videos. Matter of fact, tell all the men at Straightway, all of y'all, all of y'all, come in your videos, respond. I challenge all of you at Straightway, all of the men, get on camera, respond to the videos that I'm making. Respond to all of them. Prove me wrong by the Bible. Do it. Cowards. Because you can't. All this fake bravado about, yeah, I challenge you to a debate. <laughs> That's fake. Open the book and show me that I'm wrong. Because I've already proven that you're an adulterer. I've already proven it. Let's go. That's, that's good. Demand fruit. We want to see fruit. Notice, I stand alone by myself. This man got to have an army with him when he's on camera. He got to have a bunch of other men with him. A bunch of cowards. I'm by myself. And I'm able to respond to all of you. None of you are with the most high. None of you. Let's go. Yeah. Show us the fruit. Not not questionable suspect music videos mm. that are cringy. <laughs> and cut your damn hair, Adonis. I bet you it ain't gonna be no seven hour video. <laughs> no, not for no fruit. Alright. <laughs> well, if that what does the Bible actually say? Your position is, is that once you're divorced, or you, you, a woman can't be divorced and she can't be remarried, or a man shouldn't divorce his wife. I don't know what your position is. Maybe you can clarify. Uh, but my position is, is that the most high is a divorcee. There's a laws for divorce. And people, once they are divorced, they can, in fact, get remarried. So let's see how this goes. And let's see if, um, since everybody has a lot to say, let's see if we got a lot to say on a professionally moderated um, platform. Let's see if uh, Ringo TV and maybe he have a couple other people may want to be with him on his board, on his side of that. Uh, let's see if we can get this going. Y'all have a blessed day. Make sure y'all get, make sure he gets his message, all right? Make sure you respond, Ringo. Check out my videos. Video one. Video two. All of these are live streams that I've already done already. Video three. Video four. These are all my videos that I've already made. I already done lost count. I think this is video five, right? I think that's video five right there, right? All of these videos, he ain't responding. None of them. None of them. Cowards. I'm talking about public debate. Debate these videos. Debate them. Respond to them like a man.
Number one, I'm not trying to appease none of you out there. He just said he's not a trying to appease none of us. <laughs> I keep telling you, fam, these, these type of people, they are, listen, people like Pastor P. Diddy Dow, he already know people like me. He already know who I am. He already know my level of work. He already know he done messed up. He already know that. He thought everything was good. You ain't safe, bro. You not safe. Not in these streets. You could do that at Straightway, but not here. It's a whole different world. People ain't gonna follow you when they watch these videos. They not following you. I'm waking everybody up. Everybody being woken up. You see the building? 1,300 people is here to hear about your sins. You out here fucking another man's wife, living in adultery for many years, hiding your sin. You twisted the Bible. You even said that, hey, anybody that got married under a state marriage contract, oh, the most high don't honor their marriage. What? So you using that to justify your adultery? And oh yeah, we got all the receipts. We got all the tapes. Let's get back to these things, man. Let's go. You can believe what you want to believe. Everybody knows how the internet works. Don't y'all know how the internet works? Uh, you better know how the internet works, because you don't. Tell me, when, when people say that they're content creators, that's exactly what they are. Do you think they give a damn about anything but content creating? It's crazy how this guy is on YouTube, but he's looking at content creators as if though we just like, like we don't know what we're doing. Fam, I'm building cases on you, fam. This is the court of public opinion. All these folks showed up for the court. Let's go. Um, now, what we need to be concerned about, what people truly need to be concerned about is fruit. That's what we need to be concerned about. So I'm not about to sit up here and trying to get up here and, and trying to appease the conscience of the court of public opinion who add nothing to me anyway. Do you see that? This is why when he talks about debate, you got to laugh because he's not really interested in what people think, he's not really interested in what I got to say. When people come out and they say, I want to debate you, it is not because they want to learn anything. They just want to be heard. They are already set in their ways. They are never going to change. Do you understand me? Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. I mean, 90% of you out there that are making videos about me, you didn't, li you didn't even like me anyway from the very beginning. Well, I ain't going nowhere. This ministry ain't going nowhere. See how prideful he is? I ain't going nowhere. This ministry, this ministry not going nowhere. Oh, it's gonna go somewhere, all right. Trust and believe that. This is gonna continue to keep growing. Like I said, watch and see. It makes no difference what people are doing, but it seems like a lot of people are concerned about my salvation, or are they really truly concerned about my salvation? Because who's gonna tell me how to repent and, and, and what to repent of? Because I don't repent the man. You don't repent the man. We repent to the most high y'all. Do you see the arrogance? How he's defiant? He's not interested in repenting. I don't even believe this man is an Israelite, fam. I believe he's of the other nations. Let's go. But what do I need to repent for if I'm not doing no sin? Ministry remains totally 100%. This man kicked another guy out of his, his uh, congregation that served for 14 years. Kicked him basically out. Basically said, get off my front porch. Is that how you handle a brother? I mean, if he did it to that man, he'll do that for anybody. So that means if any of you folks go to straightway and you disagree with something, they will shun you from the community. And then they'll make videos about you, slander your name, and take your wife and your daughter. <laughs> Trust and believe that, fam. Look at my videos and you'll learn the truth. Unaffected by all this negative um, PR campaign. Remember, these people are content creators. They don't care about truth. They don't care about lies. They don't. They don't. And they'll go out there and find anybody that will say anything in their so-called favor. I bring out the word that tells us we should live set apart. Because that's what the book says. All believe, all that believe were together. You people say you believe out there. How many y'all together? So just realize this and notice this. And, and I'm doing this for the Israelites who are actually um, telling me what people are saying. Listen, Pastor Dow don't care what they're saying. He just said he don't care what they're saying. 
if he don't care what they're saying, why he keep making videos talking about, oh, yeah, I want to challenge you to a debate if you don't care what I'm saying. <laughs> you care what I'm saying because what I'm saying makes a lot of sense and you know it's affecting business. Let's go back to the tapes. Let's go. By their fruits, you shall know them. That's all yes, by their fruits. Your fruit is adultery. My fruit is speaking the truth to rebuke, correct. That's what I'm doing. All I care about the fruits. And remember, these people ain't my judge. God is my judge. Really? Do you see the arrogance? These people ain't my judge. God is my judge. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says to judge righteously. The Bible says mark them that cause divisions. The Bible tell us to rebuke them sharply that others may fear. Do you understand me? But he said we're not, we're not his judge. So basically, no one can correct Pastor P. Diddy Dow. But he can correct you. Make that make sense. No man is above no man. I don't care if you're a pastor or call yourself a pastor. None of that stuff mean nothing to me. You're not above reproach. You're not above criticism. Some of these men be thinking, oh, I'm a pastor. Nobody could correct me. Nobody could say nothing to me. Oh, yeah, Ringo TV can. Because I don't give a fuck about none of y'all. I don't fear no man. Because I'm with the most high. Do you understand that? And none of you so-called self-appointed pastors are above reproach. None of you. You can all be rebuked. All be corrected with the sharpness of the scriptures. And I will roast all of you. So be on fair warning. I'm not playing no games with none of y'all. Let's go. I'm going to keep on doing what I'm going to do. And I'm going to keep on doing what I'm going to do. And watch this. Give it a few years. Right now, everything's hot. Give it a few years and let's see what these people are. Listen, by your words, you'll be justified. And by your words, you'll be condemned. You might not be around in a few years. You ought to be thanking God that you reach another day. But no, you're too arrogant and too proud. Pride goeth before the fall. None of us know the day nor the hour. You could be here today and tomorrow you're gone. Be thankful for the day. Be thankful. Give thanks. Give thanks for your daily bread. That's what the Bible teach. Not to be arrogant. Talking about, oh, well, let's see in a few years. You don't even know if you're going to be alive. You don't even know if you're going to be here. None of us know. That's why I tell you, when you get up in the morning, thank you most high for another day. Thank you most high for waking me up. Another opportunity to get it right. Another opportunity to do what I got to do. But no, not this guy. This man is arrogant. Just give it a few years. That's all it takes. Sometimes it don't even take that long. But hey, hey, there are a lot of people out there that are slandering and defaming my name. Every single one of them are all false witnesses. Really? All false witnesses? Prove it. Prove it. You got a camera. Prove it. I made multiple live streams. Take your pick and prove all things. Hold that which is true. Do it. If you can. Because I know you can't. They're all the false accusers because none of them know the story. Even if they did know the inside scoop. We know the story. You took Eric's wife, made her divorce him. And then you put her in your bed. That's what you did. You took another man's wife, and now you made her your own, and he still lived. You're an adulterer. It's just that simple. Based on where they're at spiritually, they are not going to judge righteousness anyway. Truth is, who cares about what people say and the videos that they're making? Who cares? Who really truly cares? I know straightway don't care because it has not stopped us in anything that we're doing. I'll say it again, the ministry remains totally 100% unaffected about all of this. We expect this. And, I mean, go out there and look at all these other preachers that's being accused of all different types of things and stuff. Uh, has it stopped them? No. I know I know. a lot of you think that I've got something personal against Geno Jennings. I don't. I don't have nothing against Geno Jennings. It's just that he opened up his mouth and he said he would debate anyone. And I called him on that. I've called a couple of people on that. 
And and then after a few going back and forth, I stopped. But you know what? He has people over there on his side that continue to keep using my image, use my name, keep on slandering. They, they put together videos as if we've already had a discussion and a debate and somebody go out there and look at it and all they're doing is just sound biting, taking clips here, clips there, clips here, clips there. And what do you think they're going to do? They're going to sway it to the favor of their side. That's called deception. How is it that we can see people who are deceivers, who are liars, and if I had someone that accused me, do I not have the right to stand before my accusers? I don't care how many people got to make these videos. They're going to keep on doing it. But these are people, literally, including, um, that, well, what's that white guy named Jamie? I saw him. Now, I will mention his name. Did y'all go check out his page? The man is a warlock. He's a witch. He's a warlock. He's a witch. How, did, how, how, how you could say that? Have you proven that? I mean, you're a false teacher and an adulterer. So if Jamie is a warlock and a witch, what about you? Are you a Freemason? That's the word on the street. See, anybody could say that. But we know you're an adulterer because the proof is there. See, you're never going to get, get away from this truth. You're not fit to be no pastor when you have another man's wife. I brought out the video evidence. You said we shouldn't make covenants and agreement with the inhabitants of the land when it comes to marriages. <laughs> and then we got a video clip of you saying that having a state marriage is cool, that you didn't break no laws of God. Which one is it? Hypocrite. So you said all of that because you wanted to use that to justify you taking Jamie, not Jamie, um, Eric Gonzalez's wife. In other words, that's my excuse. He was, his marriage wasn't honored by the Lord, so it's okay for me to get her. How many other men at Straightway are in adultery right now? How many? How many of you guys at Straightway took wives after getting them divorced from their husbands? Because if your leader is doing it, surely you're doing the same thing because you feel justified in your actions. Let's go. And you got people out there calling him your friend and you supposed to be an Israelite when you supposed to not have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. See, we got some bad stuff going on. And, I'm, and the sad part about it is that a lot of you people, your hearts are being deceived because you're too simple minded. Proverbs 619 says a false witness is speaking of lies and he does sow of discord among the brethren. There's a lot of that going on. So this is what you do. You pay attention to fruit. That's what we're doing. We're paying attention to your fruit. We're paying attention to your own videos, your own words now. I, I'm not making nothing up. Nobody can say that I'm making something up. All I do is I play the tapes. I show what you said, and I let the people listen. And they could just decide, are they going to follow the truth or are they going to follow a lie? Which one? because clearly you're in sin. Let's get back to the tapes. I have been slandered. I have been lied upon. Nope. I have had false witnesses rise up against me. Nope, all of that is a lie. I've already proven all things. If you've been slandered or lied on, prove it. Get on camera and prove it. Break it down. You can't. You don't have the ability to, to, to do that. None of, none of you, listen, nobody at Straightway, none of your guys in your army can break down videos like me. The compare guy, he's a clown. I suggest you stop. You're wasting your time. Um, Pastor Corey, a joke. Um, all the men, all your soldiers that you have at the front line, these are weak men. They're not editors. They're not producers. These guys have no understanding of social media or content creation or anything. You understand? You got a bunch of these NFL guys. Their, their powers were on the football field. On social media, they're losing every single time. And you, sir, you're not even qualified to preach because this stain is on your ministry. All these years, you've been with another man's wife and thought it was good in the eyes of the Most High. 
What a shame. And you put her in her own house. That's another thing, ladies and gentlemen. We had a testimony from a woman that pretty much said that Dow put Nelly in her own house, separate. So she got the luxury of being in her own house while his other three wives, I guess, is in one house. How come she's getting all this treatment? She got the best. Hmm. I wonder why. Let's get back to the tapes. I have all this for years. Oh, they, they're going to destroy straightway. This is it. And, and, and I guess somebody think that they're the agent for Satan is going to do it. And I'm going to continue to keep driving on and striving. But I'm not just going to uh, stop, cease to exist because I got a bunch of uh, long hair, prima donna, homosexual. Uh Notice what he just said. Long hair, prima donna, homosexuals. This is what he this is what he called me. That's what he called me, y'all. A homosexual, but he's talking about slander and bearing false witness. Where's the proof of these things? You just say things just to say it? So if I said, oh, Pastor Dow is gay, in order for me to say that, I have to back it up. I have to back up those claims with actual facts. This just goes to show you're not a man of integrity. You're in your feelings. Let's go. Looking people uh, pointing fingers at me, they supposed to. They, y'all have to understand that they supposed to, people supposed to. If I wasn't doing anything against Satan's kingdom, then guess what? Satan wouldn't attack me. So in his mind, I'm Satan. So why would you want to debate Satan? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. If any of you, listen to me very carefully. If any of you Bible scholars, super duper religious, men uh guys that eat bible scriptures for dinner and lunch <laughs> if it were possible that you can debate the devil you would lose you would lose he would destroy you see a lot of times we see like people that are religious they they know some scripture and they be like they they rebuking the devil and doing all this other stuff if the devil could have his way with you, he would destroy you. That's why we need the most high. Because he knows all the tricks. <laughs> he knows the Bible front and back. He knows the true name of the most high. The devil knows that. The devil know the name of the Messiah, the real name. So like how we're all fighting over what is the name of the Messiah? The devil is laughing at all of us because he already know the name. You can't really debate him. He know the Bible front to back because he already done destroyed so many men, manipulated societies, caused many wars. So for him to say that I'm the devil, why would you want to debate the devil? <laughs> He's using different military mind games to make you think that when people talk about Pastor P. Diddy Dow, if you hear any criticism coming his way, it got to be from the devil. It's not because he's doing something wrong. It's because he's doing something right and the devil is trying to attack him. So what does that do to his members in his cult? It make them look at people like me and say, oh, that guy on YouTube, Ringo. Yeah, that's the devil. He's rebuking my pastors because my pastor is doing something good. Do you see the mind games? This is the mind games they play on people. This is why you got to get out of religion. But he has got to use the people that are under his control. So I'm under the devil's control? Really? But I'm speaking all this truth? Make it make sense. <laughs> and, and, and under his control so he can use them at his will. Y'all don't understand that. How about you just believe? Now, what's an Eric Gonzalez? Yeah, Eric Gonzalez, man. Uh, that, that homosexual whoremonger. Now, he just called Eric Gonzalez a homosexual whoremonger. Are y'all not seeing this? So everybody that disagree with straightway or criticize straightway, you're calling them a homosexual? So let me get this straight. He called me a homosexual. He called Eric Gonzalez a homosexual. Um, who else he called? They, they call anybody. You're either effeminate or you're gay. This is the typical stuff they use, shaman language. 
Shame, guilt, insult, and the need to be right. Shout out to the late Kevin Sanders. This is what they're doing. Anytime they can't have their way, this is what they do. You know? Let's get back to the tapes. Now, go check that out. So, since everybody's pointing a finger at me, go check out his track record and see what he is. Um, the man just flat out uh, left and abandoned his family here. You heard that? He just said that Eric Gonzalez abandoned his family. He never abandoned his family. Go check out Rallo's live stream. Flora Dean Rallo, let's go. Check out his live stream where you had uh, Eric Gonzalez on there. And multiple times, even New Breed asked Mr. Gonzalez a very good question. So, and I'm paraphrasing, he asked him along the lines of, so you you really wanted to bring your wife back to you, your, your wife. And, he's, and he, he says like, yeah, which mean what that proves is he never abandoned his family. And we already had tapes before where he already done made public interviews, making it clear that he never abandoned his family. This is what Pastor P. Diddy Dowell did in order to take that man's wife. Because in his mind, he put it in her, her mind, Nellie's mind, that, oh, your husband abandoned you. So I, I can take you as a wife now, according to the Bible. Where is that in the scriptures? Where is it in the scriptures that it says you could do that as a pastor? Because Mr. Gonzalez brought his family the straight way to learn and to, to do this and do that. You end up taking his wife. Now you fucking his wife. And then you took his daughter, made her your daughter, and sold his daughter off to another man for 100K. Make that make sense. We already have all the videos. You understand? We're going to see that clip in this live stream, too. Let's get to the tapes. He's accused or the brother won't do. They will not come to our face. Notice he says come to his face. So he want a fight. <laughs> That's intimidation tactics. We in New York. We can peep game. Come to our face. Bruh, I already done been in your face by speaking this truth. Put out over 13 live streams about this case. When are you going to respond to it? You're talking about coming in your face. This is what I mean. Intimidation. That's all he tried to use. Fake bravado. That's what he do. Let's get back to these tapes, man. This is crazy. And bring those accusations. You know why? Because they're all false. If they're false, prove it. The videos are here. Prove it. Get on camera and speak. I challenge anybody at Straightway, all you clowns at Straightway, get on camera. Dissect my videos and prove where I'm wrong. Prove it. Now, do I expect to be slandered? Yes. Do I expect to be accused? Yes. Do I expect to be falsely represented? Yes. You know why? Because I preach a message unlike any other preacher on this internet. Just because I got one person. Yes, they definitely give him their checks. If y'all don't know, if you're now in the live stream, you're probably wondering, maybe you're in the, the YouTube shorts feed. This particular pastor, Pastor P. Diddy Dow, literally commands the men that work nine to five jobs to give him, hear this now, their whole check. <laughs> mm-hmm. We already showed the videos where a guy stood up. He said, yeah, this week I gave you the whole check. Next week I kept my check. Then the next week I give you back a whole check. <laughs> I'm like... You mean to tell me I'm a man, I got a whole family, and I'm giving this dude my check? You got to be out of your mind, bro. You got to be out of your mind. That's, that's a sucker move right there for you guys to be giving a man your whole check. That's worse, that's worse than the Creflo Dollars and TD Snakes of the world. That is offended and mad at me and runs to the internet to express all of his grievance. That's only to try to affect the ministry. I can tell you what's happened, but you won't believe it. All it's did and all it's done is give me more subscribers on my Patreon. All it's done is just uh, more people are actually supporting me than never before. And that's finally good, I told you. Whether my name is being mentioned in, in false pretense or people are lying on me, I'm just glad that it's being out there because intelligent people. That's totally vain. Because what he's basically saying is, whether it's negative or positive, I appreciate it. That's a prideful man. That means for him, it's all about fame. He don't care. 
He said, hey, I gained more subscribers. I gained more patrons. What did the Bible say? Not for filthy lucre. You're concerned about your patrons. So you're concerned about the money. You're not even concerned about the truth. It goes to show where your heart is. I'm gonna listen to this rhetoric, which I don't think you should do. I think you should follow fruit. Um, and if I'm just bad of a man and bad of a guy, why ain't I sitting in some jail and some prison rotting somewhere? Because nobody haven't reported you yet. <laughs> I'm sure if the feds and everybody come down there at straightway and really look at the place and find out what's going on, they may find something because based on the testimony that that woman made, and this is just a testimony that a woman made, it is alleged that children are being born at the straightway ministry and they're not having no birth certificates, no social security numbers. Um, it is said from another person that was in my live chat that there is a grave site of some sort next to uh, Pastor P. Diddy's uh, Dow's house. Allegedly that there is a grave site where there's possibly dead bodies. So now the burden of proof is for the feds to pretty much find out like what's really good because if they're at a compound and there's no way law enforcement could get there in time if there was an emergency ain't no telling what could happen over there you could literally go there get killed right they dig up a big old hole put you nine feet underground fill it up with cement build a house on top of it nobody won't even know what happened you'll just go missing so ain't no telling and also keep in mind for the court of public opinion uh, uh, Pastor P. Diddy Dow's original mentor and pastor is a, a, a guy, I believe it's Star or Stair. Um, I think it's RG or something Stair, was another cult leader who was messing around with young ladies in the church doing the unthinkable. Look it up. Even Craig Mack, the late Craig Mack, went to that cult seeking salvation and hope but he fell into the trap of the devil too we might have to talk about that in another video that's right craig mack was following a, a cult and end up dead could have been a situation of a sacrifice but let's get back to the tapes listen again it's amazing you know if we were really truly in a court a real true court many of you would be ashamed of yourself no you should be ashamed of yourself because you have another man's wife don't talk about shame when you with another man's wife most of you should be ashamed because you are not even following the book. Most oh, now you're projecting that we're not following the book, but you're not? Come on. People are telling me that I need to repent. You need to repent for not even following the book. Don't even know all the story. All you know is one side. Uh, people are calling me and telling me what somebody said who was in the ministry some years ago. I, I'm going to say this. By their fruits, you shall know them. Just because somebody says that I said this or I did that or I done that, where's the proof? <laughs> where's the proof? It's in my videos, fam. <laughs> I got all the proof. I showed all the proof. Why ain't you looking at it? Because you don't care. That's why it's up to you, the people now, to judge the matter and make your choice. I'm telling you. He's talking about where's the proof. Look at all the videos I've made. They mock them and say, oh, you made seven hour videos, nine hour videos. Nobody don't got no time to watch those videos. And what you're saying is you don't have no time for the truth. So what's the point of a debate if you're not watching the videos to learn the facts? Let's go. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> but anyway, nevertheless, you know why? Because I haven't done nothing to nobody. Wow. There's nobody out there that can tell you what I've done to them. And anyway, all you're hearing is, but hurt people expressing their emotions. There's a lot of people that have come forward to talk about what you've done to them. A lot of people. But look, notice how he's just acting like, well, I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm innocent. I didn't hurt nobody. I didn't hurt a fly. That's crazy, man. It's pretty much what you're hearing. And then you're hearing people out there who want clicks for their channels, who wants more attention for their channels. That's why they always include my name. They use your name because you're the subject matter. I mean, I don't understand, like, what's the matter with you about, oh, we want clicks, we want views. That's why we're on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, who posts a video on YouTube and don't want nobody to, get, to click on the video? <laughs> like, who does that? Social media is all about views. That's why we do content. 
So let's, let's stop with the semantics. Let's stop playing games. Let's stop moving the goalposts. Everybody's on YouTube because they want people to view their videos. Not only that, the video that I'm doing right now, obviously people are interested in it. Well, if, if, if that was in the case, nobody won't be here. <laughs> let's get back to the tapes. Because they don't have a name. And if they have a name. <laughs> he just said that I don't have a name. Bro, fam, the name Ringo TV has been solidified in these YouTube streets since 2006. Do you understand that? You know that already. You should know better than that. Everybody in these YouTube streets know who Ringo TV is. And if they don't, they've been living under a fucking rock this whole time. Because I've been putting in work since 2006. And I'm still here. Still here putting in work. Ain't that something? So how could you say something about a name? I mean, you have to be out of your mind. It kind of remind me of that song where uh, I think it was. Was it Eminem or was it Snoop Dogg? Where it says, when you try to diss Dre, you diss yourself. Who was it? It was either Eminem or, or Snoop Dogg. One of them said that. You try to diss Ringo TV, you diss yourself, man. You're embarrassing yourself. Let's go. My name is more popular than their name. So it's no big deal to me. People can say whatever they want to say. We're still doing what we're doing. Like I said, I'm still doing it. I myself personally, I wouldn't soak or immerse myself in none of this mess and stuff because 99.9% .9 of the people out there don't know the truth and they don't even care to hear the truth. Wow, so basically none of us know the truth according to him. So he's the only one that know the truth. None of us are intelligent enough to know anything. We all need to submit ourselves to him. <laughs> it's just, hey, that's blood in the water. Let all the sharks get around and all the snakes come around and let's- Oh, sorry, with Snoop Dogg, nothing but a G thing. Okay, cool. Get Pastor Dow. Go ahead and try to get your pound of flesh. But you're gonna find out one thing about it. Uh, I'm still here. Ecclesiasticus chapter nine, verse nine. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine lest thine heart incline unto her. And so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction. In other words, as a man, when you are around another man's wife, the Bible is saying, don't even sit next to her because you're going to want to fuck her. Because remember, you're still a man. If she's looking good and you're right next to her and it's in an inappropriate situation where her husband is not around, nobody's really looking, and it's just you and her, and you're drinking? Come on, fam. You know what's going to happen next. So don't even put yourself in a circumstance like that. Or you're going to fall into the condemnation. You're going to fall into corruption. That goes for any man. That's principles. You understand? Let's go back to the scriptures. Let's see what else we got. Because we're going to break down this stuff. First John. First John chapter 2, verse 16. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the lust and sensational craving of the flesh and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the father, but of, but of the world. And that's exactly how Dow think. He's full of pride. Anytime you hear him talk about fruit, he's talking about material things. That's what he's talking about, right? First Peter 5, 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and set aside yourself, your self-righteous pride. Notice, set aside your self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. That's something Dow don't understand. He exalted himself. You understand? That's what he's done. Let's go back. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 19. He who loves transgression loves strife and is quarrelsome. That's him wanting to debate. I challenge you to debate quarrelsome, right? He who proudly raises his gate seeketh destruction because of his 
arrogant pride. Did you get that? Proverbs chapter 21, verse 4. Haughty and arrogant eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, their self-centered pride is sin in the eyes of God. That's Pastor P. Diddy Dow. Pride goeth before the fall. This is how they think in their mind. When you try to give them truth, they are never going to receive it. They'll just look at everybody else as a demon. Everybody else is wrong except them. That's just how it goes in their world. Let's get back to the tapes. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. That describes everything with P. Diddy Dow. Proverbs 13, 10, through pride and presumptions come nothing but strife, but skillful and godly wisdom is with those who welcome well-advised counsel. Pro, uh, Psalms 59, 12, for the sin of their mouths and the words of their lips let them even be trapped in their pride and on account of the curses and lies which they tell. These things describe P. Diddy Dow, Proverbs 11, 2. When pride comes, boiling up with an arrogant attitude of self-importance, then come dishonor and shame. But with the humble, the teachable, who have been chiseled by trial and who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. Do you understand? When you are a person who is humble and sound of mind, that means you're following the Most High. But when you're full of pride and arrogance, you're not going to listen to nobody. Men who want to debate are full of arrogance and pride. They're not trying to listen. They don't come willing to learn. If P. Diddy Dow was interested in the truth, he would watch my videos. He would humble himself. He would be eager to learn, what is this man saying? What is he saying about me so I can respond with truth? But he didn't do that. He responded with arrogance. Let's get back. See what else we got. Titus chapter 10, chapter 1, excuse me, verse 10 to 11. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Wow. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 to 23 from the New Living Translation. Run from anything that simulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteousness, live in faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Again, I say... Don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. And this is what happens when you get into debates. They're pointless. They're fruitless. They don't profit nothing. Nothing happens. You just end up in a fight. Let's see what else happens here. Titus chapter 10, verse chapter 1, verse 10 New Living Translation, for there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. In other words, you have some people who will come to you and they'll be like, well, if you're not circumcised, then you're not going to make it to the kingdom. And they debate and they'll force you and they'll, they'll make you feel like you're not going to make it to the kingdom because of these things telling you it's all in the scriptures all you got to do is read to understand that's all you got to do second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 study and do your best to present yourself to god approve a workman test by trial who has no reason to be ashamed accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth that's what i do pastor p diddy dow don't do that 2 Timothy 3.16 from the Amplified Bible. All scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error, and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, 
behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage. See, these are the things that Pastor P. Diddy Dow is not doing because he's not uh, uh, adhering to the word of the Most High. If he was, he would have repented already. When men of the Lord come forward and we speak truth, in all actuality, each man that is coming with this truth regarding this situation are all great men. We know in part, we don't know it all, but we know in part. So if Pastor P. Diddy Dow is a true man of Yah, he would humble himself and listen. You got all types of men on YouTube that make videos speaking truth about this situation. And all of them need to be heard. You get it? So how come Dowling say, wait, you, wait a minute. You got all these men of the Lord, prominent men now, speaking. And Dow is ignoring all of it. That's pride. That's a man that feel like he didn't do no wrong. That's how he feel, guys. First Timothy chapter six, verse three to five, Amplified Bible. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus, um, Jesus Christ and with the doctrine and teaching which is in agreement with godliness, personal integrity, upright behavior, he is conceited and woefully ignorant, understanding nothing. That describes Pastor P. Diddy Dow. He has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, which produces evil envy, quarrels, verbal abuse, evil suspicions, and perpetual frictions between men who are corrupted in mind and deprived of truth, who think that godliness is a source of profit, a lucrative money-making business withdraw from them. And this is why you don't participate in debates because you're wasting your time and you're wasting your energy. That's all you're doing, guys. Let's go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, Amplified Bible. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and very exalted and proud things that set itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. That's what I'm doing when I'm pushing out this type of content. Do you understand me? We're, we're bringing down all these strongholds, all these, these wicked imaginations of these deceivers with the word of truth. That's what we're doing. Proverbs 25, 9. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Now, notice what it says. In other words, if you have an issue or cause, you're supposed to debate that with that person alone, not in public. Know the difference, guys. Let's get back to the tapes. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2, Amplified Bible. A close-minded fool does not delight in understanding, but only in revealing his personal opinions, unwittingly displaying his self-indulgence and his stupidity. That's what happens when you get involved in a debate. They're not interested in understanding anything. They just want to be heard. Romans 16, 17 through 18, Amplified Bible. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep your eyes on those who cause dissensions and create obstacles or introduce temptations. You know, like, hey, I challenge you to a debate for others to commit sin. 
acting in ways contrary to the doctrines which you have learned. Turn away from them, for such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and base desires. By smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting, the innocent, and the naive. And that is what Dow is doing right now. The unsuspecting he's deceiving. People that don't know the Bible. People that don't know the scriptures. That's what's really going on. You understand? If you don't know the scriptures, it is easy for a pastor to mislead you. That's just the facts. Let's get to the tapes. Romans chapter 1, verse 27 to 32. Notice all of this reading I'm doing. Notice that. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Notice that. God gave them over to a reprobate mind, which means you really can't save them. Like, you don't see me trying to preach to people that live the alternative. I don't got no time. You know why? They're not going to listen. I'm just being honest. They're not going to listen. See, if you knew how to read, you would know not to waste your time. I don't make videos about that. I just let them be. Because what does the Bible says? It says, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. So God did that. God gave them over to a mind, a reprobate mind. When you're reprobate, fam, you're gone. You're, you're in your own world. You believe what you're doing is right, and nobody can tell you otherwise. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, of full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, Malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Which means if you're a person who, uh, I guess, I guess supports the alternative, you're about everybody having their rights and you're, you join the parades. The Bible says you're going to also partake in their judgment. But I want you to get one thing out of, that, out of that. I'm not here to talk about people that live the alternative. I really don't care what they do. That's your prerogative. You know what I mean? As long as you don't bring that around me. That's, that's as simple as that. But the point that I want to make out of that is the fact that these people are full of debate. You see the word. It says murder, debate, debate, debate. Remember K. Michelle? Remember what Kay Michelle was doing? Remember the video clip I showed you of Kay Michelle going crazy on camera? She was like, I don't care what the Bible say. I don't care what the Bible say about the alternative. I don't care. It's right in my eye. Okay, do you get what I'm saying? She's debating the truth. In her mind, she's already set in her ways. You can't tell her nothing. So it don't make no sense anybody trying to tell her anything or anybody that want to debate. So what I'm trying to prove here is when people want to debate you, it's not because they want to learn. It's because they just want to be heard. They want to hear their self. They want to convince other people to be like them. That's what debaters do. That's what the Bible says to avoid debaters. Because they are reprobate. Understand that, guys. Let's get back to the tapes. Proverbs chapter 29 Verse 9, Amplified Bible, if a wise man has a controversy with a foolish and arrogant man. Now, notice what it says. If a wise man has a controversy with a foolish and arrogant man, the foolish man ignores logic and fairness and only rages or laughs and there is no peace, rest, or agreement. Are y'all getting that? See, if you look at the scriptures and you read, if you're a wise man and you have a controversy with a fool, an arrogant man, the foolish man will ignore all logic. 
all fairness. They're not there to listen. They're not there to learn nothing. Do you understand? There will be no agreement. It'll just be an argument. He'll laugh and he'll rage. It'll become a fight. This is why you're not supposed to indulge in these things. Proverbs 29, 9 from the King James. It says, if a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or, or, or laugh, there is no rest. <laughs> you see that? Meaning it's never going to end. It's just going to keep going on and on and on and on. You're just wasting your time and your energy. If you're wise, you won't even waste your time. A reoccurring theme in the pastoral letters makes an appearance once again in Titus 3. Avoid foolish debates. They are unprofitable and worthless. Previously, Paul cautioned Titus about rebellious people who were full of empty talk and deception. Are y'all not seeing this? See, this is what the Bible says. And this is why it's very important that you know the scriptures or else you're going to fall into deception and the wiles and the snares of the devil. That's why I don't participate in these debates and the false bravado of Pastor P. Diddy Dow. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. Now, I, I, I hate to say this. I don't mean to hurt Christians out there, um, but God does not hate divorce. Why would he hate? You heard him? He said God don't hate divorce. That's a lie. That's a total lie, fam. He said God don't hate divorce. That is a lie. Total lie. And I'm not going to read all the scriptures. I put the scriptures on the screen. That's for you to pause and read so you know what the Bible says. We already did this in multiple streams. We already did this. We already covered these things in multiple streams. You got to take the time, pause the videos, read what the Bible says. Divorce, when God, the creator of the universe, Almighty Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yahweh, as some people like to say, or Yahuwah, like some people like to say, why would he hate divorce when he himself is a divorcee? No, he's not. He's not a divorcee. That's a lie. You know how he's not? Because we have been reconciled back to him. The same thing that the Messiah said that Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But the Bible also says to the women that if she departs, she's to remain unmarried or be reconciled. So for him to say that the Most High is a divorcee is to say that he put us away and we never return. No, we're the rebellious people who have to be reconciled back to him. He's going to always be there. So how could you say he's a divorcee? The only way he could be a divorcee is if he, if he cast us away into outer darkness. He didn't do that. So you're a liar. Let's get back to the tapes. Because God has two wives, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Go read your Bible. Not what these secular people say out here according to the Christian perspective and point of view. But he has to. When, what God does hate is the putting away. And the putting away is the same thing as divorce. The book of 1 Corinthians says the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. So if Eric's wife was his, then she's bound by the law to her husband. So how you, how you end up in bed with her? Explain that to me. Explain how you end up in bed with another man's wife. If her husband is alive and he's on YouTube in videos, doing interviews, explain that. He hates men dealing treacherously with the wife of their youth. That is what he hates. He you dealt treacherously with another man's wife. You understand? And see, here's the problem right here, ladies and gentlemen. This particular Bible verse that you see on the screen right here, um, just take that and just take a marker and just mark out all of that from your Bible. Just do that. Because that's not in effect anymore. That's not in effect anymore. It's not. You know why? Because the Messiah said that Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And he made it clear that if any man put away his wife, except it be for adultery, right? Except it be for fornication, because fornication is adultery. Except it be for fornication, have committed adultery. So if if I have a woman, a wife, right? And she's a faithful wife, faithful. But for some reason, I'm just tired of her. I'm gonna go get me another woman. I'm tired of this one. I don't feel like taking care of her no more. She said something I don't like. I'm getting rid of her. The Messiah says, hey, if you get rid of that good faithful woman and go get another woman, you committed adultery. 
Now, a man can have more than one wife. Yeah. But the problem here is you got to listen to what he's saying. You're putting a woman away who is a faithful woman. She never committed adultery. She never did. So if you're putting her away, that's illegal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge you with sin of adultery. How come Dow ain't practicing that if he claimed he served the Messiah? If Dow claimed he followed the Messiah, how come he's not following what the Messiah says? Because this verse of scriptures from Deuteronomy is obsolete. The Messiah already done superseded what this says. Because that's what Moses is telling the people. Let's check out, check out what it says. Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. Because this is what Dao stands on. He don't care about what the Messiah say. This is what I'm telling you. He don't follow the Messiah. He don't. He follow Moses. Check it out. He, it says, When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he have found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand, and send her out his house. Now, why is this bad? Because it's dangerous for women, especially in today's day. And this is what these demon men are trying to do. What these guys are technically wanting to do with you ladies is take you in as wives, fuck you, right? Nut up inside you, make you top them off, right? I got to keep it raw for you, right? And then when they ready, they want to give you a writing of divorce, and send you out their house with nothing. Why do you think the world is the, the way it is today? Where these women take these guys to the bank and take all their money. Because think about what these men were doing back in the day. They were getting rid of wives. And these wives had nothing. No money. No way of fending for themselves. Because these wicked men were dealing treacherously with the women. You get it? The women had to go outside and prostitute themselves in order to make money. Because men were putting away women because of the hardness of their hearts. And this is what Dao believes in. You know what I mean? So it says, and when she is depart out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Now that contradicts what's going on in the New Testament. Where it says the woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives. And the only way she can marry is if her husband be dead. It says she's bound by the law. So obviously what Moses was allowing people to do wasn't right. And that's why the Messiah corrected it by saying, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. So how come Dao is not following that? Because he don't follow the Messiah. So now, if this man gave her a bill of divorce and then she went out and be another man's wife, that would make her automatically an adulteress already. Right? And it goes on and says, and if the latter husband hate her, notice this, if all these guys are hating this one woman, if the latter husband hate her, meaning the new guy she just got with, and he write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand, right, and send it her out his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after she been defiled. For that is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So this entire thing right here is all messed up. Because number one, the woman was with a man. She wasn't really doing nothing wrong. It's just that the guy decided he don't want her no more. So he just gave her a bill of divorcement, kicked her out the house. Now, typically what would probably happen is she would probably go back to her father's house. Or if her father was dead, she had nowhere to go. So she had to become a prostitute. You see what I mean? In order to survive, to make money. Trust me, this was going on many, many, many years ago. The men were dealing wickedly with women. So the Messiah had to clean that mess up and say, look, y'all been doing these women dirty because you're wicked. So I'm saying unto you that if you put away your wife, except it be for fornication and marry another, you committed adultery. And when he said that, the disciples were scared. They were like, look, it, it's better to remain single then. I'd rather not be married if I know I'm going to get judged like that. Right. Because you're wicked. But see, Dowell is teaching men at straightway to just give women a paper and say you're divorced. That's why he's trying to come against the state marriage license, because he want to make it easy for you to get rid of women. Are you getting that? But now here's the thing. If 
If it's wrong, according to Pastor P. Diddy Dow, to get a state marriage license, then why he made two women at Straightway divorce their husband by using the state? You, you, you went back to the same system you said it's wrong to go to. Come on now. How are you going to say it's wrong for people to have a state marriage license and say, well, God don't honor their marriage. God don't honor it. But you got a driver's license. You got a social security number. You got a passport. Hypocrite. It's crazy, man. Let's get back to the tapes. Not hate divorce because he clearly defined over in Dabarim, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 4. That is Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter. Verse Don't listen to him. He's lying in this. He is lying, people, 100 percent. This man is not following the Messiah. Check it out. 1 through 4, there is a law that is already in place that has been entrenched in Hebrew, Hebraic culture. Lies. For thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. Hundreds of thousands? Now, we know that's a lie because uh, from the days of the Messiah to now, it's not a hun hundreds of thousands of years. So we know you're lying already. There's a divorce provision, and it teaches you what to do and how to do it and how to go about it. What uh, y'all was doing more than anything was protecting the women from a stigma being up on them. You see, in the day, women didn't have the option to go out and to have the state on their side and take a man for over half of what he has. Or they didn't have the option to go... And keep in mind, the scriptures that I'm putting on the screen is regarding how a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lived. Notice Romans 7, 1, 3. Now, look. If Jamie, not Jamie, excuse me, if Eric Gonzalez was married to uh, Nelly, right? How did she end up with Pastor P. Diddy Dow? Check out what the Bible says. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Law, law, law. So this is a law. Law. How the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead. She is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. You see that? So Nellie is an adulteress right now. So what that makes Pastor P. Diddy Dow? An adulterer. She's an adulteress. He's an adulterer. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. So she is no adulteress though she be married to another man. The only way Nellie can be married to Pastor P. Diddy Dow is if uh, 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 Brother Gonzalez um, died, you know, most high forbid, right? That's the only way he can legally, in the eyes of the most high, take her to be his wife. That's the only way. So how come Pastor P. Diddy Dow is not obeying what the Bible says right here? Because he don't follow the Bible. Walmart or go to Kroger's or Myers or, or Lowe's or Home Depot to go to work. Back in the day, there's no such thing as employment like that. You either indentured yourself because in, as a servant because of debt or, or you either sold yourself into prostitution in order to make a living. Notice what he just said. Sold yourself as a prostitute to make a living. And that's exactly what he's trying to get these women to do. Because if these men are putting these women away. Now think about this, ladies. Again, shout out to all the ladies out there that have a J-O-B have a business, have their own house, have their own car, doing their own thing. Now, I'm not saying that to boost you up. I'm not saying that so you could become conceited and arrogant and crap on men. The reason why I'm saying that is because you're blessed. You're blessed in today's day because you're able to go out there and make it happen. Because back in the day, Women had to totally, totally, totally depend on their husband for all provisions. I'm not saying that you shouldn't depend on a man, even though most of you might have that independent spirit. All I'm saying is have balance. This is why marriages in today's day just don't work. This is why we fight in all day when it comes to dating and commitment because of women empowerment. So it, we're in a stage where because women are able to have their own, it's like they figure, well, I don't need a man. And this is why we don't have no marriages. This is why nothing works. This is why we just we just hook up to sleep with one another. And we're just having all these babies out of wedlock. It's because of feminism. So I'm not saying these things to puff you up or to pander towards you. What I'm saying is because of the treachery that was being done to women, the Most High has given you an opportunity to work, provide for yourself, go to college, all of these things is by design. Trust me. 
the most high's hand is in this, but also the devil hands is in it too. Because it's cool that you're able to have your own, but if you have that mind of, well, I'm an independent woman, I don't need a man, I'm do now you're taking on the spirit of the Antichrist. Because you still need that man. And that man need you for his help me. It's just that we got to get right with the most high. But what I'm trying to show you is, notice how he even said from his own mouth that women that were put away had to become prostitutes in order to survive. That's what you will end up with if you become a wife at straightway. You're going to end up being put away. Think about all those young ladies that are getting married at straightway. What are they doing? Are they working? Do they have any ownership of anything? Do they have any sort of savings, any sort of protection plan? What do they got? So if any of these men put them away, these men, these women are doomed because they don't got no way of, of you know, fending for themselves. They've been out of the workforce for years. They don't got their paperwork. They're in trouble. And then even more sad to add insult to injury is all of the children that are being born at Straightway. They don't got no birth certificates, no social security numbers. So how are these young kids going to function in society? How are they going to be able to get a driver's license, to get a house, to, 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 to do anything? They don't got no numbers, nothing. And this is what happens when religion and cult leaders take you in. They end up messing up and ruining your life. Let's go. People are still praising the Most High Yah despite of the hundred some hours that's been put together by Ringo TV. People are still glorifying Yah based on what they are seeing and what they know they see Yah doing through this ministry. So case closed, done. Hey, I want everybody out there, instead of questioning us, I want y'all to question Ringo TV and New Breed. Show us your fruit. Show us what you doing. It's easy for you to point the finger and talk about everybody else. As old saying goes, it's easy to get on, but it's hard to get off. Show everybody your fruit. And if you can't do it, then all you're going to do in your silence is going to show everybody the damn devil your ass really is. You damn satanic ass shits. You damn satanic ass shits. You damn satanic ass shits. Ah! That's that's good. Demand fruit. We want to see fruit. Yeah. Show yeah. us the not, fruit. Not not questionable suspect music videos. And again, he's drunk. He's always drunk, guys. Always. And these are his cheerleaders. Like the guy that at, at the top left, he's a major cheerleader for Dow. Major. That are cringy. <laughs> and cut your damn hair, Adonis. <laughs> I bet you it ain't gonna be no seven hour video. <laughs> no, not for no fruit. All right. <laughs> well, women can't get divorced and divorce and this, that, and the other. And I mean, in 20,000 different ways, you got all these people just adulterer, adulterer. And they kept coming on my show saying the same thing he's an adulterer you're following adult and it and it's like hey notice none of those so-called pastors or elders or whatever none of them know the bible because if they did they would be calling this man out and you know why they're not because most likely they're doing the same thing <laughs> most likely they're an adulterer too they're adult in adultery too you know it's really sad but this is what's going on at straightway y'all and I said, you know what? I ain't going to respond to this because Pass is going to be on the show tomorrow night. And with that said, Pass, I'm going to hand it over to you. Well, that's a pretty easy subject, isn't it? As a matter of fact, that's the subject that I actually tried to um, get Geno Jennings to take up on a debate because he actually made the statement. I would debate anyone on this divorce and remarriage. Now Notice, he said that because Geno said he would debate anyone, that he decided he's gonna challenge him. That's pride. Because it's not like if Gino was coming for him. You get what I mean? It's not like if Gino called him out. He went picking a fight with Gino. Gino was already doing his own thing. You get it? So he went out there to pick a fight. And because Gino didn't go along with the with the flow, 
he started to say Gina was a coward and he was this. This is what he do to build himself up. So it's the same thing with me. Oh, Ringo don't want to debate me. Oh, Ringo's a coward. So, you know, I'm trying to make myself strong again. Fam, with all the videos I've done exposing you, fam, the world already know who's the coward. The coward is you, not me. Because I already put in the work exposing you, exposing the truth. Hours upon hours of work. You haven't even put in no work to respond. If you haven't even done that, it's pointless. What is, the, what is there to debate? You can't even respond. Come on now. It's only going to be a damn argument. I'm not dumb. I'm wiser than you. Let's go. Listen, y'all have to understand that people take positions, doctrinal positions, and they actually believe that they're... See, that's, see, that's the problem. People taking doctrinal positions, but nobody's following what the Bible say. That's the problem we have. The problem we have today is everybody have their own belief system, but nobody's following what the Bible say. And this is why religion is sick. You know what I mean? It's just sick. This is why I keep telling people, if you following the most high, just follow the most high. Don't join no church. Don't call no man your pastor. Just read your own Bible. Do your own thing. But don't, don't be like, oh, yeah, this is my pastor. And, you know what I'm saying? He's teaching me. No, you made him your master. There was another brother. I believe uh, he was on Rollo's show. I don't got the name. So my apologies to that brother. But um, he was he was cooking with the scriptures. He was cooking on Rollo's show. He brought out the scriptures and he said something on the lines of how we we put these kind of men in position of where they are. In other words, we're always trying to set up a new king, a new Lord over us rather than following the, the most high. And that's true. We're always looking for someone to be above. And then what we do is we puff this person up. And before you know it, they are full of pride. Now the most high got to come in and, and bring them back down. It's really true. Let's go. The position that they're taking is the right position. Listen, I'm not here to convince or try to convince anyone. You can do whatever you want to do, but I do have the word of truth. Now, my question is this. For a lot of these people right here that, that are so interested or is, uh, in, in my salvation, which I don't believe none of these haters is interested in my salvation. As a matter of fact, uh, they want my destruction more than anything. But when you got married, I'm talking to everybody out there. When you got married, you can only get married one or two ways. That's it. Either you got married by the state and you reside, or either you drew up your own contract and agreement, and you and your woman signed it, and it was honored by Yah. Who told you that that's honored by Yah? <laughs> this is what I mean by false doctrine. In other words, what he's saying is that if you drew up your own contract, that's honored by the Most High. But... If you stood before the presence of witnesses in the presence of the Most High to get married by the state, oh, the Most High don't honor that. <laughs> Where he get this stuff from? Where's the chapter and verse? Where is that in the Bible? It's nowhere. He's doing that because he's trying to justify his own adultery. That's why he's doing that, guys. The majority of you people out here, I would say probably have a secular marriage license. What about you and Sister Carol, hypocrite? I guarantee you, you got that secular marriage license. What are you going to say about that? If you have a secular marriage license, then who presides over that contract or that agreement? The state does. The state does. More false doctrine. Again, you have to understand something, people. What this man is doing is so dangerous because if he's teaching this, how many other people at Straightway are following this mindset? Imagine how many women come to Straightway divorcing their husbands and remarrying these men at the plantation. That's crazy, man. That, that's a lot of sin. A lot. So you have no power to dissolve any damn thing without the authority of the state. First of all, why would you be trying to dissolve anything in the first place? How is it that all of these men are focused only on dissolving relationships? Why? Because they don't want to take care of the previous women they, get, they got. You get what I mean? They want it to be easy in order for them to divorce. But what did the Messiah say? Except it be for fornication. The Messiah said... You cannot divorce your wife 
unless she committed adultery. So if your woman wasn't taking heavy meat from another man, you have no grounds to divorce her. None. The Messiah didn't say, oh, except that B, if she uh, was verbally abusive, except that B, if she put hands on you. Because, you know, a lot of times what these churches like to say is, well, what if the man was abusing the woman physically? Should that be grounds for her to get a divorce? Should that be grounds? Where's the chapter and the verse on that? Because that's still her husband. <laughs> she could separate, meaning you could stay by your mom's house while he go get help, get himself together. But he's still your husband. Ain't none of that, oh, I'm going to go get me a divorce, find me another man. So you get a new man, he whoop your ass. Now what? You're going to go get a new man? Then the new man whoop your ass again? You're going to go get a new man? See how you're you playing this game? See, it's interesting how anytime we have these conversations, they always say, well, what if the man is abusing the woman? You never hear an argument of what if a woman is physically abusing the man? Should the man have grounds to go get a divorce? You never hear that argument. They always use the argument of a man whooping some woman's tail when really that's not even the case in the majority of relationships. In the majority of marriages and relationships, it is very rare that a man is physically abusing a woman. Those are always isolated stories, you know. In the majority of every marriage there is, that's not happening. And what we need to do is start to teach people, how is it that y'all always end up with people that are abusing you? How is it that you ladies are always getting with men that are putting hands on you? So hold up, where's the vetting process? Where's the process of your family meeting this guy? Where's the process of you guys uh, letting your, your folks introduce whoever this person is so they could look at him and be like, let me see who he is. This is what happens when you jump in bed with a ninja, then he whooping your ass. That's your fault. That's your fault at the end of the day. But you want to be quick to, oh, well, I got grounds to get a divorce. That's what Dowell did with Nelly. Dowell tried to make it seem like if... Mr. Gonzalez was abusing Nelly and abandoned Nelly. So that's why you got grounds to get a divorce. Or, oh, he's messing with a married woman. So Nelly, you could get a divorce. But hold up, how, how, how is that possible that you want to get a divorce because he's messing with a married woman, but you end up as a married woman messing with the pastor? How does two wrongs make a right? <laughs> Let's go. See, what happens is, is that people, they get, and they, they, they come into this, they start hearing, we Israel, we keep the commandments, we all this, we all that. They start hearing all this, right? And then they forget what the book says over in Exodus 34, 12, when it says, you take heed to yourself, that you make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether you go listen. Those scriptures that he's talking about have nothing to do with marriages, guys. We already, we already exposed that in my previous live streams. He butchered the Bible verses to support his false doctrine and lies. Be a snare unto you. Exodus 23, 32. Do not make a covenant. That means agreement. With them, nor the mighty ones. Let them not dwell in your land. Let them not make you to... Let them not dwell in your land. What that have to do with a marriage license? <laughs> See, this is how you know that this man don't know how to read, to understand. He's just twisting the Bible, fam. Totally. Being against me when you serve their mighty ones and it becomes a snare unto you. Do if you have a marriage certificate, you're not serving nobody. <laughs> Those verses were all about covenants with their idol gods if you read the, the verses it's talking about us not serving other gods because the children of israel came out of the house of bondage and in their process of fleeing he's making it clear what they shouldn't do that's it but he's twisting the scriptures and all of these guys here are supposed to be pastors guys keep that in mind but yet none of them have any understanding of the bible either they're all ignorant two. And when Yahweh your Elohim shall deliver you before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, and make no covenant, nor show mercy unto them. 
nor show mercy unto them. Does that sound like a marriage certificate? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, these look at the, these guys are supposed to be pastors. How these guys are pastors and they sitting there watching a man twist the Bible and they they're in agreement because they're all reprobates. Neither shall not make marriages with them. Thy daughters shall not give unto thy sons. And He's talking about you not making your daughters and sons marry the people of the other nations that worship idol gods. Why? Because they'll cause you to worship other gods. That's what they'll do. You see what I'm saying? He's literally telling you, don't let your children marry these foreigners. If you read the Bible, that's what it says. It's not talking about no marriage contracts or agreements like that. It's talking about serving other gods. The man don't know how to read. And your daughters, you to, don't take to your son. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant. With and again, for those that are watching the stream right now, salute to everybody that's that's viewing in the clouds, everybody that's in the clouds. We're also streaming simultaneously on two different channels at the same time, on the Ringo TV Raw channel and on the Ringo TV Reaction channel. So on the Ringo TV Raw channel, we got the vertical stream going. So if you're in uh, the YouTube shorts, you're kind of just with your phone. It's late. You're probably less flipping through videos. You're like, who the hell is this guy right here with a hood on? What is he talking about? Um, if you want to see the horizontal view, we're wide angle and you can see the footage and the content that we're doing, you would have to come on over to the Ringo TV Reactions channel. And you can see that. So we got two channels going at the same time doing the content. Let's go. Foreign people of this land, and 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. They forget what the book says over in Exodus 34, 12, when it says, you take heed to yourself, that you make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether you go, lest it be a snare unto you. Now, again, if you if you look at the scriptures, I'm not going to go through reading these. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let it play. Read the scriptures on your own timing. Read it with your own timing. None of these scriptures have anything to do with what the subject matter is. I've already read all of these scriptures in its entirety in other streams. If you didn't watch those streams, I suggest you do. I'm just going to let it play. You read it in your own time. Exodus 23 32, do not make a covenant, that means agreement, with them nor their mighty ones. Let them not dwell in your land, let them not make you to sin against me when you serve their mighty ones. And He's even twisting the scriptures when he says serve their mighty ones, because the Bible actually says serve their, serve other gods. That's what it talks about. Becomes a snare unto you. Notice it says serve their gods. Deuteronomy 7, 2. And when Yahweh your Elohim shall deliver you before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them and make no covenant, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters shall not give unto thy sons, and your daughters you don't take to your son. Again, they go to scriptures. Read them in your own timing. We already read these again before in multiple streams. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% .9 of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. It's crazy stuff, man. This guy crazy. And you believe that you are married under Yah. You are deceived. You're he just said you're deceived. So basically what he's saying is that you're not married under the most high if you got a state marriage license. That's basically what he's saying. Now, I'm not here to endorse state marriage license. I'm not here to endorse that. 
What I'm saying is he said that if you have a state marriage license, that it's not honored in the eyes of the most high. This is why he feel he's obligated or justified in taking Mr. Gonzalez's wife. So that means when he saw her come to the camp, he didn't see her as husband and wife. Come on, man. He knew what he was doing. He just got caught up. And now that he know he caught, he trying to justify his sin. Let's go. Greatly deceived. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You know, you know the reason why? Because if you are a man of Yah, only you can dissolve that contract. So when you go out there and you get married by the state, guess what? You got to dissolve that contract and agreement. Don't come over here hollering you playing Hebrew and you playing Israelite. It almost sounds as if he's saying that, let's say, for example, you come the straight way, that it, you would have to, uh, let's say if you're a, you're a man and you come there with your wife, it's almost as if he's saying also, y'all need to dissolve that contract y'all have so that y'all could be, you know, do the marriage over in the eyes of Yah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's teaching people that at Straightway. Like people are coming there married already with a state contract or license and he's telling them, hey, you know, get, get rid of that so we can remarry you based on the scriptures. And that's crazy because here's the problem with that. He's telling you it's wrong, but yet he got a driver's license. <laughs> Where, what, where's the Bible verse that says you could keep the driver's license, that God honors that, <laughs> right? God honors your driver's license. He, uh, he honors uh, you being in the trucking industry, like all you guys that, that drive trucks. You got to get, I believe, a CDL, I believe. <laughs> so that means that if I'm in the truth, I can't, I can't be a truck driver. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying, because I can't make no agreements with the world, the inhabitants of the land. I'm telling you, you listen to guys like this, he's going to deceive you. Let's go. Because he, he's out of his mind. When you set up a Christianity and you accepted all their contracts and their agreements and every damn thing else, then all of a sudden, uh, 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 a woman can't divorce. You wasn't even... Oh, that's good. Uh, 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 you know, license to bear arms. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, listen, there's all sorts of licenses that we need in order to live and survive in the world. That, that means I can't start a business. Because if you're trying to get your LLC, you need a license. Your C Corp, you need a license. Uh, you know, uh, you, you need all these things. You, you have to have social security numbers. You have to have a state ID. You have to have these things in order to get these things. Your C Corp. To start a bank account. To pay taxes. I'm telling you, man, religion has really fried people's brains, guys. I'm not saying the Bible is wrong. That's not what I'm saying. So don't misconstrue what I'm saying. What I'm saying is religion, religion. When people become religious, they just become no earthly good. Let's go. Under that law, in the first damn place. So you can't be sitting there playing both sides of the fence. And you type, you know what you're talking about. That means I can't fly a drone in New York and in certain areas unless I have license. <laughs> wow. This is sad, fam. Now I got to go send the drone back. Man. Concerning adultery. And I submit to you. Listen to this, guys. Check this out. Listen to this. Very important video clip. He, 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 a oh man. He didn't even realize he have a video on his channel that actually incriminates him and prove that he's a hypocrite. Listen to this video clip. While, listen to how it contradicts everything he said. That the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. But you had your feet massaged by Nellie while she was married. <laughs> That's right. He had his feet massaged by Nellie while she was still married. Let me see if I got that tape. Let me see. Hold on. No, that's not it. Um, there I we go. Let's go to it. We got to go to the tapes. Check it out, guys. Um, I was there when there was the controversy uh, uh, of whether or not she was going to be with Pastor Dow or not. I've seen, I was there when things weren't, you know, like, like literally finalized. I stayed in Pastor Dow's house twice. Twice. Opened up one door, 
and he's getting his feet rubbed by Sister Nelly. Oh, whoa! Go figure. Wow! I'm like, all right. Well, he's got wow. it going on, but that, hey, that's his personal business. But now it's like, hey, it's all out there now, so I mean, I, it's all out there now. <laughs> man. I'm like, oh, man. What yeah, you, you know, but I've, I've been so quiet. I haven't said nothing. And Are y'all seeing what's going on, fam? So this man was getting his feet rubbed by another man's wife before anything got finalized. Ain't that something? I wouldn't be surprised if he was putting heavy meat in that woman before uh, things got settled. Because in order for you to be with another man's wife, you had to have been sleeping with her beforehand. There's no way you could tell me that you weren't. It wasn't like, okay, once you got the paperwork already done, okay, now, now you... No, no, no. Y'all already had that agreement already. You was already done smashing her, fam. There's no way around that one, fam. This is why I know the streets, bro. Let's go. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. She was married, so you committed adultery. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. She is married, and she's still legally bound to Eric because he's not dead. How come Dowell cannot answer the question? How come Dowell is not following what the Bible say? The Bible says a woman is bound to her husband as long as he liveth. If, she, if the husband be dead, then she's at liberty to marry whom she will, only in the Lord. That's what the Bible say. So how come he's not following it? If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. Even in Islam, they even got laws that's written down um, in, in the, the Quran that a man can have up to four wives. They put restrictions on it. But there's nothing in the book that restricts that. But then you get society over there to tell you, oh, you can't have number one wife. That's on paper. You see, if a man has one wife on paper, a state marriage license, you see, if a man has one wife on paper, Listen. state marriage license, you see, if a man has one wife on paper, state marriage license, and if he has a covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in his land. He has not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of God he has, because he has not sinned. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% of you that are listening to this that went out there and got a state marriage license. So we got all these laws that telling us to make no covenant with the foreign people of this land. And 99.9% of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. 99.9% of you that are listening to this have went out there and got a state marriage license. And you believe that you are married under Yah, you are deceived. You're greatly deceived. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You're not married under Yah. You're married under that state. You see, if a man has one wife on paper. Listen to what he's saying, guys. This is total contradiction. He's saying if a man got one wife on paper. Now, remember I taught you that. Um, let me let me backpedal a little bit and fast forward. A lot of times we get questions of is it illegal for a man to have multiple wives in America. A lot of you believe it is. No. Pay attention. In order for something to be illegal, you would have to be breaking the law. What is the law in America concerning marriage? 
You can only have one wife on file as a marriage license. One. Listen to me very carefully. Let's just say I, Ringo TV, don't want to have nothing to do with marriage. I don't want no wife. I don't want no kids. But I want five women so I can fuck. Because I want some head and I want some vagina every other night from all these sisters. Is it illegal in America for me to have five women that I'm just fucking? Where's all of the people that says, oh, it's illegal, it's illegal, you're breaking the laws of the land? No, it's not illegal. Because if that's the case, then every woman out here that have multiple baby daddies, having kids out of wedlock, they would be in prison. We're talking about laws. Is it unlawful? Is it illegal? No. Right? It kind of go back to the, oh, a bishop then must be the husband of one wife. And people run with that assuming that that's some sort of commandment for all men to be monogamous. No, learn how to read. A bishop then must be blameless. So if I don't want to be a fucking bishop, then guess what? That don't apply to me. And if you knew how to read, he's not saying you have to have one wife. You have to have at least one wife. Because if you know how to read to understand, if you continue reading the scriptures, it says not a novice, lest he fall into the condemnation of the devil. In other words, if you're not able to take care of your own house, rule of your own house and your children, how can you take care of the church? So in order for a man to be a bishop, he have to have at least, at least one wife. Not a novice. What would be a novice? A man that don't have a family. A man that don't have no wife. How are you going to lead the church? You don't even got a family. You're going to fall into pride. And why would the writer have to tell you, oh, if you want to be a bishop, you must be the husband of one wife. That wouldn't make any logical sense if everyone in society only had one wife. Why would the writer have to remind me of having one wife if that's what we're doing right now? This is what happens when people don't know how to read to understand. This is what happens. So now, getting back to the point. Is it unlawful for a man to have multiple wives in America? No. The only way it would be unlawful is if you're breaking the law. How do you break the law? Learn. If I marry a woman in New York based on the marriage license contract, right? Okay, cool. She's my wife in New York. And then I say, you know what? Because I want the benefits of the government, because I want to file taxes and do this and do that, because I want to have insurance and this and that and have these women all on the paperwork, I'm going to go try to marry a woman in Cali, right? That's called bigamy. You broke the law. You get it? That's illegal because you're trying to marry these women based on the state. But now, if I have a woman that's on paper in New York, but I'm practicing polygyny, so instead what I do is I get my own agreement between this new sister here, and we make this agreement to us between us and the Most High, and we got witnesses right there. How can you tell me that I'm doing something illegal? I didn't break no law. So when we talk about what is illegal and what is this and laws of the land, Y'all got to know what laws are. Half of y'all don't even know the Constitution. If we were to ask you to read this and read that or uh, 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 what this amendment and that amendment, half of you, I would say at least 90% of you don't even know it. You don't even know your rights. Basic human rights. You don't even know. But you're quick to say something is illegal. You first of all have to know the law. Some of you don't even know what bigamy means. Mean. Y'all got to go Google it. Let me see. What, what does bigamy mean? It's crazy. Now, listen to what he say because he's contradicting himself. He's saying it's okay if you got a state marriage license and if you want to practice polygyny, all you got to do is have those separate agreements. He said you didn't break no laws and you didn't break no laws of God. In other words, God accept and he see you for who you are. You understand? And also, to the people that like to say the Bible says you have to follow the laws of the land, the Bible do not say that. We got to stop saying the Bible said something when it doesn't say that. The Bible is not telling you to follow the laws of the land. The Bible is talking about those that are in position, that are righteous, 
those people who are in position of power and influence. If you're going to tell me that I need to follow the laws of the land, then what you're telling me is I need to accept homosexuality. It's law in the land that what they do is considered good. Matter of fact, they could get married. So I want to know if you're a believer in Christ, do you accept the law that they provided? Because if you say you don't, you're a fucking hypocrite. Furthermore, it's going to be mandatory and law that all must get the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. The Bible says you're going to have to do this. So my question to you folks that follow the laws of the land, are you going to line up to get the, the, the mark of the beast? Most of you already got the, the pointy thing in your arm because you were afraid you were going to lose your job. Remember that? Hello? Don't look around like you don't know. If you went and got the thing thing because your job told you if you don't, you're going to get fired, you will get the mark of the beast because the most high proved that you would. You were fearful. You were concerned about your job. You were concerned about how you're going to eat, how you're going to drink, and you went and you gave them your body. So don't tell me you're not going to take the mark of the beast. You will because if you took that pointy thing, chances is you will take that mark. That was a test for all of humanity. And it's clear. And remember, New York is normally the testing ground for all of their evil. All evil that is done in the world always get tested in New York. Everything. If you do your research on all the states, all of the evil, all of the plotting, all of the, the chemical warfare, all of everything that's evil, it always get tested in New York first. All the times. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if you from New York, you're one heck of a person, bro. Because you've been through a lot. Now, let's get back to them tapes. Hear the truth. State marriage license. And if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in his land. Wow. It's not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of God. He's because he has not sinned. So if I, if, if I have not sinned and I have not broken no laws of Yah, how is it that in that other video you said that, you know, if I'm not, that we're not supposed to make any covenants with the inhabitants of the land? Even though you took all the scriptures out of context, you made those points as if though you were telling this great truth regarding, uh, you know, contracts with the world in terms of marriage contracts. So you would have to explain to the public now. The burden of proof is on you. How is it that in one video you said we're not breaking the laws of God, but then you told us that it's the law of God that we don't make any agreements with them? So which one is it? You contradicted yourself, fam. Checkmate. <laughs> Let's get back to the tapes. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. New York is the testing ground. Think about all the crime that's going on. Now, we got crime all over the world, but y'all don't understand. There's so much crime going on in New York. It's unbelievable. Every single day. Fam, people getting kicked into subway tracks every day. The news don't even report it. People getting pushed into subway tracks every day, dying. Nobody reports it. Once in a blue, you hear a little report on the news. People getting kicked into tracks. Migrants, this, that, that. All of these testings is always done in New York. New York is the testing ground of all sorts of catastrophes and evil and, and wickedness. It's always in New York first. Let's go. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. You see, if a man has one wife on paper, state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in this land. No laws in this land. It is not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broke the law of God. He is because he has not sinned. He has broken no laws in this land, no laws of God, because he have not sinned. So if I did not sin, why are you telling people that we have to be, we have to not make any covenants and agreements with the inhabitants of the land? See, and he did that video two years ago, guys. Two years ago, he made that video. But because these guys are foolish, 
They keep these videos online for me to find. I told you, by your words, you'll be justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. I will only use your words to destroy you. Just, just your words. I don't make stuff up. I use your words against you. Check it out. Check it out right there. Two years ago, the video is titled, Divorce and Remarriage. Is it a sin? And keep in mind, the reason why he's making these videos is because of the controversy about him stealing another man's wife. This man have a plethora of videos about divorce, remarriage, divorce, remarriage. This is why he was going back and forth with Geno Jennings. It all makes sense now. It was because of his sin. Maybe Geno didn't know that he took another man's wife. Maybe he didn't know that. Or maybe he did. You know what I mean? But my point is, he wanted to debate Geno Jennings so much, so badly. And then because Geno didn't go with the flow, he started to say the man was a coward, he's a this, he's a dad. And he had everybody believing it, including me. I thought that, you know, he was the other guy was backing down from the debate. And now that everything came out about the Rufus situation, it opened up the floodgates and it made me do my investigation. I start learning this man been in adultery the whole time. So I'm like, wait a minute. Man, let me talk about that. Let me focus on that, fam. Let's bring his sin to light so the world can see it because this is out of pocket, fam. Anyway, it is not a sin. For He's saying it's not a sin to get a divorce. To be married and divorced. That's crazy. It is not a sin for you to be married and divorced. It is not a sin. It is a sin because the Messiah made it so. He said, if you put away your wife, accept it be for fornication and marry another, you commit adultery. If a woman is bound by the law to her husband and she depart, the Bible tells her, be, remain unmarried or, or be reconciled back to your husband. In other words, sister, if you have some need for some D, you've been missing your husband. He said, go on now, apologize, be reconciled back to your husband. You know what I mean? But no, rather than dial, counsel Eric Gonzalez's ex-wife and say, nah, sister, that's your husband. Doesn't matter if y'all got issues. Doesn't matter what the case is. I'm a man of truth. I'm not going to have you here at the camp rebelling. Uh, we need to give you some counseling. We're going to make sure that you reconcile back with your husband. We're going to call him. We're going to make things right. We're going to, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get the other elders involved. We're going to let the sisters of the church talk to you. We're going to build you back with your husband. But no, he didn't want that. He wanted that woman for himself. He wanted that woman for himself. I don't know how she was looking back then. I don't have no ideas how she was looking, how she was dressing. But to his eyes, it must have been the kind of woman that he really, really wanted. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. So, hey, let's get back to the tapes, do what we got to do. For you to be married and divorced. Erica is my daughter. Notice he's claiming Eric's daughter as his now. Check this out. That's Eric Gonzalez's daughter on the left. Right? Check it out. She's not biologically my daughter. But Erica's my daughter because I'm married to her mother. Wow. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he's not committed no adultery at all. Erica is my daughter. Wow. She's not biologically my daughter. But Erica's my daughter because I'm married to her mother. Wow. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman's not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. Now, Erica is my daughter. She's not biologically my daughter, but Erica's my daughter because I'm married to her mother. Now, Erica is my daughter. Man. She's not biologically my daughter. But Erica's my daughter because I'm married to her mother. Now, Erica, status has changed. She is married to Elder Mitchell. Yeah, because you sold her. Could y'all believe that? Dowell 
took Eric's daughter and sold her fam for 100K. Sold her to another man. His virgin daughter. That's right. Took another man's daughter. And you know it's all for the money, right? He already had this thing planned because if you really think about this, he took Nelly as a wife in order for him to become a stepdaddy, knowing that another man would have to bring the dowry to him. Are y'all seeing that? Totally dishonored her father. Make it make sense, y'all. That's crazy, fam. And what's crazy about this is the dowry is supposed to go to the daughter, not dowel. The dowry is supposed to go to the virgin girl, the virgin woman. Why? Because that's her protection. In case the man put her away, she got money in the bank, she got money saved up, she can fend for herself and don't have to go into prostitution. You understand? But the way the church did it and these wicked pastors, they believe that the dowry is supposed to go to the father. Well, if that's the case, how come it didn't go to Eric Gonzalez? Because Dowell would be a stepdaddy. Like, how the fuck you just take the money and take it for yourself, bro? Like, you're wicked, bro. Wicked. You totally dishonored her father. When the Bible says, thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long. And you dishonored that man. Took his wife and took his daughter. And to add insult to injury, Mr. Gonzalez haven't seen his daughter since the year of about 2013, somewhere around there, 2012, 2013. He haven't even seen his daughter or the four kids that she allegedly have. I believe it's four kids. I don't know. So she had about four bambinos and, you know, the, the father, her, her father, biological father, haven't even seen her, talked to her, or seen the grandkids. Now you tell me, what kind of pastor allows a biological father to suffer by not seeing his grandkids? It kind of reminds you of the situation with, uh, 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 you know, Jacob, where, you know, Joseph was thought to be dead and, um, you know what I mean? He thought he lost his son and, and all this other stuff. So it kind of goes back to that. Imagine that. You have a biological father out there that can't see his grandkids because they are stuck at the plantation of straightway. Ain't that amazing? But you want to go to this pastor talking about, yeah, he's a good man of God. No, he's not. He destroyed that young lady. She literally is rebellious against her own father. They put a battery in her back and caused her to rebel against her own father. I promise you, in the future, she is going to regret it. She's going to regret it. Trust and believe, she's going to regret the day she disrespected her father. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's happening. You don't let other people get in between you and your father. You don't do that. Because especially, it's like mother, like daughter. The mother is out there. Uh, basically defiling herself, and then they, they destroyed the daughter. Same way. This is sad, man. One big mess. And this happened because Gonzalez brung his family to straightway. And that's what happened to his family. So think about how many other men brought their families to straightway, and this happened where they got their wives and daughters taken from them. Everything that she is as a woman is because of Elder Mitchell now. The mother that she is now is because she's in that man's house under that man's roof. This is sound thinking. This wow. is righteous. I am not I am not married to a woman that has been covered. Wow. I am not I am not married to a woman that has been covered. He said I am not married to a woman that has been covered. So he's basically saying that Nelly never been married that's what he's saying <laughs> he's saying nelly never been covered why because in his mind in his sick mind he believed that the marriage license that she had with eric was null and void in the eyes of the most high where is the chapter and verse that says that 
Where is the chapter and verse that says if you get married with a state marriage contract that that don't count? Really? <laughs> and so so what happened with the situation with uh, 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 who's this guy? Joseph. The woman that he got with. Was that a marriage between him and the most high? <laughs> no. Most high honored it, right? We could go all throughout the Bible. Do you see how you catch these guys, these snakes? Man, I tell you, man, you got to read your Bible, man. I am not I am not married to a woman that has been covered. Now, did divorce come? Yeah, it came for a reason. Either you got a rebellious woman or a rebellious man. Either way it goes, it comes from the hardness of the heart. And who cares about the school of Shemael or Helial? Nobody cares about none of that. Yes, yes. Bas that's basically what he do um, at uh, the Ruach. He says, so he decides who marriage is va valid. Yes, that's exactly what um, Dowell does. In his mind, if you got married with a state marriage license or whatever the case is, in his eyes, your marriage is not real. God is not with it. And it's just not there. So basically what he's saying, is he could take anybody's wife. So if you come to straightway and you're like, yeah, I'm married. You got a contract with the state? Yeah. Well, then technically we could take your wife. I wouldn't be surprised if they use their guns and intimidation to take other men's wives and force them out of the community, take their wives, and then make their wives uh, uh, legally divorce them by the state so that they could take their women. I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. You have to stay within the confines of the word. You go outside of that, you're going to end up on sandy, sinking ground. And that's exactly what you did. You stepped outside of the word, and now you're on sandy, seeking, sinking ground. So now you're not going to end up going to no hell because you had a rebellious woman that left you, went out and opened up her legs to somebody else. But that's what Nellie did for you. She opened up her legs to you. She was a rebellious woman. You literally took in a rebellious woman. Defiled herself. Defiled herself. You defiled Nellie. You were supposed to send her back to her husband. You can't do that. The land will be greatly polluted. The straightway is polluted. Straightway is polluted right now. Turn around and tell a man that he has to go back into a land where another man has done put his DNA inside this woman. And that's what you did. You put your DNA inside of Nellie. That's why Eric, he don't want her back. It ain't no reconciliation about, oh, be reconciled back to your husband. Not after you defiled her. Ain't no telling what the type of things you did with her. And then he needs to turn around and go back in it in order to claim it again. Boy, that's crazy. First of all, number one, that's just nasty. Wow. A woman. No, it's nasty that you took another man's wife. What's nasty is you took another man's wife, started kissing her up, and don't even know where her mouth been. That's nasty. What's nasty is you putting meat inside of that woman when that's another man's wife. That's nasty. See, before you talk about what's nasty, sir, you got to consider your adultery first. It's the field. The man is the seed. It's even against the law to keep sowing many different diversities of seed in, in, one, in one section of the field. We you don't sit up and have a man, multiple men, putting DNA all up in these women. No wonder they're confused today. No wonder these children got challenges today. Yeah, it's because of guys like you. That's why Nellie is the way she is right now. You know? That's why. That's why you have comments off on all videos that's related to Nellie. Go on his channel and see. All videos that are related to Nellie, the comments are off. Why? Because people were in there, you know, exposing them like, yo, that's not your wife. People been knew this, fam. People been knew this. It's just that it came back to surface again. Man! Well, anyway, I know I said enough to pee off a lot of people, but I know one thing. Come out of her, my people. Come out from among them. Be separate. Now, Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4, it gives you the divorce law. That's not a divorce law. That's what Moses gave stubborn, hard-hearted men. The Messiah confirms this in the New Testament. Let's go. That is the law. Now, Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4, it gives you the divorce law. That is the law. Now, Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4, it gives you the divorce law. That is the law. That is the law. That is the law. Now, check this out.
Um, this is this is the Messiah right here, right? Check out what the Messiah says. Matthew 19, and I have to read this. I just can't let it fade out. Matthew 19, 6 to 10. Okay, remember, uh, P. Diddy Dow talks about debate. Debate these videos. Wherefore, they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Now, it didn't say when God joined someone together that for some reason um, they got to make this agreement the way Dow says. No. You're put together because the Most High put you together. If you're a man and you meet a woman and you and her are vibing, next minute y'all get together, now she's your wife, you have a family and kids, the Most High put y'all together. You know what I mean? Especially if it's long-lasting. I'm, talk I'm not talking about these crazy short-term relationships. I'm talking about you folks that have been with, e get with each other for centuries. You folks, y'all been put together by the Most High. All right? So now, wherefore there are no more twain but one flesh, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? So what does put in away mean? Put in away mean to divorce. They're asking the Messiah, Why did Moses command us to give a writing of divorcement? Now, if P. Diddy Dowell follow the Messiah, the one they call Jesus, right? If he really follow him, he would be following what the scripture says. Right or wrong? Put a one in the chat if you believe that's true. If P. Diddy Dow is following the Messiah, shouldn't he be listening to what he say? Put a one in the chat if you agree. I just want to know because maybe, maybe he's not supposed to. I'm, I'm assuming that if you follow the Messiah, you should be following what he teach. I just want to know. And again, we're streaming on two channels, the Ringo TV Raw channel and the Ringo TV Reactions channel. So make sure you're watching both or pick your, your choice. Just know that on the Ringo TV Reactions channel, that's where you can see all the visuals. So if you're kind of scraping through your phone and you landed here and you're wondering who's this guy in the hoodie, um, understand that we're streaming on two channels and there's a lot of visuals that you're missing, which is on the other channel. This is open for both sides so that people can see what I'm doing. All right. Okay. So let's go back to the scriptures. It says, he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So who, who made that law? Moses. <laughs> Moses, he says, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. See, these men were always wicked. They were wicked. Moses. So the Messiah is basically checking Moses. He checking everybody. And remember, Moses and them wasn't allowed to go into the land. Most high was pissed. See, a lot of y'all don't, y'all, y'all gotta listen, y'all gotta read now. A lot of people didn't make it into the land. They didn't. Because they they did wickedness. They did evil. That's what a lot of y'all not getting. You gotta read the Bible. Don't just read a scripture and stop. Moses did some dirt too. Most high was not pleased. And this is one of them. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Now watch what he say now. And I say unto you. So if P. Diddy Dow followed a Messiah, who, whose words are more important? What's written of in Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4? Or what's written of in Matthew 19, 6 through 10. He says, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, adultery, that's what fornication is, adultery, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. Uh-oh. Are y'all getting that? 
Notice what the Messiah just said. If you got a faithful wife and you just want to put her away through a divorce because you just tired of her, she never committed adultery. And you figure, oh, I'm going to put her away through a divorce by following a Mosaic law. Then this is what I'm going to pass for judgment on you. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for adultery, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. So what he just did is he put the penalty on the men. In other words, you put away a good wife and went and marry another. No, you committed adultery now. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away doeth commit adultery. So not only are men now guilty <laughs> of committing adultery by putting away a good woman, even the woman you put away, if another man get with her, he's in adultery too. And remember, Eric Gonzalez never put away his wife. Pastor P. Diddy Dow forced her to divorce him. So now think about what the Messiah says. He says, And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another committed of adultery. So the man is automatically guilty for putting away his wife. But not only that, and whosoever marrieth her, which is put away, committeth adultery, which means dowels automatically in adultery. Because if Eric's wife divorced him and left, she, def she, she put herself away. So if Dow go marry her, <laughs> he's now in adultery. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> and yet they asking for a debate. Debate this. Debate the truth. And watch this. Watch the disciples, guys. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. <laughs> the disciples are looking at the Messiah like, look, if you're that strict when it comes to these issues, it is good not to marry. <laughs> I'm not marrying nobody. That's what the disciples are saying. It's not good to marry if y'all going to be like this. It's crazy. That's basically the same, the same scriptures in the Amplified Bible. I'm not going to go through all of it. Now, in Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4, it gives you the divorce law. Nope, that's not the divorce law. Why is he stuck over there when he should be reading what the Messiah say? This is how you know he's a false prophet. This is how you know, guys. If he's believing in the Messiah, why he's ignoring what the Messiah said and he's holding on to what Moses said? Come on now. He's not following the Bible, y'all. He don't care about what the Messiah say because he don't follow him. He believe he's Jesus. That is the law. That is the law. That is the law. Now again, check it out. He's following what Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4 says. The reason why he's holding on this is because all of the guys that are coming to his church are all connected to women that are in the world that they're trying to get away from. You have to understand this. From those football players that he have working with him, all of those guys, he promoted them to pastors and bishops and elders. <laughs> why? Because of their status in the NFL. Real respective persons. Like he, he's just a hypocrite, fam. It goes on and it says... When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her. See, he found uncleanness. It doesn't mean she committed adultery. He found uncleanness. She didn't do anything. Men were putting away women just to put them away. And then these women ended up being prostitutes. This is what the Messiah was pissed off with. You know what I mean? I'm not going to continue reading anymore. You can read it on your own time. We already did that earlier in the stream. So let that play. It says, when a man have taken a wife and married her and come 
to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he had found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her a bill of divorce and give it to her hand. Hold on, I got a troll on my other channel. And uh, don't delete this person here at Tracy. Let that person rock. He says, uh, let me see. He did not put her away, shaking my head, prove it. Are you talking to me, sir? What do you mean he did not put, put what are you talking about? He did not put her away. He did not put her away, shaking my head. Prove it. Gonzalez never put away his wife. Dowell pushed her to divorce him. And there is no scripture. You understand? There's no scripture that says a woman can put away a man. A woman is bound to her husband as long as he live. Do you understand that? A woman cannot say, okay, I'm divorcing you because you cheated on me. There's no such thing as cheating on you. There's no such thing about that. A man can't cheat on you. That's a lie. You, you're getting that from the Western world mindset of monogamy. Based on the Bible, if we're going to be biblical, a man cannot cheat on you. You're a woman. How could he cheat on you? You don't own him. Remember, he's marrying you. You don't marry a man. See, this is where women get it all twisted. None of you ladies marry a man. You, you, don't, you don't go to a man and grab him and say, I'm marrying you. <laughs> you don't got that power. You control access to SEX. You don't control access to marriage. No woman in the Bible put a man away via divorce. None. So for Dow to cause Jamie's wife to divorce Jamie, and then notice this, ladies and gentlemen, after Pastor P. Diddy Dow caused Jamie's wife to divorce him, guess where Jamie's wife went? She became the wife of Elder Becca at Straightway. That's right. Confirmed by Eric Gonzalez and confirmed by Jamie. Because even... Jamie's ex-wife told him all of this we brought out from the tapes. Pastor P. Diddy Dow pushed Jamie's wife to divorce him because he asked a question to Nelly during that time. P. Diddy Dow had a subject on polygyny. Jamie was new in the faith. He didn't know nothing. So he was just asking the women what they think. And he asked four ladies what they think about polygyny. And one of the ladies was Nellie, the one P. Diddy Dowell had his eye on the whole time. And because Jamie asked the question, P. Diddy Dowell thought Jamie was trying to get his woman that he wanted. So what they did is they put a battery in Jamie's wife and caused turbulence in their relationship, making her file for divorce by making her think that Jamie was trying to get with her friend, Nellie. And right after she got the divorce, Elder Becca ended up fucking her. You tell me. Tell me I'm wrong. Bring out the tapes. Respond. Elder Becca, come on, come on camera. Talk about it. I call you out. Talk about it. If I'm wrong, prove it. Prove it. If I'm wrong, come on camera. Talk about it. Confirmed by Jamie, confirmed by Mr. Gonzalez. Come on. Prove it. P. Diddy Dowell caused Jamie's wife to divorce him in order for another man to take his wife. So it's adultery all over straightway. Everybody's in adultery. But I'm the bad guy because I'm pushing forth the truth. Make it make sense, y'all. They know who I am. And they know I'm standing on business. And let him write her a bill of divorce and give it to her hand. And let him write her a bill of divorce and give it to her hand and send her out of the house. Let me see some of you people out there that's got a second of marriage license to try all this. And try again, Jamie never put away his wife and Eric never put away his wife. They all got the documents from these women in the mail. They got phone calls and everything. In the case of Jamie, see, this is why... Everybody need to be watching the videos. If you're on the Ringo TV Raw, uh, you're just getting the audio. 
you got to be on the Ringo TV Reactions channel because that's where all the footage is with all the documents, all of the, the, the video footage and everything. When you watch these videos, Jamie basically was done dirty. His wife asked for the divorce. Jamie said, I'm not signing no papers. So what did they do? This is what they did. There's also a law that states something along the lines of a person is missing, right? You can still get a divorce. So what they did is they most likely went around the system, put something in the papers. And if Jamie don't respond, then legally she can uh, dissolve the marriage without him having to sign nothing. And that's what they did in order for her to get with one of the guys in the church. Ain't that something? The same thing was done in Eric Gonzalez's case. He was called. The woman made it clear that, hey, we need you to sign these papers, do what needs to be done. So in all the cases, the women file for divorce. That goes against the Bible. How does a ministry allow women to divorce men? Where in the Bible does it say you could do that? So none of these men in this case file for divorce or put any woman away. None. Pastor P. Diddy Dow caused these women to get divorces because they all wanted their wives and their daughters. Let's go back to the tapes. I to say to you divorce and dissolve your so-called marriage license that you got from the state that you didn't marry under Yah. And let's see how far that goes. You see, if a man has one wife on paper, a state marriage license, and if he has covenant agreement with otherwise, he has broken no laws in his land. He has not only has he not broken any laws in his land, he's not even broken the law of God he is because he has not sinned. Wow. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman is not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. Wow. And I submit to you that the only way that a man can commit adultery is if the status of a woman is married. If the woman is not married, he has not committed no adultery at all. And when she is departed out of his house, she may, she may go and be another man's wife. And when she is departed out of his house, she may, she may go and be another man's wife. Notice what he's pushing. He's saying that so so full of passion, she may go and be another man's wife. But see, here's the problem with that, dirty doll. Eric never put away his wife. Because you're saying, oh, she may go and be another man's wife. You mean for you. He's really talking about himself. She may go and be another man's wife. He's talking about Nelly coming to him. But the problem here is, Eric never put her away. So if you're going to go by those verses, you first of all have to have a man that put away his wife. Eric never did that. Nah, <laughs> you messed up big time, pal. And also to Brother Rufus, you got some answering to do, fam. You got some answering to do. I tell you, nobody's safe. We need answers about this. You had a video that was posted six years ago. Six years ago, you posted this video. We need answers. Title, True Honor, Respect, and Integrity. Stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. We need, we need some words on this. Not no text. We need video. We need to hear you explain yourself on the fact that you said for people to stay away from men like Eric Gonzalez. We need to know why you would... Uh, make that public if you were in straightway Georgia if Eric was at uh, uh, Tennessee or dealing with any sort of drama how is it that you being in straightway Georgia basically um, is telling the public stay away those are strong words stay away from people like Denza McGee and so if you say and that mean everything that you had to say in that video towards Denza McGee, it was also directed to Eric Gonzalez. You see that? Because I didn't, I didn't hear you mention his name in the video. I, I studied the video, and it seems like you were focused mainly on Denza McGee. And based on how I understand things, anytime a man is talking about one particular man, you're, you're addressing both of them. It's just that you're not mentioning the other guy. 
You get it? You didn't mention his name, but for you to say stay away from Denza McGee, I could understand if you have a beef with Denza McGee, but to add in Eric Gonzalez, it, it don't sound right. It don't sound right because remember you said, hey, you know, I, I don't, I stay out of other people's business. I don't know. So I'm trying to figure this out because remember, Dowell said the same thing about you. Dowell was telling everybody at Straightway to not listen to you, don't talk to you, don't watch your videos, and to unsubscribe. So it's like, come, come on now. What, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, what's happening here? D this ain't, I want to know why you said this about uh, Eric Gonzalez six years ago. I want to know. The people need to know this. And like I says, I'm no respecter of persons. I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite. I'm not going to smile on everybody's face. I'm not going to be here exposing past the dial or whatever the case is. And I'm not calling you out. I'm calling everybody out. Nobody's safe. I want answers because I am not trying to turn this into another thing where it's like, okay, uh, you know, we everybody's cool. And no, 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 no. I want to know what's going on because, again, when Rallo did the show, you would ask questions about Dow, like, hey, is he in adultery? Is he this? And you were fumbling around. You was like, well, we don't have all the answers and all this other stuff. No, you're supposed to be able to say, hey, yeah, the man is, a, yeah, he's in adultery. No doubt about it. Yeah, of course. Based on the Bible, he is. Come on now. So I want to know. I want to know what's going on because his name is in the title. And that man, you know, Mr. Gonzalez was on the same broadcast as uh, all you brothers, y'all were all on the panel at the same time. And I wish I would have had this info while I was streaming when y'all was streaming that night so I could talk about this because this didn't age well. So I don't know anything about a Denza McGee. I, I heard the name in some of Mr. Gonzalez's videos, but I don't know who he is. I don't know what he's about. So I really can't say what that person is about, but I'm looking at, the fact that, um, you know, Eric's name is in this title. And that was six years ago. And you're telling people to stay away. So, you know, for us to stay away from this man, that means you looking at the man as a bad, bad man. So what made you um, say this, right? And what was so, what was so bad about Eric that you felt people need to stay away because in that video you were praising Dowell you was like you serve him he's the man of God and you know all this other stuff so did he put you up to do that and could that be the reason why you don't want to really judge concerning if he's in adultery right now because it's like well I don't want to I don't want to say nothing about it because you know what I mean? I don't want nobody to bring up no old tapes with me. Because like I said, when it comes to content, when it comes to YouTube, all I'm doing is asking the questions. <laughs> because I want to know. I mean, if my name is in a title like this, I'm going to want to know what was good. Like, bro, like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, for real, for real. Like, why my name? You know, I, I don't understand, fam. Like, this is crazy. You know, like, why my name is there? You know, Denza McGee, like I said, I heard Gonzalez mention the Denza McGee name in some of his videos. I don't have no video of that person. I don't know who that is for the record. I don't know who is a Denza McGee. All I know is that uh, Rufus said that he was disrespecting Dow and saying that he's a prophet and all this other stuff. I didn't hear no videos of the Denza guy saying any of this, nor do I care about any of that stuff right now. What I want to know as well as the people is what made you say people should avoid Mr. Gonzalez. In other words, don't even be around him. He's dangerous. What made you say that? Not in text. I don't want no text messages. I don't want no chat messages. I want video. I want to see, I want to hear your, your, your words so I can read you and your body language to see, you know, what's going on with your spirit. Because with text messages, you know, you could post text. Text don't really mean nothing. 
I need to see video of you answering. Okay, the reason why I said um, that that time is because, you know, that's what the people want to hear. Because if not, the, the people are going to have problems with you because they're going to be wondering, is there is there information about the Eric Gonzalez case that you know about, right? But you're not saying it because you don't want to pass judgment on Dowell because of whatever info he may allegedly have on you. You know what I'm saying? In other words, I'm going to stay out of this because they probably got dirt that you don't want out there. So I'm going to just keep quiet like you, you. In other words, let me let me let me explain how politics work, guys. I can have a falling out with a brother, right? I can have a falling out with a brother and know some of his dirt. But because I did some dirt, right? I'm not going to put his dirt out there. If that makes sense, because he got the same dirt on me or something worse. Now, we might not be agreeing and we might be talking about a particular issue. But we know better than to put the dirt out there. If that makes sense. In other words, you can have a disagreement of falling out with somebody. And still have a level of respect. Not to go the extra route. Because it could get a little messy. You know what I'm saying? Like you could have been dealing with a sister. She know who your wife is. You and her broke up. She know about all the dirt you were doing with her on the low. Right? But she ain't come out and tell your wife. Nor did you go out and tell her man. You see what I'm saying? One of them kind of situations. Let me see. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Let me see. Will says Rufus ain't innocent. Let me see. Rufus ain't innocent. He was down until they turned on him. Dow been evil and Rufus reaping what he sold. See, this is the thing. That's what I'm trying to bring up. I'm trying to bring everything to the light. The Bible says, test the spirits. Bible says, test the spirits. That's all it says. Test, try the spirits, whether they are of, of the most high or not. I just want answers. I want to know what's going on. You know, I was kind of watching a stream where Mr. Gonzalez was on some other platform and they try to bait him into, you know, pointless foolishness. You know what I mean? I'm going to talk about that a little later on in the stream. You know what I mean? Because with me, nobody's getting me to do that type of stuff. If I come on your platform to talk about something, I'm talking about the subject. Anything else, I'm leaving. I'm out. Peace. And I'm gone. Because a lot of times with Christians, they try to get you into pointless arguments about stuff that you're never going to change on and they're never going to change on. And it's just a waste of time. You know, what I mean, I even seen Rufus on that same channel that, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Gonzalez was on. And he was smart enough not to go in on the debated nonsense. He even I'm, I have the clip. I'm going to play it in this video later on. But um, like I said, I need to see. We need to see a video from Rufus on explaining um, his position on what he think of Mr. Gonzalez six years ago on why this video title is the way it is. And the reason why we have to do this is because we need to know where Rufus' mind is in understanding if, in fact, he's playing double paper or if he's truly, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, thinking for himself in terms of this truth and what's going on. Because remember, on Rallo's broadcast, they were asking him questions regarding Dowell. And he he didn't flat out say like, yeah, Dowell's in adultery. It's like he just went around it and 
even on another platform, he was like, well, uh, hey, if, if the Bible says he's in adultery, then go with that. And it's still like you're not saying the man's in adultery. It's almost like you just don't want to say it. You know what I mean? Like, well, you know, God is the one that judges all. So, you know, y'all really don't know everything that happened. So it's kind of making me think, you know, more. And you covering for Pastor Dow, even though y'all not rocking together right now. So people going to need some answers regarding this. Let me get back to the tapes. And when she is departed out of his house, she may, she may go and be another man's wife. She may go and be another man's wife. That's not what the Bible says. For the women, the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the from that from the law of her husband. First Corinthians seven thirty nine. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. So how did that woman end up with Dow? Come on now. That's very inappropriate. It's very inappropriate that a man would come down the straight way and then his wife end up being with the pastor. How convenient. The pastor should be trying to make sure that she reconciled with her husband. You know what I mean? Let's go. And when she is depart out of his house, she may she may go and be another man's wife. We already talked about this particular version of scripture here. We talked about that already, so let's go. And when she is departed out of his house, she may she may go and be another man's wife. Now that scripture is telling you to be reconciled. That's all it's saying. I ain't going to sit there reading all of it, but the point that I'm trying to make here is read the scriptures. We've been through this a thousand times. I have multiple live streams with these scriptures. I'm not going to read them in every stream. And when she is departed out of his house, she may, she may go and be another man's wife. So if a woman, be it secular or in Israel, if the contract and agreement is dissolved, secular, pagan, heathen, by the state, it's severed. You see what this guy is saying? He said it's severed. Whose authority tells him that? The law says a woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives. <laughs> he says that it is severed if you sever a secular marriage. So now, so now he's saying that all of your marriages are secular. This is crazy. This is dowel, dowelism. <laughs> Pure madness. So now if you divorce based on a marriage contract in the world, it's dissolved in the eyes of God. So in other words, God don't honor it. That's crazy. So let me get this straight. If that's the truth, right? If what he's saying is the truth, then <laughs> let's look at it this way. If having a state marriage license don't mean nothing, then if you have a wife, you're in the truth, and she commit adultery with a man that don't follow the most high, then it's not adultery. <laughs> in other words, adultery is only adultery if you're with a man of truth. But what's crazy is the Bible also talks about how if the unbeliever depart or if you're married and you're with an unbeliever, if they have no problem dwelling with you, then dwell with them. So the most high honor you being with somebody who is an unbeliever too. But Dow says your worldly marriage don't, don't matter. It's just not right. There's nothing. First of all, there is nothing worldly about it. There's nothing worldly about any of this. He's making it that way because he's trying to justify his own sin. That's all he's doing. The law of divorce is sitting right here. If a man puts a divorce, a bill of divorce in this woman's hand, if a man puts a divorce, a bill of divorce in this woman's hand, 
but man puts a divorce. Think about how wicked that must be to put a bill of divorce in a woman's hand and then kick her out of your house with nowhere to go, no food, no money, no clothing, just what's on her back. There was no protection for women. This is why if you're a woman in today's day, you ought to be thankful and happy that you have a job, a place, you're able to drive your car. You know what I mean? Not to boast, not to say, oh, I'm independent, I don't need a man. Don't do that. The Most High would jack your ass up too, just for acting a fool. What I'm saying is be thankful that the Most High allowed women in this society to be able to fend for themselves, to be able to go to school, get a degree, get themselves together. You know what I mean? That's a good thing in today's day because you need the protection in order to survive because the men were dealing so treacherously with the women. But being that you still have that liberty to have these things and to, you know, fend for yourself, be humble as a woman. Don't be conceited, arrogant. Well, I don't need a man. F these ninjas, all this other mess because the most high going to jack you up too. Don't be wicked like these men. If you get with a good brother and he y'all settle down, hey, serve that man, humble yourself as a wife, do what you got to do so that y'all can thrive together. But be thankful that you're able to rock out in today's day, right? Let's get back to the tape. A bill of divorce in this woman's hand. Just one question. Uh, from your experiment with Pastor Dow in Strayway, where do you feel, if, if the, first of all, do you believe the allegations is true that he took another man's wife? Um, but whether you think he got the scriptural understanding, because I know, I think a day ago, I saw a video of him challenging. I'll be right back, folks. I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right back. I'm going to let it play, and then I'm going to come right back. Um, Ringo TV on a debate in regards to this whole allegation of him committing adultery. He feels he did not commit adultery, and he feels that he would like to have a debate with Ringo about this subject. From your experience with him, where do you see where he will grab the, you know, he would scrapulate that understanding? Did you ever had a conversation with him or there was a lesson you witnessed that would give you some insight what, what why he believes he didn't? He actually broke it down in this video saying how he don't believe that uh, secular marriage licenses are from Yah. So if you got a marriage license in the world, he don't believe that's being you put together by Yah. Then he also believes things that are managed magnitude with the, when it comes to the spirit of the law, how men will abuse women and put them away, but not make it concrete. Meaning, okay, like I'll give an example. Uh, I'm pissed at you. You go over here and be with your mom or whatever. I haven't given you a bill of divorce, but I ain't taking care of you. I'm not doing anything, but you just sitting over there. You still supposed to be mine. He considers that to be abuse. You know what I mean? Like no definition. So from his mindset, he believes if you're putting them away, you need to. And that's why y'all hates the putting of the away because putting away is not defining what she should have. She should either be your wife. Because if you're really putting them away, you should be sending them away to get rehabilitated so they can get right and then come back to your home. Not just to be put out here and say, well, you mind, but since you don't want to listen, uh, I ain't going to give you a bill of divorce, which, you know, a lot of crazy men will do today. A woman will be getting abused, she'll be getting taken advantage of, whatever the case may be. And the man will say, well, you know what, I'm just going to have you sit over there then. And they could be there for years with nothing concrete. So that's the mindset that he has when it comes to this type of thing. Now, let me tell y'all what my mindset is, okay? This is how I deal with stuff like this. I don't see the father micromanage any of our lives. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. If we want to go out and sin, guess what he's going to do? Let us go out and sin. If we want to go out here and be holy and righteous, he's going to allow us to do that. One thing I never have done in any level of leadership I've ever been in is micromanage people. I personally believe it's crossing the line when I step into your bedroom and tell you how to do what you're doing as a man. Now, if you invite me in, meaning past Rufus, elder Rufus, brother Rufus, whatever title I've ever been in, I need your counsel. I need your advice, man. I need to know how to handle this. I'm more than willing to come in and be your brother, stand with you, guide you, counsel you, help you through the book, whatever. 
But if I'm not invited in, I don't just kick the door in. That's how I've always been. A lot of this stuff going on with, with, with uh, Pastor Dow was taking place in Tennessee. And I was getting very, very, very limited okay. information. Okay, I'm back. Let me rewind this thing back so I can examine the tapes. All right, where we at? Where we at? I think we up to here. Let's start here. So, if a woman, be it secular or in Israel, if the contract and agreement is dissolved, secular, pagan, heathen, by the state, it's severed. The law of divorce is sitting right here. If a man puts a divorce, a bill of divorce in this woman's hand, if a man puts a divorce, a bill of divorce in this woman's hand, if a man puts a divorce, Somebody on the Ringo TV Raw channel, let me respond to this. Somebody says, my man, the most high don't have nothing to do with women working today. People who run the world got it this way because confusion between the two while bringing down the man at the same time. No, the most high have everything to do with women working today because you men are wicked. Name all the women that you taking care of right now. Name all the women you've taken care of. Men in today's day deal with women treacherously. All the brother want to do is fuck a woman and leave her. That's all they want to do. 90% of you guys, when you see a sister, you just want to smash. You ain't interested in, oh, I want to make her my wife. I'm really trying to love this woman and take care of this woman. No, you're not. You just want to hit it. The first thing you do when you see a sister is you want to fuck. <laughs> you ain't thinking about setting up a life, having kids, uh, providing, and you don't give a fuck about none of that. You just want to hit it. Keep it a beam. Talking about the government, this, the government, that. No, 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 no. The most high protecting his, his daughters at the same time. Yeah, they wicked, but you brothers are wicked as hell too. See, that's the problem. We try to make it seem like just the women are wicked when the men are wicked. See, if the, if the women are wicked, it's because we're more wicked. Because if all of us brothers were on point and we all follow the most high, then why are all these women out here having babies out of wedlock? How these women are able to have a lonely fans account showing off their body and men are throwing money at them? How is it that the strip clubs are full of dudes? How is it that the corn industry is prospering? Why is it that Instagram got all these women out here being models and they got a thousand followers and a bunch of likes and clicks? It's because you guys are suckers. Because you guys out here are merchandising the women. Because you guys out here are simping for a vagina. The only reason why these, these women are even able to make a dollar is because you're out there giving them your money. So the wickedness that's going on with these women is because of you. Not the world. If all the men were on point, the women have to fall in line. So we the ones that are out of pocket. Who brought sin in the world? The woman. But guess who got judged? The man. You know why? It was the man's job to defend, provide, protect, keep out intruders of the garden. But what happened with Eve? Adam was busy playing PlayStation while Eve was giving the serpent some head. That's right. Eve was out there getting influenced by the devil. Just like on social media, women get influenced by all the wrong people, making all the wrong choices. That's how Eve took of the forbidden fruit. Where was her husband, the protector? Where he was the whole time? Where was he? See, we look at the problems today and we blame the government. No, blame yourself as a man. Because the reason why we are where we are is because we're not following the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. So if men, in general, repented of their sins and do what they got to do, everything is going to be on point. You understand? Check it out. Let me bring it out from the scriptures. Y'all think this is a game? We ain't going to play these little games that you guys play blaming women. Can't blame women for nothing. I don't care how fucking rebellious women are today. It's your fault as a man. 
It's your fault. You just don't want to accept it. Watch this. Because you're doing the same thing that Adam did. Adam blamed the woman. The woman that thou gavest me, she causes me. No, you are. You brothers are doing the same thing. Same thing. Same thing Adam did. Hiding himself in the garden. Don't want to take responsibility. Same thing. You don't want to take responsibility for the fact that you did this. We as men are the cause of all the problems we're facing right now. All of the problems we're facing in our community with our women, children is our fault. The government can have all of the plots and plans they want. If all of us brothers repented of our sins, got right with the most high, decided not to be whoremonger males, decided to take wives, decided to provide for our children, decided to get off our ass and go to work, decided to do this and that, the women falling right in line because they ain't going to have no guys. They ain't going to be able to do anything without us. So it's like if all the brothers are on point, women got to fall in line. You know? Here we got another uh, Adam in the comments says, Ringo, you overstepped with the word. This is what I mean. This is what happens when men refuse to take that responsibility. Think about this. How many women are you outside trying to smash at Oz? The Wizard of Oz. How many women you outside trying to smash? How many women you taking care of? How many women have you fucked and left? How many babies you got? How many times you allowed a sister to give you head that wasn't your wife? Like, let's talk about it. See, you talking all this talk about this overstepping all this other nonsense, but who you providing for? Where's your tribe? What did you build as a man? See, all talk. Just like Adam. No responsibility for the cause of the problem. Let's just blame the woman. We could point our hand at the woman all day. What the fuck we doing as men? Nothing but complaining. It's the woman. It's the woman. You sound like clowns, fam. A woman not going to respect the man that's sitting there just blaming women all day. When are we going to take responsibility as men? <laughs> Nobody don't want to hear that, right? Let's see what the Bible say. Let's see what the Bible say, because I don't sugarcoat nothing. I'm tired of all the nonsense with men complaining all day and don't want to take responsibility for what's going on. Let's find out what the books say. Second Chronicles 714, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will heal that I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. See, the, the most high can't heal our land if we are here being wicked. We are here being wicked, but we expect in the most high to heal our land. It's not going to happen. You know? But y'all want to complain about women all day. Oh, these women are this, these women are that. I already know the women wicked, but you wicked. Talk about that. Talk about how wicked men are. Remember, women can't be on OnlyFans unless men are paying. Women can't be in the corn industry unless men are paying. Women can't be stripping if men aren't paying. You understand that? Women are taking their clothes off all over social media because you guys are looking. So who's the problem? <laughs> you guys finance this madness. And this is what you don't like. You don't like dealing with the truth. This is why you got some channels that bash women all day. And if you look at their, their, uh, their viewership, it's predominantly men that have no leadership qualities, no wives, no children. They don't take care of nothing. All they do is complain about women all day. None of these men are taking initiatives to actually build anything in terms of structure so that women can follow. They just complain all day. Women don't want to hear that shit. I told you already, women are wicked because we wicked. So until we get together, the women ain't doing shit. They're like, fuck y'all. Talking all this shit about leadership. Y'all ain't, ain't, ain't even doing a damn thing. All y'all doing is sitting there complaining about these women all day. If each one of you guys started to follow the most high and start following his Lord's statutes and commandments and doing what you're supposed to do, all the women around you are going to begin to watch you. They're going to be questionable. They're going to watch you to see if you're a hypocrite or whatever the case is. But eventually they're going to be like, wow, yo, all the men around us are starting to change. What are we going to do? We have no other choice but to submit. 
They can't be rebellious because we're not on their OnlyFans. We're not on their TikToks. We're not on their Instagrams. We're not following them. We're not in the DMs. We're not doing nothing. We're not thirsty. We're not doing none of that. We're not chasing them. We're not spending money. We're not tricking on them. We're not doing anything. So what are they going to do? You see? Because this is what I hear from a lot of guys. All they're doing is complaining all day and getting in their feelings like a fucking woman rather than you sit down in the goddamn class and listen to a man when he's speaking. Notice this. I could talk about all these other issues all day, but when I start bringing up the responsibility of a man, you start crying like a woman. That's sad. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. So why the men aren't doing their duty? If you're supposed to be the head of the wife, if you're the head of the woman, then what are you doing to solve all the problems? You waiting for the woman to get in line? So let me get this straight. The most high put you to be the head of the woman, but you're waiting for the woman to get in line? <laughs> no, you got to get in line so that your woman can follow you. How many of you men have a woman that submitted to you? How many of you have a woman that respect you and honor you? If you don't, maybe you're not a fucking leader. That's why you don't got no woman. <laughs> I'm telling you facts and you don't want to hear it because you're in your feelings. You're getting emotional. We as men are the problem. Take some responsibility. I don't care how many wicked women out there wilding out. It's because we ain't with the most high. See, I could take responsibility. Listen, it doesn't matter how many women are wicked right now. They're wicked because we out here not doing what we got to do. If your children are out there being rebellious, crazy, pickpocketing, robbing stores, shoplifting, doing all that mess, who are people going to look at? Hello? Who are people going to look at? Your kids outside acting a fool. Who they looking at? The parents. They're going to be looking at the parents. Which parent? They're going to be looking at the mother. Let's bring it out. Watch this. Watch this, guys. Who they going to be looking at? The mother. Watch this. Let me bring it out from the scriptures. Because people don't like the Bible, man. They really hate it. People hate the Bible when you try to bring out this kind of truth. All I'm doing is bringing out the truth. And men start getting their feelings, start crying like women. Same thing like Adam. Like I said, you go study the Bible. Adam started crying. The woman... The woman that thou gavest me, she beguiled me. She did this. Man, stop crying. You know? Let's go. Let me put this on the screen. I take responsibility. You brothers are supposed to be on the front line leading your women, teaching, putting out truth. Y'all not doing that. Y'all just trying to find women to fuck. Y'all don't, don't even care about this truth. Y'all just like to complain. Proverbs 29, 15, the rod and reproof giveth wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth forth who to shame? His mother. Now, how is he bringing the mother to shame? If a mother is being brought to shame, why is that? If the rod and reproof giveth wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth the mother to shame, then what's the cause of that? The mother? No, you as a man. Because if you have a wife, then you supposed to be on point with how you teach and lead your wife so that she can now teach and lead the children. If you're in the military, you would understand rank. You would understand order. Even if you're in the nine to five, your supervisor 
your supervisor will get reprimanded if the staff is out of pocket from his supervisor. You know why? Because they're going to look at the reason why the staff is out of pocket, the reason why the work performance of the staff is not up to par is because they're not being properly supervised. So your supervisor's supervisor is going to get on his ass and bring him to the office and try to figure out why the staff is, is effing up. You got to talk to me about this. It's going to bring him the shame. So in order to have a good staff, you got to have a good supervisor. So if our women are out of pocket, it's because we're not supervising. You bugging. Take responsibility and be a man. If my wife is out of order, it's because I'm out of order. I'm not with the most high. Do you get it? Women are going to do what they're going to do. The, the minute a woman see you on point, she going to fall in line. Women only adapt to how a man frequency is. That's how women are, guys. They're a sponge. They soak up what we do. So if we wicked, she going to be wicked. If we rebellious, she going to be rebellious. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no way around that. You can argue up instant. You could cry a river. It's not going to work. Not with me. Let's get back to the tapes. A bill of divorce in this woman's hand. Now think about that. He want to put a bill of divorce in women's hand. That's going to only turn them into a prostitute, fam. Because think about this. When guys divorce women in today's day and they put them away, what do these women do? They go get with another man. They start sleeping around, become a prostitute, have kids out of wedlock. And what do we do as brothers? I ain't marrying her. I don't want no single mother. Why? Because we brought whoredom in the land. This was all done because a man put her away. Now, that's not to say all men put women away. You got a lot of women that are ending these relationships. But the reason is these women are ending relationships because they're not being properly taught. This is why I try to educate these women on understanding male nature, female nature, understand what the Bible says, and it is what it is. If they don't want to follow it, then it's on them. I don't got no time to waste. We got to teach them. If you're not doing that, be quiet. Just one question. Uh, from your experience with Pastor Dow in Strayway, where do you feel, if, if the, first of all, do you believe the allegations is true that he took another man's wife? Do you believe the allegations is true? Let me pack this person up real quick. Says that I sound just like these backdoor preachers out here. If I do, why are you watching me? It don't make no sense to watch me if you feel that way. Okay, let's get back to the tapes. Um, but whether you think he got the scriptural understanding, because I know, I think a day ago, I saw a video of him challenging uh, Ringo TV on a debate in regards to this whole allegation of him committing adultery. He feels he did not commit adultery, and he feels that he would like to have a debate. And remember, he wasn't, to correct uh, Gabar, he wasn't um, calling me out to have a debate about his adultery. This is what a lot of people are misunderstanding. He's calling me out to debate divorce and remarriage, which is what he wanted to do with Geno Jennings. The man is in pride. He, he's not repentant. He's already set in his ways. What he want to do is just hear himself. You get it? He wasn't saying, hey, I want to debate whether or not I'm in, in adultery because I already proved he is by the scriptures. So there's nothing to debate. He just want to hear himself talk. That's it. You get what I mean? That's all he want to do. Let's get back to the tapes. With Ringo, about this subject, from your experience with him, where do you see where he will grab the, you know, he would scrap the lead, that understanding? Did you ever had a conversation with him or there was a lesson you witnessed that would give you some insight what, what why he believes he didn't? He actually broke it down in this video saying how he don't believe that, uh, secular marriage licenses are from Yah. So if you got a marriage license in the world, he don't believe that's being you put together by Yah. Do you see that? So what Rufus is saying here is that Dowell do not believe that if you get married by a way of a marriage contract or whatever the case is, that you're put together by the Most High. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. And I'm not saying that Rufus is dumb. I'm saying if that's what Dow's belief is, where's the, where's the scripture on that? Because 
uh, Joseph, you know, got with a woman. What was that by? Was that by the most high? <laughs> was that by the most high? Come on now. Joseph got, got put together by a woman. Was that of the world? Or was that by the most high? <laughs> you see, this is where you get these, these guys because they're not, they're not studying the scriptures. He's trying to hide because he's in his sin. And that's not going to work with me, fam. Then he also believes things that are magnitude man, with the, when it comes to the spirit of the law. How Listen, when you fuck a woman and put your rod up inside her, she become your wife. Period. You understand? That's how it works. You go into a woman. That's how you marry her. You don't get no certificates. You marry her by fucking her. That's it. So all this other stuff people trying to say is BS, fam. They don't know the Bible, man. Let me see. Let me see if I can get something for you. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get this for you. Um, um, okay, watch this. Genesis. Let me see if I can get all of the verses for it. I want to prove this to you. Sex equals marriage, guys. Not a paper. Right? Now, watch this. I'm going to show you what, what went down. With Onan. Right? I'm going to show you what happened. Those of you that are in this truth that's sound in scriptures, sharp, you know, you know where I'm at. Right? Whoops, made a mistake. Okay. Okay, watch this. Sex equals marriage, not your contract that you made up or a government license or whatever the case is. All of those things are nice and dandy, but what consummates a marriage is you putting heavy meat inside of a woman. You grab a woman, you put heavy meat inside of her, you bust your nut, you know what I'm saying? You feeling good, she's feeling good, you have that connection, that bond, that's marriage right there. This is why there's nothing but whoredom in the land because everybody's sleeping around with everybody. This is what a lot of you ladies don't understand. When you let all these guys come up inside of you, you wildin'. You just you just carrying spirits. You just carrying demons. Check out what happened here. Let's look at the scriptures. Now listen to all that garbage that P. Diddy Dow is talking. Let's go to the let's go to the Bible, find out what's going on. Genesis 38, 6 to 10. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked. In the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her. Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her. In other words, go fuck her and make her your wife. Is that hard to understand? Chapter and verse. Listen. He said, Go in unto thy brother's wife and make her and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. <laughs> and Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife. So when, so when he put heavy meat inside of her, right? Look what he did. Because a lot of these pastors and preachers, they say, oh, um, they try to use these scriptures for a man masturbating, which is really dumb. These people don't know how to read. 
Like, read what it says, guys. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife, he went in, you get it? In unto his brother's wife, right? He put meat inside of her, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed unto his brother. So what did he do? He was doing the do, and when he was about to nut, pulled out. See, the pull out technique was going on even from back then. <laughs> is, this, is this a nothing new? You wicked men today were pulling out from back then. You see what I'm saying? So basically, he got to smash his brother's wife, right? And rather than giving her seed, he pulls out and spilled it on the ground. In other words, he busts his nut on the ground. What did the Most High do? He spilled it on the ground, lest that he, that he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore, he slew him also. <laughs> so, did he get a contract? Did he write up some agreement with this woman? No. He just fucked her. That's it. The man was dead lawfully. He can now take her as a wife. Do you see how that worked? He was dead lawfully. He could take her as a wife. But notice, the Most High still acknowledge the first husband. All he wanted him to do is marry her to provide seed because you're his brother. So y'all coming from the same bloodline. You get what I'm saying? So he went in her, put heavy meat in her deep. <laughs> I mean, he put meat inside of her fam. Giving, giving her long strokes. And then just bust his nut on the ground. Once the Most High saw that, said, nah, I got to take you out. And he'd kill him. That's how serious Seed is, fam. He's not playing around. I just thought you would know that. Let's get back to the tapes. Men will abuse women and put them away, but not make it concrete. Meaning, okay, like I'll give an example. Uh, I'm pissed at you. You go over here and be with your mom or whatever. I haven't given you a bill of divorce, but I ain't taking care of you. I'm not doing anything, but you're just sitting over there. You're still supposed to be mine. He considers that to be abuse. You know what I mean? He consider that. What does the Bible <laughs> say? See, this is the problem that we have to have and we have to figure it out. We got to stop with what somebody feel or what they believe. And where's the chapter and the verse? That's all I'm interested in. Chapter and verse. Not opinions. Not how I feel. Because now... What that says is the reason why Dowell took Eric's wife is because he felt. That's not the way you do things. Where's the scriptures that support this? You know, where's the scripture that support it? Like no definition. So from his mindset, he believes if you're putting them away, you need to. And that's why Yah hates the putting of the away, because putting away is not defining what she should have. She should either be your wife, because if you're really putting them away, you should be sending them away to get rehabilitated so they can get right and then come back to your home. Not just to be put out here and say, well, you mine, but since you don't want to listen, uh, I ain't going to give you a bill of divorce, which, you know, a lot of crazy men will do today. A woman will be getting abused. She'll be getting taken advantage of, whatever the case may be. And the man will say, well, you know what? I'm just going to have you sit over there then. But see, here's the problem with what you said, Rufus, and we're going to talk about that because within this conversation between you and the brothers, um, you actually brought up, well, what if a woman is being abused, right? This is what you said. And it's interesting that you said you, you gave the answer. You gave the answer. But when, when you asked that question, it's almost like you thought it was justifiable for a man or a woman to, to, to be justified in getting out of that relationship because 
she was abused. You get what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to rewind that back because I want you to hear what he said. I want you to hear it. You have to listen to it carefully. Like, I'll give an example. Uh, I'm pissed at you. You go over here and be with your mom or whatever. I haven't given you a bill of divorce, but I ain't taking care of you. I'm not doing anything, but you just sitting over there. You still supposed to be mine. He considers that to be abuse. You know what I mean? Like no definition. So from his mindset, he believes if you're putting them away, you need to. And that's why y'all hates the putting of the away because putting away is not defining what she should have. She should either be your wife because if you're really putting them away, you should be sending them away to get rehabilitated. Sending them away to get rehabilitated. So let's say, for example, a man was abusive towards his wife. He put hands on her. Is that grounds for her to just go get a divorce? Why can't we send him away to get rehabilitated? We do this with everything else. People get counseling, they get help, they get treatment. Why we can't do that? Until he get himself back together and then they can be reconciled. Why the first steps is, oh, he hit her, he abusing her. All right, marriage is over. That don't make no sense because the next man could do the same thing. When are we going to learn to work with one another and build? And we always use that excuse with men abusing women. We never talk about this where a woman is physically abusing a man. And when we say abuse, it sounds very uh, shocking. Like there's just this constant abuse all night long. If that's the case, call the police. But that doesn't mean, okay, I got grounds to divorce. No, you could separate. He could go get help or she could go get help. Yeah. See, that's the part nobody want to do. Nobody want to put in the work, but everybody want to be married. What happened to better and for worse? Richer and for poor? Just how you know you're all full of shit. Because y'all want everything to be good, but when the bad come, everybody bail out. Bunch of damn hypocrites. Rich and for poor, better and for health, and this and that, sickness and health. And when people get sick, all of a sudden you want to bail out bunch of damn hypocrites let's go so they can get right and then come back to your home they so they could get right and come back to your home same thing could happen to a man or a woman if a woman is abusive towards her husband she can get the help get rehabilitated then come back same thing with a man why we can't do that why we can't do it not just to be put out here and say well you mine but since you don't want to listen uh i ain't gonna give you a bill of divorce which you know a lot of crazy men will do today woman will be getting abused, she'll be getting taken advantage of, whatever the case may be. And the man will say, well, you know what? I'm just going to have you sit over there then. And they could be there for years with nothing concrete. But in the case of Kabir, you remember the situation with Kabir and his wife? <clears throat> Wasn't it the fact that he, she didn't want to listen to him concerning his uh, newfound religion, new, newfound faith? She didn't want to adhere to what he had to say? So that whole situation with his divorce... Because I think y'all saying that she divorced him or whatever the case is. Um, it's because in his mind, she don't want to obey me. So in his mind, he feels she's justified. He's justified in not being with her no more. I've even seen videos with these guys saying these things. You know, I even heard Rufus say that in a video. That if a woman is not listening to you, she's not obeying you, then put her away. And I got the tape. Don't say it, you ain't say it. I got the tape. It's downloaded. Ready in the trigger. Ready. It's it's literally loaded. Ready. So don't say you didn't say it because I got the tape. I got tapes on everything. I told you already I got nothing but receipts. I have videos of these men saying that if a woman is not obeying, you put her away. What? The Messiah said except to be for fornication. So if you put your wife away because she's not obeying, maybe it's just that you're not leading. <laughs> Maybe it's just that you're not, you're just not leading her. You know, I find it difficult that you guys can get with women and then later on you complaining about they're not obeying you and y'all ready to throw them away. But y'all ain't have no problem fucking them. Y'all ain't have no problem having babies with them. And then y'all complaining. No, this has all to do with your leadership as men. It's all on you. <laughs> well, she's just rebellious. Maybe you're just not teaching her nothing. How much time do you invest in teaching your woman? None. You don't invest no time. So she don't respect you. It's just that simple. Back to the tapes. So that's the mindset that he has. 
when it comes to this type of thing. Now, let me tell y'all what my mindset is, okay? This is how I deal with stuff like this. Okay. I don't see the father micromanage any of our lives. He says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And we want to go out and sin, guess what he's going to do? Let us go out and sin. And we want to go out here and be holy and righteous, he's going to allow us to do that. One thing I never have done in any level of leadership I've ever been in is micromanage people. I personally believe it's crossing the line when I step into your bedroom and tell you how to do what you're doing as a man. At this point in the video, when I was looking at this, I knew it was getting down to the point where it's almost as if though what Rufus is doing is saying, look, I don't have no opinions or anything regarding the situation with Dow and his adultery. So, hey, I'm out of line if I'm trying to judge or whatever the case is. That was his way of kind of setting the stage for uh, I'm not really trying to be involved in this. Like that's between them guys. I don't really know everything. Y'all don't know everything. So I'm not going to be at a judge. The most high is the one that judge. It's one of them type of things. Listen to the tapes. Now, if you invite me in, meaning past Rufus, elder Rufus, brother Rufus, whatever title I've ever been in, I need your counsel. I need your advice, man. I need to know how to handle this. I'm more than willing to come in and be your brother, stand with you, guide you, counsel you, help you through the book, whatever. I'm not getting in nothing. That's none of my business in terms of me trying to guide and counsel. I'm going to tell you, go read the Bible. That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, go read the Bible. Because who's counseling the wife? I'm not supposed to be counseling your wife. Remember, don't sit with another man's wife. You understand what I'm saying? I don't need to go to another brother tell him, yo, I'm having problems with my wife and X, Y, and Z. I need some counsel. What the fuck I look like going to any man telling him that? Not doing that. Who do my wife talk to? You? No. She's not supposed to be talking to you. What you're supposed to do, if it's really about counsel, bruh, you need to go read the Bible, man. You need to go pray. Go read the Bible regarding these issues. You a man, right? Okay, find out what the Bible have to say regarding your family and lead, bro. Because if I'm giving you advice on what you need to do concerning your situation, your situation is unique to you. The only one who could fix that is you. You make another man tell you it's going to cause a problem to end your relationship. Just like a lot of women divorce their husbands because a pastor got in their ear. How do you think Nelly got a divorce from Eric? Because P. Diddy Dow got in her ear how do you think jamie's ex-wife divorced him it's because p diddy Dow got it in her ear that's why these women let these men get in their ear how come these women are not in prayer how come these women don't go seek what the bible say they seek what the pastor say because they put the pastor on the top they don't really follow the most high. Let's get back to the tapes. But if I'm not invited in, I don't just kick the door in. That's how I've always been. A lot of this stuff going on with, with, with uh, Pastor Dow was taking place in Tennessee. And I was getting very, very, very limited information on what was going on. Hold on now. Hold on now. No, uh, uh, uh. We got to hold you accountable, sir. Because like I said, we need some explanations. Because you said you got limited information. Okay, cool. I'm holding you accountable. Everybody's going to be exposed. Everybody's going to be brought to the light. I'm testing all spirits. I ain't playing around with nobody. You posted this video six years ago. It didn't age well. Title of the video, True Honor, Respect, and Integrity. Stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. We need to know what's going on. We need to know what's going on. I'm just saying. I'm just here to ask, ask questions, test the spirits, find out what's going on. You just said you got limited information on what's going on. But this video was made six years ago, and you said stay away. That's a strong word to say stay away. You said stay away. Stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. Now, why would you say that if you had limited information about this man 
or his situation. If you're in straightway Georgia, how could you make a video with a title that says to stay away from that man? Those are strong words because remember, P. Diddy Dow did that to you. He told everybody at Straightway, don't talk to you, to unsubscribe and stay away from you. That's what he said. So I'm, what I'm trying to say, sir, is this. What was in your ear and what was in your heart that made you say, stay away from Eric Gonzalez? If that man was going through the issues he was going through, who was feeding you information to make you agree to say, stay away from him? I'm just asking the questions. That's all I'm doing. All I'm doing is asking the questions. What's going on with this video title? Because in the video, you never mention Eric Gonzalez's name. You didn't mention his name. But you were talking mainly about Denza McGee. So based on the tapes, it's like you were throwing, you, you had to be talking about Gonzalez at the same exact time. Because, look, ha have you ever heard somebody talk about somebody, but they were talking about you at the same time, but they never mentioned your name, but they're talking about a person, and then they're saying stuff like, yeah, you know, I'm talking about Derek, you know what I mean? Anybody that's cool with Derek, you know what I'm saying? Y'all be bugging because y'all out here doing it. They didn't say your name. They keep talking about Derek, but they're talking about you too. That is how this video was. He was talking about Denza McGee, Denza McGee. So I'm saying to myself, if you have nothing to do with the business, if you don't know nothing about this situation, why is this man's name on the title? I feel some type of way because I'm like, look, you know, we're, we're, ta we're all talking about these things. Yes, it happened years ago, but it, it came back to surface today. The people want to know what's going on. What is going on that made you say, stay away from this man? Do you feel that way today? These are questions that I'm asking. Do you feel that people need to stay away from people like Eric Gonzalez today? Is he a dangerous man? What is, a, what is it about him that we need to stay away? Listen, I'm like a voice crying in the wilderness for the people. What did he do that he needed? We need to stay away. Did Dowell tell you to say that? Did, did, did Dowell tell you, hey, go on your channel and tell the world, stay away. Tell them to stay away from this guy. I need everybody to be on cold. Stay away from Eric Gonzalez. All of y'all out there, stay away from him. Okay, what was his crime? What did Mr. Gonzalez do to, for you to say that? And do you feel that way today? Because I don't want to be a hypocrite. <clears throat> I don't want to be a hypocrite, you know, smiling in people's face and people on panels talking like we, we all brothers and we have this ill will or some sort of, you know, whatever, we got we to gotta hash all of that out. So we, 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 you need to make a video and explain, okay, uh, why you felt whatever you felt six years ago and do you feel that way today so the airwaves is cleared. Because if, 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 if you don't respond to this, then I don't trust you. I'm just telling you straight like a man. Let me make sure you see me. I, I, I don't trust you. If you can't answer this like a man and say, look, the reason why I felt this way, the reason why I made this video about Denza such and such and such is because X, Y, and Z. The reason why I put Gonzalez's name in there is because, well, I felt, you know what I mean, he was coming against my pastor or whatever, 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 you know what I mean? And to me, during that time, I, 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 I knew what his situation was, but I didn't care. And, you know, you got to explain this one. You got to explain this because even though that was six years ago, you said to stay away from the man. You said stay away from Eric. Okay, I want to know what did he do for me to stay away? Because, you know, Eric is in the chat. So I want to know, do people need to stay away from him? What was his crime? What was the man's crime? I want to know. Because based on what I'm seeing, Dow did him dirty. Dow took his wife, took his daughter. So I want to know what you know about this situation. Because now it brings him the question, what do you know? about the situation what do you know all of this got to be hashed out fam all of this listen i'm not like everybody else i'm gonna talk straight i'm not sugarcoating nothing i don't work like that i would be a hypocrite to be here talking all of this and i'm not cross-examining you i'm asking everybody question because remember you came out of straight way remember uh p diddy dow kicked you out 
So people are going to have questions for you. People are going to ask very hard questions to answer. They're going to ask tough questions. You got to be prepared for the smoke. So far, you've been on panels. You've been in comment sections. All of that is good. But this video here didn't age well. People are going to want to know. They're going to ask the question. You're right, Ringo. You're on to something. This is, yeah, wait, man, you know what? This, this makes a little sense. It's like, come on now. Come on. And I don't want to see text message. I don't want to see text messages. Need to see video. Need to see video. Words. Because, look. A lot of times when we make these videos, people be getting upset, right? And they don't understand. I'm testing the spirits. I'm doing what the Most High tell me to do. I'm testing your spirit to see where you at. And in order to see where you at, I need to see the videos so we can look at you, watch the body language, see how you conduct yourself, see how you move, the, the words you use, to see if, you know what I'm saying, what kind of spirit you, you coming in. Because we want to know, do you feel some type of way about Eric today? 2024, do you feel some type of way about this man today? You know what I mean? That's what I want to know. Like, you know, like, are you cool? What was the point of you putting his name in that title? How did you feel about him? Did you feel he was a credible brother? Uh, do you feel he was doing past the dirty? Um, the people going to want to know because now it makes you look it makes you look some type of way. And you got to be prepared for that. If I came out a straight way, people going to have all sorts of questions for me. They're going to think that I'm I'm down with the madness. So I got to be prepared for all the drama. You know, I got to be willing to face the fire. You know? So, by the pure fact you were here talking about Denzel McGee, it tells me you already knew about the situation with Nelly. There's no way you could tell me you didn't know, fam. That's why you need to explain this one. That was six years ago. You know what I mean? That was six years ago. So, most likely, when the drama was brewing about a lot of issues, you felt the need to put this video out there. So, that means you had to know something that was going on with this brother and his situation. But you were defending Dowell. You know, and in that same video, you came into the comment section after somebody said, hey, this video didn't age well. And you said something about, well, in 2017, Dahl was a different guy. No, Dahl wasn't a different guy. Dahl was in adultery. Dahl was in adultery at that time. Dahl was wicked during that time. You see what I'm saying? Dahl was already in sin. He wasn't a different type of guy. He was an adulterer even back then. You get it? All we doing is bringing out the tapes. We trying to find out the truth. That's what I'm doing. You understand? So if, if you innocent, hey, the public want to know, what do you think about uh, 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 Eric Gonzalez right now, today? And explain why you had him in that video title that you felt that people need to stay away from him. That sounds like he's a dangerous man. So you got to explain that one. You got to explain. I don't know why you guys be keeping these videos up on your platform knowing that I'm going to run into these videos and say something. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm doing my investigation, and I told you already. When I'm not doing videos, when y'all don't see me come on, it's because I'm busy studying videos. I'm watching videos. I'm looking at the tapes, and I'm looking at stuff. I came across this one. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. That's Eric's name. Hold up. I thought you were cool with the brother. So I'm trying to figure this out. Like, hey, talk to us about this situation, fam. Were you defending Dow during that time? That's what we want to know. So, hey, let me get back to the tapes, hear what these guys are saying. I was. And again, that ain't my business. So I didn't really give it a lot of credence and, and thought back then because it's like, that's what they got going on. Now, Eric, if he comes in today, he can vouch for this. Him and Nelly and his family stayed at Straightway Georgia with us for a few days when they were on their way up to Straightway for uh, the first time, I think it was the time he was actually dropping them off and then going back down there to sell the house or whatever the case may be. I thought they were fine. I didn't see any issues with their family. Um, if they had some, Nelly did a very good job of hiding it. The children did a good job of hiding it. We just thought they were good saints coming up from Florida and they stayed a few days with us. Now, once everything went down, people were, of course, hey, Elder this and about, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with me. If Eric needs me, cry out like the book say. He called me. He, he called me. But I'm not going to just jump in this situation and make myself a part of it when it ain't got nothing to do with me. But if it don't have nothing to do with you, why his name is in your title in the video? 
when you're telling people to stay away from Eric Gonzalez. That's the thing that people are going to have a, a an issue with because it's like, it's almost like you know what's going on. You you have to know what's going on. Come on, man. You, you have to know what was going on. It's not up to him to just say, hey, I need help, brother. You know what's going on. You know what I mean? It goes back to the situation where Jamie had his issues. And remember, Jamie said he asked you for help or whatever the case is. And you said no. Remember those words? I'm bringing up everything. You said no. And then Jamie said he could see it in your eyes that you wanted to help him, but you was just following what you felt you were supposed to do. Was it the same way with Eric? Meaning you know what's going on, but you was like, you know what? I didn't even want to get involved. You know what I'm saying? It's too risky. I'm going to leave it alone, but I can clearly see what's going on. Eric didn't reach out to me, but I know what's going on, but I'm going to leave it like that. That's exactly what it sounds like to me. Let's get back to the tape. And that was the stance I took back then. Did I finally start hearing some different things? Yes, but it was all coming from down. I'm not going to run with one person's side of the story. But you had a video with his title in it. So you did run with one side of the story. All I'm doing is holding you accountable, fam. That's all I'm doing. You, you understand what I'm saying? Eric never called me. If, I hope he comes in tonight. He'll tell you. He never called me. He never had a conversation with me about it. So that's where I stand on that thing. Um, is the man in adultery? We'll see. We're going to find out. I know. Whoa. What do you mean? Now, my apologies for chewing. <laughs> but he just said, is the man in adultery? We'll see. What do you mean, we'll see? What do you mean, we'll see? You're supposed to know. See, this is what I mean. What do you mean, we'll see? Is he in adultery, yes or no? I was supposed to be on that panel, y'all. Y'all didn't know that? I was supposed to join. I was supposed to join and I was letting them just talk, do their thing. I was kind of just watching. And I was getting ready to join the show. And then when it came to this part, I just said, you know what? Let me sit back and listen. Because I didn't like what I was hearing. Because I am, I discern spirits. I look at what's going on. And when it got to this part, I wasn't, I wasn't liking what I was hearing. So I just let the video play and I started hearing all this stuff. I was like, wait a minute. It's, it's almost like you don't want to acknowledge that the man was in adultery you know it's like you didn't want to say it you know but you don't want to say so i kind of just let the video play and listen to more let's hear it well, the picture that was painted was that was a very bad very very bad very very bad situation that's how the picture was painted hopefully i answered your question Eric is in the building. If he wants to come on, the link is pinned to the top under the cash app. Eric, you will see the link pinned to the top. Uh, to some degree, you did. Um, and, well, thank you for your, for, for your answer. Uh, what, what, one other question, I, I, and I could leave because I know other people could come in or want to come in. Um, did they came in as a couple? Now, Eric came into the chat into the, the chat that was on Rallo's page and he wrote some things. He saw it on the screen and Rufus nodded his head like, okay, okay, okay. That sounds all nice. That sounds real good. I appreciate all of that. But at the same time, what about this? This right here is like, you know, it's almost like you know, it's not looking good because his name is in the title of stay away from people like Denzel McGee six years ago. So what happened six years ago that Eric was on a hit list of, hey, y'all need to stay away from this man, you know? And do you feel that same way today, that we should all stay away from Eric Gonzalez? Like, what's going on? Or did you just say it because back then you and Dowell was cool and you were just willing to rock with him either way? The public need to hear from you exactly what's going on. That's what they need to hear. Let's go. Is that was established? Oh, yeah. That yeah, they yeah. came in as a couple. Oh, yeah. When they came to, like I said, they were coming to visit straightway, drove up from Florida. So they stopped in Georgia and, and hung out with us for a few days, three, four days. They were definitely married. Like I said, 
I saw no issues. I saw zero problems with that family. I thought they were a great family. I, I mean, like I said, if they had issues, his wife and children did a very good job of hiding them because I saw nothing of the sort. Neither did any of the saints at Straightway, Georgia at the time. And so I believe they stayed three or four days with us. And okay. we had beautiful fellowship. Okay, so if a couple comes in together, they had kids, they straightway say, will you not marry until you get married in front of Yah? Or they accept them as a married couple? They, they accept them as a married couple. Notice, he just said they accept them as a married couple. So now what that does, it proved that Dowell is lying when he tried to tell you that, oh, if you're married by the world, God, it, God is not involved in it. I mean, no man could tell you that. That's between you and the woman you're with. Most of you right now that might not be quote unquote married, but you got a woman, you've been living with her, y'all got a relationship, some of y'all got kids, and y'all been living with each other for damn near 5, 10, 15 years, never got legally married, but you're with each other. Technically speaking, you're married. You're married. You've been with each other forever. Let's just stop playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's your wife, bro. That's your wife. Even though you don't got paperwork, that's your wife. I understand you want to live inside the crib. You don't want the rent to go up. You know what I mean? Because if you were on paper, then the rent would go up. I know all the hustles. I know all this, the slick ways of how y'all be doing things. The woman don't have the man on file because if she had him as a husband, they raise the rent. She can't get the assistance or... You're not fooling me, fam. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm in New York, fam. I know all the, all the tricks. Let's get back to the tapes. If they coming in saying they married, it don't matter if it's done by the state they come from or if it's done by their own private contract, their own mental agreement. Right. We just accept them. So that proved that Dowell manipulated the situation and took Eric's wife. Because if he accepted them and knew that they're married by the Most High, then how come now he's saying something nif different? And when did this new doctrine of his come out? When did this new doctrine of if you're married by the state, the most high don't acknowledge you? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? If you're married by the state, your marriage is not real. So then your children is not real. <laughs> so if you have children out of wedlock, then your children is not real in the eyes of God. Come on, man. We got to stop playing church, man. The problem comes is when they start having issues and how that gets handled. Right That's now, comes. so now Pastor Dow is with that brother's wife, and he's saying he did not commit adultery. Is that the premise here? He's saying yes. He said he didn't commit adultery because this man was not a good husband. Uh, he accused him of abandoning him, abusing her. Again. Okay. Now watch the question from Gabar. He cross-examined him so well at this point. This is where I was, I was like, I was jumping for joy because I was hoping that he would do the next thing. It's like he set the question up and then he just went in and I was like, yes, got him, got him. So now he got to an answer. Watch this now. Watch this. Let's listen to the tapes. It was okay. some other stuff said, but he felt like she had grounds to no longer be a part of that carnal situation. Okay, grounds, but where's the scriptures though? Where are the scriptures from Dow that support these things? If we're gonna go by the most high, we gotta go by what the scriptures say. We can't be going by feelings or what we make up or whatever we want, no, that's not how it works, let's go. That's how he felt. Right, now, how do you feel in regards of that? How do you feel in regards, you had a couple came in, they were having issues, Let's just say he was dead wrong. He had a drug issue. He had an anger issue. Whatever it may be, or she had issues too. He had issues, you know, like every other couple. Whatever that may be, what is your stance on Pastor Dow when his, the smoke cleared, everything is over, he's with that man's wife? What is your stand? I, and I, I think I asked her before. My, yeah, and I, I'm telling you what it is, but I don't think you you receiving it. I don't have a stance on it because, again, I still don't know all the information. People think they do, but they don't. Okay. I still don't have all the information, and I still don't know everything. I know what I've been told, but okay. again, I've, I haven't heard both sides of the story. 
So okay. again, I don't dip into other men's business. When they bring me in, I do. When they don't, I don't. Okay. So for my, I guess let me ask the question this way. Are y'all seeing that? Are y'all seeing that? Because that's the part that I got up to. And then I decided I'm not going on the show. Because I was supposed to go on the show. Uh, Rallo had told me about the show. I was supposed to be on that show. Once it got to that part, I said, I'm not going on the show because I got disappointed. I got disappointed because I'm saying to myself, Gabar basically gave him an opportunity to lay his cards on the table in terms of as a man of Yah, as a man who understands the scriptures, what is your take on the situation? And he danced around the points and I'm looking at the situation like, bro, <laughs> are you defending Dow? Are you in some sort of agreement? Are you hiding something? It started bringing up red flags because it's like, I've been doing this for years and nobody's fooling me, bro. Like nobody's fooling me. It just don't make no sense. It was clear as day. I don't know if the other guys on the panel kind of felt the same way, but I seen what I seen. It didn't sound right. And I was disappointed. I said, I'm not going on the show because that's Rallo's show. And I don't want to flip out on the man's show. I don't want to do that. I'll do that on my show. On my show, I can flip out. I can talk my ish, do what I want to do. So that's why when I went live in that show, I made it clear about those things. I said, we're going to deal with that video, which is what I'm dealing with right now. I told you I'm no respecter of persons. Everybody's going to get dealt with in terms of we're going to cross-examine this one. We're going to expose this. We're going to bring out the truth with that. This is what I do, and I do it very well. So by the pure fact that he's fumbling around with just giving a straight answer, it's like, do you even know what adultery is? Like, what's holding you back from saying the man is in adultery right now? Are you afraid of something? Are you currently in adultery too? Are you currently with a woman that got a divorce from a previous man that she was with through straightway? Again, a lot of times when men refuse to judge, hey, I'm just going out on a whim, it's sometimes because they have a similar situation and they know that maybe Dowell know and he can bring out the dirt and put out that receipt and it can make him look extremely bad. So, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just not going to judge on the matter. Meaning him and Dowell can have a disagreement. That's one thing. But don't go there and talk about, yeah, he's guilty. He's an adulterer. Don't do that because now Dowell will begin to bring out those receipts on you. It's one of them type of situations. In my opinion, it looks like that situation. I don't know for a fact, but based on my research and my study, it seemed as if though uh, it's one of them type of situations, fam. Let's go. From my perspective, I look at it as his wife. There's no scenario that I could find out that would say, okay, that's not adultery. I'm trying to see the scenario in my mind, the circumstance. All right, let me help. Let me help. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so maybe give me, give me like a, a, a thing I like I, I may be blind on. No, no. You could say, oh, okay, I, I can see that. Go I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Let's just say you have a situation. This is a hypothetical, right? And a couple is into some serious, deep level debauchery, right? Satanic, okay. devilish debauchery. One person comes over and says, I want to be done with that. I don't want to live that lifestyle no more. The other person says, I don't want to live that lifestyle either, but their actions are still living that lifestyle. Okay. What would you advise that the one person, and I ain't say male or female, what would you advise the one that you can clearly see don't want to be a part of that lifestyle no more? What would you advise them to do? Okay, so... Before he even give his opinion, I would say what the Bible say. If you don't want to be a part of that, right? Let's say you're a, a woman and you're with a guy who's a devil worshiper and whatnot. What I would tell you is, hey, the Bible says if you separate, 
you can't be married again. So if you want to leave, go ahead and leave. You can't get no divorce. <laughs> leave. Let him go get the help he need. Let your family know what the situation is that you're going to separate for a time. Go get your own apartment, your own place. You stay there. And in the process of you not being there and him not seeing you, it gives him a time to think about what he's doing to get himself together. And in the process, if you have kids or whatever, um, you know, y'all got to sort that situation out. And he got to get the help. In other words, in order for you to come back, he got to get the proper help to overcome whatever the issue is. But that's not grounds for divorce. Not according to the Bible. There's no adultery. <laughs> There's no adultery. Remember, you chose that man. Remember? You said for better and for worse. <laughs> That's what you said. This is the problem. Everybody want to get married, but nobody ain't honoring the vows. For better, for worse, for richer and for poor, right? Sickness and in health, right? Okay. Honor your vow. Come on now. Because what everybody want to do is separate and remarry. And that's how you end up in adultery. Let's hear what the brother got to say regarding the situation. Let's hear what he got to say. Let's go. Paul made it, you know, um, comment on that situation that if a believer is with an unbeliever, right? And if the unbeliever chooses to stay with the believer, let not the believer put the unbeliever away. But if the unbeliever wants to depart, let them depart. The brother or sister is not under bondage in that such case. Yes. Now, now, but if you read in the same verse, uh, in verse 39, it says the woman is bound to her husband as long as uh, he lives. If she die, if he dies, he could marry some. She could marry somebody else only in the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So. The way I view it in, 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 in a situation like that is, and I also want to quote Peter when it says that wives submit to your husbands, even if they, they, they believe not, if they, that your, your, your chaste language could convert them, right? He's, so there was in the Bible, Christians that believe in, in Christ and you had non-Christians they believed most likely in Judaism or another religion, or they didn't believe in God, a non-believer. So they dealt with that. So my perspective, I will try to first preserve the marriage, if it's a marriage. If they have children, and maybe he doesn't want to come to the church, and maybe he wants to go out in the club every weekend, still hang out with his boys. I don't see that's ground for divorce necessarily, because the first century church dealt with that scenario. But I and also, let me add this in. Remember, <clears throat> when it comes to those scriptures, um, the writer made it very clear that in this instance, the Lord is speaking, yet the Lord, not I, command you to do X, Y, and Z. Then at a certain point in the scripture, he says that he's given you this by permission, meaning the Lord has not given you this. He's given you his own advice on what he think, get it? So when it talks about how um, if the unbelieving depart, let them depart because somebody's not held in bondage in these cases, that's his opinion. You get it? Because if that's the case, you're not held in bondage, then how could he say that a woman is bound to her husband as long as he live? And the only way she could be married is if her husband be dead. So you gotta understand What's really going on? And see, based on my reading and comprehension skills, I would go as far to say that that section in the scriptures where it talks about uh, an unbeliever or, or whatever is not held in bondage in these cases, I would go as far to say that that was thrown in the book by translators because it's not going in line with the Bible.
If you go look at the Old Testament and you, and you look at the New, it's not going in line with it. One verse is talking about, I speak to them that know the law. Then another verse is saying, well, if you're unbeliever, depart, let them depart because one is not held in bondage in these cases. Then which one is it? Which one is it? It's like two different people are talking. <laughs> it's not the same person. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. In one section, he was telling you what thus saith the Lord. Another section, he said, I speak to you now. I'm giving you my advice. Always keep that in mind when you're listening. Let's go. Think, but, but I think this is to answer the, this last point. I think in that even if you we could rationalize some divorce in that situation, which I could see that. I think in this situation, that situation is different from this situation because this situation, they came in as a couple. There's no evidence that either one is an unbeliever now, from my understanding. They just left the church, or one of them left the church, the husband. That's a good point because remember that the section that he was talking about was if an unbeliever depart. But in this case, Gonzalez and Nelly are both believers. So did that don't apply to them. These are believers. So what Dow, P. Diddy Dow was supposed to do is minister to Nelly to get with her husband. But he didn't do that. He was ministering D to Nelly. He was busy putting holy oil all over her body. Another man's wife. And that's what he was doing. If she had issues with him, dude was supposed to counsel her on getting back with your husband. Like, look, it is what it is. The Bible says this. You need to go back to your husband. You're going to have to leave straightway. Your husband is in Florida. You need to go. So we're going to set up arrangements. We're going to get the car ready, pack your things, and you're going to go back to your husband. We're sending you back today. Well, I'm not going nowhere. Well, you can't stay here. You're going to have to leave because now you're being disobedient. That's your husband. You're bound by the law, according to the Bible. Um, he's a believer. Uh, whether he have a difference of opinion concerning me or whatever the case is, it is what it is. I respect his relationship. I respect his marriage. You're his wife. Um, respectfully speaking, you can no longer stay here. He gave his word for you to come back. You being rebellious, talking about you had a dream. We're not going to tolerate that here. You need to go back to your husband. P. Diddy Dow didn't do that because he always wanted to fuck Nelly the day she got there. The day Nelly got there, P. Diddy Dow wanted her for himself. And he can't tell me that he didn't. This is why, guys, when you bring your woman around certain dudes, you got to know that they true. I'm not saying that every dude... You bring your woman around, you got to be paranoid. That's not what I'm saying. You got guys out there that are good stand-up brothers. They could be around your wife, and they're not, they're not trying nothing. They're not trying to smash your woman. You know what I mean? But what I'm trying to make you understand is that a man is a man. You know what I mean? Men are men. I'm not saying to be paranoid that when your woman is around the boys or whatever the case is, you got to worry about them trying to put meat inside of her. Just understand that as men, there's a certain way to move when you're around other men wives there's certain things you should do and then there's certain things you shouldn't do you get what i'm saying there are boundaries we just don't cross you know what i mean if you see another man's wife you don't say hey could i massage your feet <laughs> you know what i'm saying you don't do that you get what i'm saying oh your husband not home hey i could come in and wait till he come <laughs> no that's not how it goes man you gotta you know have some boundaries about this situation. Let's go. From one understanding, he still believes in Yah, he still believes in God. There's some issues there. So I don't see in this particular scenario that we could say, this, we should see, unless he's a liar, unless this, I, I, I'm trying to come up with this situation, not in a general hypothetical. Does that make sense? I, I tried to get away from this particular one, but still stay similar, right? So we can get an understanding possibly. Again, I don't have all the information. Y'all think y'all got all the information. Some people do. 
I don't believe anybody has all the information on this. I don't believe Eric has all the information on this. I don't believe Nelly has all the information. I don't How could you say that Eric don't have all the situa- all the information or Nelly? They're the people that are involved. They have the information. Of course, Eric is going to know what's going on. <laughs> of course, Nelly know what's going on. She's the one filing for divorce. But see, this is the part that I had great issues with is because it's like he was literally it was almost like trying to convince us. Hey, guys, we really don't know what's going on. That was so many years ago. Let's just, you know, what I mean, who cares? You know, let's move on. No, I'm not trying to move on. You know, what I mean, I'm not moving on because this is serious. The man is in adultery and he's out here calling himself a pastor, but he's sleeping with another man's wife. No, we got to hold him accountable. We got to hold everybody accountable. You know, nobody's getting away from this. Everybody got to be held accountable to the fire. It's just that simple. Pastor Dow has all the information. I really don't. But what I'm saying is... Pastor Dow has the information because he's fucking Nelly. He have her in a new house. Did y'all not know that? Nelly has her own house. Even Sister Carol don't have that. Sister Carol stays in the house with Dow and the other two women, the other two wives that he got. She stays in that house. There's even word on the street, and I need more info on this because it's really alleged. I don't I don't have stone cold info. I think I'm not sure did I think we did get some info from Eric about the situation. I think Eric spoke on the in, the situation. <clears throat> I'm not sure if he did. I'm, I'm, there was so many people that was in my comments. That there's information out there. I got to say alleged just for the record. All right. So I don't know if this is a fact unless it's confirmed by people that know that are in the now. But there is uh, rumors that uh, Sister Carol, um, Dow's first wife, that she got it in with some other guy at Straightway. And the reason why Dow is able to practice polygyny today is because of her past transgressions that he, I guess he took her back and everything is cool. So it's like, well, since you did that, I'm going to go do this and you got to accept it. You know what I mean? Because you did me dirty. It's one of them situations. This is what they're saying. You know what I mean? So, hey, don't get mad at me. I'm just reporting the news. That's all I'm doing, right? Okay, let's get back to the tapes. Well, the word on the street is that Sister Carol was out there doing some dirt at Straightway as well with a man some other woman's friend or some mess like that. Very, very dirty stuff, fam. So if anybody got more info on that, a tape, um, whatever the case is, hey, do do whatever you could do to get me the tapes. I need the tapes on that. I need need facts. I need hardcore facts on that situation. If you got real-world information, like, yo, Ringo, this is a fact. I was there. If you got that kind of info, I need that. I was there. She did. That right there will surface, right? Okay, let's get back to the tapes. You, you didn't really like answer my question. I personally, if I see a couple, and that's why I'm, I'm not even talking about the Gonzalez's now. If I see a couple and I can tell that they're in some deep level satanic toxic stuff, and I can tell that one person really has a heart for y'all and wants to get out of that, And I see another person that is still living that lifestyle. They're still stuck to that lifestyle. A damning lifestyle. I can't in good conscience tell that person to submit themselves to that individual. I can't do that. Well, if you can't do that, sir, what you're telling me is that you're incompetent. Because the first thing you're supposed to be doing is finding out what the Bible say. Not what you feel. What does the Bible say? For better and for worse. This is why every man is responsible for his own home. It's not up to you to decide what a person should or shouldn't do. See, this is what I mean. We have adults being looked upon as children where other people are deciding the fate of their marriage and relationships. It's not how it go. You are supposed to know what is appropriate and what's appropriate is what the Bible say, not what you think. Get it? You're saying, oh, some satanic diss. Come on, fam. Let's just be real. Nobody ain't doing all that. Nobody ain't doing all of that. Women make the conscious decisions to get with men that they're interested in. Later on, they end up getting abused, left with a baby, whatever the case is. That's her choice. Men, 
you guys get with women because you just wanted some vagina. And then when you get her pregnant, you get mad that you on child support. That's your fault. You got with her. Now you on child support. Don't cry. You want it to go in raw. Okay. Now you got to pay the piper. Child support time. Don't get mad now. Oh, she's dirty. She's taking me for all my money. She's taking me to court. Bro, you wanted her. You ain't had no problem when you was grabbing her hair, hitting it from the back. You remember that? You ain't have no problem. Now, all of a sudden, because she dragged your ass in court, now all of a sudden, now you crying like a baby? Bro, pay the money. That's the, that's the cost of vagina. Pay the money, bro. It is what it is. Let's get back to the tapes. I can't. Okay, I so, don't think I don't uh, think that's what yeah. the I, and I don't think that's what the Bible is telling us to do when it talks about if a person is unbelieving. See, I, see. I, I counsel I counsel people and tell them this because you know a lot of a lot of talk goes out about how um, people have to separate from their carnal family when they come into the truth and things of that magnitude. Hey, look, as long as they're not doing anything to hinder you in the faith, I don't tell people to stop talking to your carnal family members. I don't. As long as they're not hindering your faith, what's wrong with having a relationship with them? Right. Now, the well, problem that I have is, what if they start vexing you? What if they start coming against you? What if they start hindering you in your walk and trying to uh, manipulate and do all this stuff? Yeah. You, you don't have to submit yourself to that. So now I tell you, get away from that. But I would okay. do that if a Hebrew did that to you. Okay, well, well, well let me, I, I, I appreciate that we have this conversation because okay. now I understand you better and, and why you, you, you answer the way you answer. But, mm -hmm. If can we okay, we could argue about the someone worshiping Yah sincerely and someone not worshiping Yah, or he is some devil worshiping satanic evil scenario. But listen to how he's setting he's setting the question up again. He's trying to give Rufus an opportunity to redeem himself. I can see what he's doing. He's trying to like, he's like, brother, let's try this again. Let me see if I could give you another opportunity to redeem yourself. Listen to the questioning again. Let's go. You got that the extreme, right? That's the extreme. And you have spectrum. Someone is maybe perhaps, you know, um, believes in God, but he's lukewarm. Is that, is that justification? What is is it, it? What about he's not lukewarm? He's a little warmer than colder. Where where's the tall line? The reason why I'm asking these line of question is because I believe, from a perspective as, as a leader, um, and what I have seen, I don't believe that Pastor Dow biblically had the right to take that man's wife. I don't see the extreme devil worshiping satanic situation on this brother. Uh, let me, uh, hold on, hold on, let me finish. I want, I want to let, let you, I got you. you know, that I don't see that. So I see that there, there was a couple that most likely were searching for something. And in most couples in America, there's always some conflict and issues and unresolved issues and resentment and things that they did years ago and they haven't resolved that. And when they come to a leader to get uh, uh, some form of resolution to their path. And when the smoke clears, the pastor's with his wife. I, I don't I don't see a scenario in, in any multiple universe. Listen, very good job to Kabar. Gabar. Very good job. The way he asks the question is perfect. If I may say, it was perfect. Absolutely perfect because it's like, come on. You can't figure this out. The, the man went down there with his family because he was learning some things from Dowell only for his wife to end up with pasta and his daughter gets sold off to another man. Come on now. Come on now. This is wild, man.
So there's no way you could tell me you don't know. And again, based on the tapes, this video is on Rufus' channel, and it's six years ago, and it says, stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. Very strong words to be in a video. Title, we the people want an answer. Do you feel that way today about Eric Gonzalez? And what was your positioning six years ago in regards to Eric? Did he do something to you personally, right? We need to have these facts at hand so that we can know what's going on. See, when I do my videos, I call it out. I'm not hiding. You don't see me just like playing games. I call everybody out. Nobody is safe. Do you understand? Because we're not making the same mistakes we did with past the P. Diddy Dow. I, I told you already, I'm not doing that no more. So if there's anything going down, I'm questioning it. I just want answers. You know, uh, question number one. Do you feel in today's day, 2024, that people should stay away from Eric Gonzalez? Number two, what did Eric Gonzalez do to you personally that people should stay away from that man? Three, why did you use your platform to promote staying away from Eric Gonzalez? Number four, what do you really know about that man's situation with Nelly? that you may be allegedly hiding right now. The people need to have those answers in video format, not through text, not through coming into a live chat and just posting text. No, a video explaining, explaining what's going on. Because remember, you were on Rallo's show. Rallo had, you know, all the heavy hitters on the program. Everybody was there. It brought out a lot of content creators and everybody was talking. And you were there on the same panel with a man that you said six years ago to stay away from that man, but you were near that man during that broadcast. So did y'all squash whatever issues y'all have behind the scenes? Um, you know, maybe y'all cool today. Do y'all talk on the phone? You know what I mean? Let us know. I'm just asking the questions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because before it gets crazy, it's good to answer the questions. I, people don't be getting this, man. If you answer the questions early, right, it stops a multitude of questions and videos and this because it's like, okay, he answered the question. Fair enough. But now if I start looking further, asking more questions, I may run into another video. Then I got to go do a video. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, listen, with Dowell, my first video. I said, I didn't even want to make this video. Y'all remember that? Because I thought he was going to repent. I was like, I don't even want to make no videos about the man. And that was before I started learning about the adultery stuff. You get that? Now it's like, <laughs> you know, so, hey, respond. Let the people know what's good. You know what I mean? You were on another podcast. I seen you on another brother podcast. You were there sharing your thoughts. They try to bait you into a debate about polygyny i saw the videos like i said i'm in these streets i got all the tapes let's go that will be okay okay and and, and what i'm saying brother i respect what you what your no point problem. of view and, and, and things that nature but pastor dow i think i used to promote him and i used to like him and i used to say hey he's doing it right this is what they, they're doing and yeah he's a little rough and and and, and in his approach but you know that doesn't bother me you know, if he's right, he's right, things that nature. But when I heard this and I, I began to go, I didn't believe it in the beginning. So now mm -hmm. it it's probably a lie. But when I saw all the evidence and Newbury, he was able to show me some things that, 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 um, and, and, and that I can't deny it. That they were a couple. They were together, and they're now they're not together. Just on the optics and how things look. As a leader, he's like, eh, this is not, doesn't look good. But biblically, biblically. In this situation, I have not seen any ground for divorce. Christ made it clear it would be the act of fornication. Okay, and I believe that was gender specific. For the bill divorcement was it was a gender specific law. There was nowhere in the Torah that a woman could say, I could give you a, a, 
a, a, a, a, a, a divorce. So I don't see, even if there will be a separation in the same chapter that we just read earlier about uh, 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 unbelieving, I was quoting, he also says, if the wife departs from her husband, let her remain unmarried, not marry the pastor of the church. I mean, we have to start saying something about this, man. Hey, there has to be it. some conversation. I, I mean, it. the dude is running around taking man's hey. wives. Hey, bro. Brother, no, we brother. have to do some talk conversation about this. My brother. It should not be something like, well, we don't know. We're going to see old side, old side. Let, let the brother it? talk. I am fit podcast. Let him talk. Yeah, and then yeah, let I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna... I really wish if Rallo wouldn't interrupt him, but respect to Rallo as your platform. You could do what you want. But at that moment, you should let Gabar cook. Because what, what, what Gabar was doing right there is he was holding him accountable. Because I'm going to just say it straight. G Gabar know that you were bullshitting, Rufus. I'm just telling you straight. He already know you bullshitting. <laughs> That's why he's saying it the way it is. Like, you know, and, eh, he already know that you bullshitting, bro. You know the man is in adultery. Just say what it is. <laughs> we don't need no evidence of this, evidence of that. The man took the man's wife. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? He took his wife. He took his wife. And there's no way to sugarcoat this thing. You know, you might have some sort of loyalty to maybe some things that maybe transpired at tra uh, straight way. Maybe you don't want to say nothing because maybe you have some skeletons in your closet that you don't want nobody to know about. So it's like it's one of them situations. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying is real talk. There are situations. Now, listen to me very carefully. I, I talked about this already in the stream, but I got to make this thing clear to y'all. You can have an issue with someone where you have a falling out. Me and you were once cool. We hang. We broke bread. Something came up. We're no longer cool. But I know some secrets on you. Some damning dirty secrets. But guess what? <laughs> you know some secrets about me. Now, even though we had a falling out, respectfully, I'm not going to put your dirt out there because I know you know about mine. Now, we could be in the public going back and forth, but we both know not, not to bring up the dirt, if that make any sense. Could, could y'all all agree you've been in situations like that where... You had a falling out with somebody, but they know some things on you. You know some things on them, but y'all never revealed it. So anytime people try to say, hey, brother, what is your thoughts of this with that person? You wouldn't even talk about it because you're like, Ooh, I can't say nothing about it. Why? Because they got some dirt on you. Brother, what's your opinion on such and such committing adultery with that man's wife? Well, you know what I'm saying, bro? Um. That's between them and the most high, you know what I mean? Because to be honest, you know what I mean? I don't get in other people's affairs. Um, I don't really know everything about what happened. And um, you see what I mean? That right there is a sign of you just don't want to say. Now, if you're really a man of truth, you would know what the Bible say. That's all you need. All you need is what the Bible say. Whatever the Bible say, that's how we judge if we're right or wrong. We just can't say stuff like, well, I don't know. We don't got all the information. We don't know this. Can't do that, fam. That's, that's what was disappointing to me, you know? But um, at the end of the day, um, when he was cross-examining Rufus at that point, he needed to cook him some more <clears throat> to get the spirit. Remember, guys, testing the spirits. Testing the spirits is very important. Also, let me throw this out there. When you guys are interviewing people, right? You got to know and understand this one thing. Your star guests, when they talk, let them talk. Let them talk. Let them run their mouth. They're your guests. They're your star guests. Let them talk. If anybody else that is not, listen, it doesn't matter who is there that's important people or whatever the case is. The people are not there to hear them. The people are there to hear the star guests. That's who makes the show. 
You get it? If if I show up to someone's panel, I'm not the star guest. If the subject is about this matter, such and such and such, and it involves Eric or it involves Rufus or whatever the case is, their words and time supersedes mine. Doesn't matter who I am. If I hear these brothers start talking, I'm, I'm quiet. I'm like this because I want to hear everything. But if a person interrupt, they're messing up the flow. And it ruins the show. You know what I mean? Because like when I was watching the show, uh, there was some other dude. I don't know who he is. Um, he interrupted Eric. And I got pissed off. <laughs> I, I literally got pissed, bro. Like in the crib. I was like, what the F you doing, bro? I was literally bugging. Because I was... because. Eric was cooking. He was telling his side of the story. He was cooking. He was in the spirit. He was just flowing. And it kept me tuned in. I was li like, literally like, like, okay. And then the brother just cut in. And I'm like, I was literally pissed. I, uh, it's, I screamed at the monitor. <laughs> I screamed at the monitor, bro. I looked at New Breed face. New Breed was like this. He, I don't know. New Breed just kept his cool. He looked like he wanted to flip too. New, if you look at, go go back and look at the video. You'll look at New Breed and he was like. <laughs> he was pissed. I know. You know what I mean? He was pissed about it, man. But hey, always let the guests talk, man. The guest is very important. So at, again, at this section here, um, I understand Rallo is regulating the time or whatever the case is. I would really like to see uh, the brother continue to talk because what happened was he was bringing out the spirit on Rufus. It, it, it was necessary. You have to understand because, again, um, Gabar know what's going on. That's why I'm saying I know what's going on because I was watching it. He was dancing around the question. If Dal is an adulterer, as a man of truth, you're supposed to know based on the scriptures. There is nothing you need to know. He took a man's wife. How is he with her if she's still alive? She Did Eric give her a writing of divorcement? Did Eric put her away? Did Eric divorce her? No. So what grounds do you have to have her? The man never physically abused her. The man never abandoned her. So where is the grounds for divorce? How did he abuse her? He didn't do that. So how Dow end with her? Rufus should be like, yeah, he's an adulterer. Come on now. Think about this. Think about this, guys. Ever since I've been talking about these subject matters regarding Pastor Dow is in adultery. Did you see Rufus, like, I guess, agreeing with the things that I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's in adultery. He's this. You haven't seen that. He'll show up, but... He's not saying like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's an adulterer. And right in the chat, yeah, he's an adulterer. Yeah. No, he's not saying it. That's a red flag to me because it's like almost like, so hold up. You don't know what's going on. This is why I test the spirits. See, when I do these kind of videos, it's to test who you are as a man to see how you respond. Are you going to get upset? Um, are you going to be like, well, I don't want to have nothing to do with Ringo because, you know what I'm saying, he's putting me on blast. It's to see your spirit as a man. You know what I mean? It's to see who you are and how you can recover, how you can redeem yourself, how you can respond and say, well, you know, this is what it is. Appreciate that. Uh, well, let me give you my side of what I meant. You know what, brother? You're right. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to say anything because I did this and I did that. Now I know why. I'm just saying I'm good at reading people. And sometimes the most high will make me say some things. I don't know, but he'll make me say some things and it be your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, hey, it is what it is, man. Let's get back to the tapes. Two seconds. And I think there's something we issue demand answers from our spiritual leaders. Uh, not yet. Um, again, I want to say this. I don't believe any of us have all the answers when it comes to this particular situation. See, this is what I mean. 
He said, I don't believe any of us have all the answers to this situation. That's crazy because we have the Bible. We have the Bible. And remember in my previous streams, and again, I'm not throwing Rufus under the bus, right? What I'm doing is I'm holding him to the fire the same way I would do anybody. What, what I'm looking at here is this. And I talked about this in previous videos. I said, if you came out of straightway, you came out of there with the mentality of straightway. You came out of there with the teachings of straightway. You came out of there with the loyalty to uh, P. Diddy Dow. Even though he kicked you out, you still got to undo certain things. You get what I mean? So when I look at this situation, I'm like, bro, you can't see that the man is in adultery. So if you got a wife and your wife uh, says she's filing for divorce from you and I take her to be my wife, you going to tell me you don't know that's adultery? Simple scenario. Rufus has a wife. She go to him and says, hey, I want a divorce. Okay. Then she come to me and say, okay, Ringo, I want you to take me as your wife. Okay, cool. I'll take you. Is that not adultery? That's adultery. So what is there to figure out? We don't need to find out nothing. It's clear. It's right in your face. That's all I'm saying. You know, let's get back to the tape. I don't think Eric do. I don't think Pastor Dow do. I don't think Nelly does. One thing is clear. None of those three came to me and asked my side either. See, he's distancing himself from it. He's distancing himself from any liability, any responsibility by saying, hey, None of them came to me for anything. I don't know. I just don't want to be involved. I'm here to talk about me in terms of them kicking me out of straightway. That's what I'm here for. And I believe later on in that stream, he said something along them lines. Like, look, I'm here to let y'all know what happened with me and them kicking me out of straightway. That's what I thought I was here for. You know what I mean? So whatever happened with Eric and his woman, that's that's their business. I don't want, hey, I'm just here to tell the people the truth on what happened with me concerning them kicking me out of straightway. It's in that stream. I just didn't get to that part in terms of showing it. But I remember hearing it. So when I heard all those different things, what it told me is he don't really want no parts of this thing about divorce and who and what. He don't want to deal with that. He would rather focus on what happened with him with straightway kicking him out. My thing is, you were there. So you had to know that Dow was with this man's wife. Can't tell me you didn't know. Because again, when we go to the tapes, when we go to the receipts, the receipts show that six years ago, you made a video, true honor, respect, and integrity, stay away from people like Denza McGee and Eric Gonzalez. You made this video. And throughout the video, you never mentioned Mr. Gonzalez's name. You were primarily talking about Denza McGee. But at the same time, everything that you said about Denza McGee also applied to Eric Gonzalez. You didn't have to say his name, but it applies to him. All right? So what the public need is a response from you. Just like we're telling Pastor Dow to, to have a response to the allegations and the videos and X, Y, and Z, the public need to know um, what was your position to make such a video? Um, why was Eric name in the title? Uh, do you still feel we need to stay away from him? What changed? Um, did he do something to you personally? Did you feel it was necessary to defend Pastor Dow back then to show your loyalty? Did Pastor Dow tell you to make a video? There's a lot of explaining to do. I'm just the guy that asks the questions. That's all I do. I just do my job and I do it very well. You know what I mean? And I take my time. And, hey, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I do what I do. People get upset. But, hey, I'm just here to watch what the spirits are saying and, and to, uh, you know, test the spirits to see what kind of spirit is in a man in terms of how he responds. If a man responds with anger, if a man responds with, with uh, you know, high-pitched energy, I'm monitoring all of that so that I can verify who you really are. So I can test your spirit. Because, remember, you came out of straight way. Um, you're amongst the other brothers where we're, we're having conversations. You're on panels, 
All of that stuff looked good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you supported the show. All of that stuff is nice. I get it. But at the same time, the people want answers. And we got to find out where your spirit is concerning this man, Eric Gonzalez. And why you're not just coming out flat out and say, yeah, Pastor Dow, yeah, he's an adulterer. Facts. You haven't even come out and said it. Facts like that. You didn't even do it. You're just saying, well, if the scripture says whatever, then, hey, just go with that. What? That's crazy. Again, you have a wife. She comes to you and she says, Rufus, I want a divorce today. Right? She, you sign the papers and then she come to me and I take her in as a wife. Am I in adultery? I'm sure you know the answer to that. Well, Pastor Dow's situation is the same. So I'm trying to figure out why you just don't say, you know, what it is. You know what I mean? You know? Yeah, you you saying, you said I already answered that earlier. Eric name was in that video. I didn't hear the name. Maybe it passed what maybe it passed over it because him and Denza was in fellowship and causing issues for the ministry at the time. Well, you're going to have to explain that because in text, that's not helping anybody right here. You know what I mean? You got to explain that further details so people can understand because you're saying they were causing issues in the ministry. Because now when you say they were causing issues in the ministry, that means you're taken up for the ministry. Remember, you said that you don't know nothing about what's going on. So for them to be causing issues, you got to explain what issues. What issues were they calling that they need people need to stay away from these guys? And it, it kind of makes it look like you defending Dowell over everything else. Because remember, this man was done dirty. His wife is with another man. The pastor committed adultery. And the people want to know, what do you know? So when situations look like this, they're going to be looking at you like, hold up, wait a minute. What do you mean uh, him and Denza was causing issues and, and X, Y, Z in the ministry? What were they doing? What kind of issues? A man was getting his wife taken from him. I'm sure he'll have some things to say. You know what I mean? And I'm sure uh, P. Diddy Dow said a lot of devilish things about him. We even seen the video where P. Diddy Dow made threats. Real threats now. I have the video where Dow made a threat. He threatened that man's life. On video. Full of the devil. Right? Told the man don't ever come back. He hate Mr. Gonzalez, he hate him with a passion. I don't see nobody talking about that, you know? So when we see stuff like that, we're going to have questions because it's like, wait a minute now. Do you feel some type of way about this brother? Is he dangerous? What did he say? Did he say something to you personally? Like, did he do something to you personally that's affecting you and your family? Because if not, then that means you were doing the bidding of Dowell. You know? So that video was Denza coming a straight way and disrespecting us on a Shabbat. The, this, video, this video had nothing to do with Nelly's situation. If you watch it, I didn't mention that situation at all. We know that already. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with integrity and context. It has, we, we already talked about that earlier. We never said that the video was about Nelly and this guy. I never said that. What I said was the man's name is in the title. The title. That's where the man's name is. You said stay away from people like that with his name. That's very strong language to say stay away because that's the same language that Dow used on you. You get it? So that's the same thing. that Dow, The same words that Dow used, you use for him. So do you feel that people need to stay away from uh, Eric Gonzalez today? Did you and him have a conversation behind the scenes to resolve whatever it is that made you say these words? You see what I mean? Because that's what I'm looking at. And I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not going to, you know, be on a panel. And you know what I mean? I'm there with, with people. And it's like we we had issues and we never resolved these issues. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not doing that. I wouldn't even be there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at this thing from the outside looking in that it's kind of questionable. 
and it'll make people think, what else do you know? Or did you have some sort of ill will towards this man? And do you have that today? That's all it is. I'm just asking the questions. You know, that's all it is. So let's get back to the tapes so we can examine more of this. Let's go. And I'm in, a, I'm in the ministry with them as an elder, as a leader at that time. None of them asked me my opinion on it. I wasn't going to dip in. To me, that's between them and y'all. Let them figure that out. Now, I know the optics, how they look. I do. What does the scripture say? It's not about optics. <laughs> it's about what the scriptures say. What does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? Not no optics. What does the scripture say? Again, if you're married to a woman, let's say I got a church, Ringo Ministries, right? And you bring your wife to Ringo Ministries because you wouldn't listen to the church. You like the videos. You bring your wife. Next minute, uh, she got issues with you. She's coming to me. And I'm like, look, you need to divorce him. He ain't no good. She go to you, give you divorce papers. You sign them away. And then you end up seeing me with your wife. What is that called? What optics do you need to see? Obviously, I would be an adulterer. Period. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing. To, we don't need. We don't need nothing. All we got to do is look, look at what the Bible say. Okay, the Bible says this. Let's see. Did the man do that? Yep. Is that your wife? Yeah. Okay. So he's an adulterer. <laughs> it's just a simple way. There's nothing else to see. That's all I'm saying. Let's get back to the tapes. But Yah's the one that judges the inner right. He knows what's really going on on the inside of all three of their hearts. He knows what happens. And if that man is in adultery, guess what? Y'all gonna deal with him for that. See, this, I can't, I don't, I know. This right here is like, like we're just kind of like wishful thinking, mumbo jumbo. If the Lord knows, he knows their hearts. No. What does the Bible say? You know what I mean? Because if we go, if we think like that, then we can't properly judge anything. That means that anybody could do anything and nobody can't judge. So that means if, if, if you're a brother and I come out of your house, you're coming home from work, you park in the car and you see me come out of your house and your wife gives me a hug and I jump in my car before you can get out of yours and I leave. What does that say? What does that say? What's going on? Something's going on. I, I don't need an interpreter. I don't need to get more info. It is right in your face. Some things don't need interpretation. It's right there. You know what I mean? It's right there. You even had key witnesses that said they were at Dow's house. Bruh man said it on the tapes, fam. Let's roll the tapes. Um, I was there when there was the controversy uh, of whether or not she was going to be with Pastor Dow or not. I've seen, I was there when things weren't, you know, like, like literally finalized. He was there before things were finalized, meaning divorce. I stayed in Pastor Dow's house twice. Opened up one door and he's getting his feet rubbed by Sister Nelly. Getting his feet rubbed by Sister Nelly, guys. Explain that. I want to know what's going on. I, I don't understand how a, a woman that's still married to a man is getting her feet, getting, is massaging the pastor's feet. Nah. Go figure. I'm like, all right. Uh, he's got it going on. But that, hey, that's his personal business. But now it's like, Hey, it's all out there now. So, I mean, I, it's all out there now. <laughs> I'm like, fam, I'm just being honest, fam. When I hear stuff like this, right, it just goes to show that there's a lot of people that straightway that seen what was happening. They know what it is, and they just stayed quiet about the situation. They're like, look, hey, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I ain't, hey, but this is testimony coming from witnesses. All I'm doing is bringing out the tapes. You know what I mean? This man said, hey, I was there. I stayed at Pastor Dow's house. You know what I mean? I opened the door. I knew this woman wasn't divorced yet. I walk in there. I see her on her knees. 
Know what I mean? Next minute I see her giving this 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 man foot massages and like what other things she's massaging. Cause I'm gonna be honest, fam. If I'm in a room, <clears throat> if I'm in a room with a woman, she's massaging my feet, fam. I'm getting some head right after. I mean, while she down there, I'm gonna be like massage my legs. You know what I'm saying? Legs little, you know, tense. And you know, you know, as it, as when a woman get a little closer, closer. I mean, she have no choice but to give you some head. So you know that's what went down, and that's why she was still connected to Mr. Gonzalez. You see that? So none of this is justified. Dowell was already with this woman before this woman even finalized any sort of divorce. And that's a fact. He knows that. The spirit knows that. You know, there's no room around the situation, man. The man is an adulterer. It's just that simple. And that's why he's wanting to challenge public debates because he's no, I'm on to something. First of all, if the man is not in adultery, if the man is not doing no dirt, why he want a public debate? <laughs> why would a man want a public debate for something that's pointless? Why? Because we already got him. Got him already. I'm just not one that let up. You know, we're going to hold you accountable for your sins. There's no way around this one. You know, you want to point the finger and judge everybody. Okay, now the Most High is using me to judge you. Just that simple. He want to judge everybody at straight way. Okay, now the Most High judging you now by holding your sins out there, by making the people see that you're in adultery. Just that simple. All right? Let's get back to the tapes. If Nelly was doing stuff slick, y'all going to deal with her for that. If Eric was doing stuff slick, y'all gonna deal with him with that. None of them brought me in in this situation. None of them did. And they all had the opportunity to, but they chose not to. Now again, the optics look bad, but things ain't black and white like we think they are today, y'all. They're just not. Everything ain't black and white. I no, no, you're dancing, bro. You're dancing. You're dancing. Look at everybody's body language. Just look at the still image. Look at the still image. Just let it marinate a little bit. All right? Everybody that's there sitting, they already know what it is. All right? They already know what it is. They can see that, you know, hmm, yeah, all right. You know, they know that, uh, you know, maybe you just don't want to flat out just say whatever it is. But see, that's the issue because, it, 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 all right, if... If you had jewelry, if your wife have jewelry on her bureau, dresser, whatever, and you had a ring, not a ring, but a, one of those ring type cameras in the room, I was doing some construction work and remodeling the kitchen, and I just went up to your room, and you catch me on the camera. I take the jewels, and um, you know what I mean? I leave, and then I came back the next morning, and I'm doing work. And um, you're like, so, hey, jewelry is missing. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. What are you talking about? You know, you're going to look at me like I'm crazy because you have the video. You have the proof. There's no interpretation needed. You saw me. Okay. We saw that Eric Gonzalez brung his wife to straightway. Now she's with Dow. What does the Bible say? The man is in adultery. There's nothing that you need. There's no extra witnesses. There's no extra information. Adultery. Okay, check this out. Bible says to honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the earth. Is... Eric Gonzalez's daughter honoring her father today. So she's breaking the commandments. Did she bring the children so he could see the grandchildren? No. Does she have a relationship with him? No. So she's already breaking the commandments. She's already in violation. 
Now, they claim that they all keep in the commandments, but they're not. Because Dowell, as well as Mitchell, is causing uh, Mr. Gonzalez's daughter to be rebellious. But they claim that they're holy. <laughs> but you're punishing the father? Imagine you're the, you're the father and you can't see your grandkids because the pastor is with your ex-wife <laughs> and he took your daughter and gave her off to another man to marry. What an insult. That's evil. You're going to tell me the most high is pleased with that? The whole situation is a mess. And everybody at Straightway know what it is, man. Everybody at Straightway know what it is. We got the video, we got the proof, we got the testimony, we got Jamie's testimony, we got Eric's testimony, we got all sorts of testimonies regarding the situation. And yet, did Pastor P. Diddy Dow come up and repent and say, hey guys, I confess my sins. I am in adultery and I will repent and free myself from this wickedness. Did he come forward? Did he acknowledge that? No, because he's defiant and he believed he had done no wrong. Anytime you see a man that's unrepentant like that, he's not fit to lead nobody because everybody else needs to repent to him. I could just imagine how many people came forward to pass the P. Diddy Dow to repent before him. How many of you men at Straightway came to pass the to repent? When have he ever repented to you? When have he ever humbled himself? When? Come on. When have he ever humbled himself and said, hey, I sinned against you. Um, it is what it is. I, I messed up. You know what I mean? I'm going to take a break, get myself together, get into prayer and rehabilitate myself because I was out of line. I don't believe that man have it in him to repent. And that's that's a bad thing to be a pastor and Everyone else have to repent, but when it comes to you, you don't repent. Come on, man. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. And again, uh, P. Diddy Dow did Rufus dirty. So it's like, okay, if he did him dirty, how many other people he did dirty? And how come he couldn't, how come Diddy, P. Diddy Dow didn't repent? You know? How come? I mean, Dag, I mean, Rufus got done more dirty than what the world would do. At least in the world, they got contracts and agreements and they just can't do certain things to you until a certain time. At least in the, 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 the court of the law, there's a due process. But with Dow, there's no due process. It's like, listen, you on my land, you in my front porch, get out. Dag. <laughs> Wow, at least the world would treat me better. You got better opportunities with the world than in the church. And you're wondering why people don't want to go to church no more. It's because the church is wicked, man. Evil. And we're wondering why our women are out of order. It's because, number one, the men are not leading the women. I keep telling you guys, all the problem that we have with women today is because of us. We could talk about women issues. I ain't saying the women shouldn't be held accountable. Our women are wicked today because of us. Us men, we wicked. We not following the most high. That's why our women are rebellious. They're not rebellious because they're just rebellious. They're rebellious because we rebellious. We're not following the most high. If all of us brothers got on point, the women have no choice but to fall in line. That's it. They have no choice but to fall in line. And I don't mean to call women dogs. That's not what I'm saying. So don't misconstrue what I'm saying, but I'm going to give you an example. If you're a dog owner and you walk this way, your dog have no choice but to follow you. If you're going down a path, if your dog know you, respect you, your dog is going to follow you wherever you go. It doesn't matter where you go. Your dog is going to follow. It doesn't matter. Dog, cat, whatever you got, they're going to follow you. If you're a man and you're doing right, a woman is going to respect you and she's going to follow you. The reason why our women out here running wild doing crazy stuff is because we out here doing crazy stuff. We're not trying to marry these women. We're not trying to build families. 
We just want to pump, dump, smash, dash, get some for JJ, and kick these women in the trash. That's all we want to do. The average guy, that's all he want to do. That's all he care about. And you're wondering why these women are crazy. It's because we're putting DNA in them. We're putting heavy meat inside them. We're turning these women into zombies. That's what we're doing. I keep telling you guys, when you lay with a woman, she goes through a metamorphosis. She begins to transform into the very image and likeness of you. Just like us men, we're the image and likeness of the Most High. When a woman, when you lay with her, you put meat inside of her, she become the image and likeness of you. This is why when you see couples, they typically tend to look like one another. Yo, bro, that's your sister? Nah, that's my wife, fam. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I thought that was your sister. Why? Why she look like you? Because you put in heavy meat inside of her. The more meat you give her, the more DNA is inside of her. It goes to her brain. She becomes one with you, develops a soul tie. There's a bond. There's a connection. She's yours. Right? But because we practice dating, right? Oh, well, I don't like what you did. So guess what? I'm leaving you. I'm separating. Okay, so we've been practicing divorce our whole life. So this is why it's easy for women to get divorced. Why? Because in the dating game, as soon as things don't go her way, she just say, I'm done. I'm going to go get me a new boo. So by the time she get married, she's, it's easy to go file for divorce. Why? Because she's been practicing divorce her whole life. And because of feminism, because of the way the world is, men don't even want to get married no more. So, ladies, if men don't want to get married no more, why y'all still having sex with them? Why you ladies are still opening your legs for men that don't want to marry you? You see that? So it's just pure delusion and dysfunction all around. And it's because we're not educated to understand who we are as a people. This is why we got so much drama. All of these pastors that you see out here are all in adultery, guys. They're all sleeping around with other men's wives. I'm serious. All the TV pastors, all of them, adulterous. Every last one of them. Let's get back to the tapes. I can think of many different scenarios. All right, let me ask you this. A woman getting her tail beat by a man. Let's stop right there. You said if a woman is getting her tail beat by a man. Now, guys, you remember the section where he said uh, something about a person getting rehabilitated and getting their life in order? Remember when he said that earlier regarding another situation? Okay, he answered that with his own words in the beginning. If you go back, we talked about it. So at this section where he says this, all you got to do is go back and hear the answer. So she stay or go? She what, can leave. Hold on, she, what if they, what if they yeah. got married? They got a yeah. carnal relationship. Uh -huh. And he beating her tail. She, and he beating her tail. I've been, I've been, a, I have counseled many sisters that have been caught up in that situation, and I told them, find a place to leave. They're safe. However, that's still your husband. Let me ask you. Let me hey, listen. Time out. Oh, oh, listen, oh, oh, listen, oh, oh, listen. Oh, oh. See, I wish at that point, all the brothers would have just hold their peace, and let them cook, because it is so important to see that transaction. Because remember, the question was answered. If you go and rewind the tape, he gave the solution that the one that got the issues need to get rehabilitated and then they're able to come back and do what needs to be done. We use these excuses too much to justify divorce by saying, well, if a person is beating you up, okay, it's time to get a divorce. No, <laughs> no. Uh -uh. You can leave. You can separate. You can go live with your folks. You can go get another place. He can go get the help he need or he can go to prison. But that's still your husband. For better and for worse. What part of that don't people understand? See, this is how you know people are not really real. They think a marriage is just about for the better. No, it's for all of it. The worst, too. Some of you guys might be in a situation where your wife cheated on you, maybe not the job, messing with another man. You have the opportunity to forgive. You have the opportunity to get rid of her. 
Because if she had relations with another man, that's adultery, right? So you technically you could get rid of her, but you can also forgive her. You see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure out why, and this is just alleged, if uh, Sister Carol allegedly was with some other dude at Straightway, then that mean that Dowell forgave her. Technically, he could have divorced her. <laughs> but it's like, okay, he forgave her. You see that? So when you look at that, you would think, okay, how come he didn't give her a bill of divorcement? How come? Maybe she know his secrets. Maybe there's more to the puzzle. Or maybe it just, just never happened. But I've heard from several people that this happened. And the only reason why the polygyny is allowed, because she wasn't with it at the beginning. Like I said, P. Diddy Dow didn't teach polygyny. He wasn't with that. He was a Christian. Y did y'all not notice that? P. Diddy Dow was a Christian back in the day. His ministry transitioned. It transitioned. Remember, he came from the Christian church and it transitioned into, oh, Israelite this, Israelite that. He wasn't teaching on polygyny. Um, he wasn't even wearing a beard. Um, there's a lot of things. He wasn't wearing a beard back in the day. It was because other brothers came in with their beard and they probably rebuked him. And then he said, oh, you know what? Let me wear my beard now. There's a lot of things he wasn't doing. His wife originally wasn't with polygyny at all. She wasn't. She's only accepting of today because, like I said, there was some dirt that went down allegedly and somehow, some way, mm -mm -mm, she just kind of went with the program. But that's bad. That's really, really bad. So throughout this entire stream, we proved that Dahl's a hypocrite because he said in one video, the most high don't honor your uh, marriage to the state. He said, he said uh, the most high don't honor that because you've got a marriage contract with the world. We found video of Dahl saying that it's perfectly okay for you to be married by the state, that you didn't break no laws with God and you didn't break no laws with the world and that it's all good. We heard it. I showed all the videos. So everything that he says regarding these cases is to justify him taking Eric's wife. That's all this is about. Now, let's look at this particular video here. This is a video of me making you guys understand why debating reprobates is pointless and fruitless. In this particular clip, um, Rufus was in a video with some other guys. And what I want you to hear is Rufus explain why you shouldn't, or let me put it like this. I want you to see how Christians will bait you into a debate, meaning you came there for one reason, but in their minds, they're not there to hear nothing you got to say. They have their position, they have their beliefs, and you're never going to change their thoughts. Right. I'm sharing this section of the video here because remember, P. Diddy Dow challenged me to a public debate, which is pointless. I'm not even wasting my time with that, because with all these videos that I've shared thus far, he needs to respond to them. And he's not never. But I want you to see what it looks like when people debate. Right. So let me roll the tape and share exactly. This is what ha this is what it looks like when people debate. Right. I ain't ducking no smoke. I'm here, brother. I'm I'm here because you wanted to talk about polygamy. Well, time out. No, I didn't. You, I never said I want to talk about polygamy. You you did, I, you you did say it. No, I didn't. Stop. You you asked brother Tony. Oh, you want to talk about it? You could talk about it. I asked Tony because he said he didn't want to talk about it. Then, then he said you. Then he but, said you guys did. Exactly. We've talked about it, and again, you're going to believe it a certain way because you don't agree with it, and I'm gonna believe it a certain way because I do. Here's the thing, you ain't changing my lifestyle. You think I'm gonna go get rid of my four wives today after I'm done talking to you? You think that's what I'm gonna do? Brother. It ain't nothing you're gonna be able to tell me that's gonna change that. 
I am not, I am not God to persuade you. Only the Lord could persuade you to do that. There you go. And that's what I'm saying about you. So I don't want to spend the time talking about something that's going to be fruitless. It's and that's true. See, in this particular section, in this entire video here with this point, I agree 100 percent with what Rufus is saying here, because, again, me sharing this section with you is not to talk about him. What I'm trying to show you is you have a whole panel of nothing but Christians, right? You have one guy that understand he's an Israelite and you have nothing but Christians surrounding him on the chessboard, right? And what they're basically trying to do is bait him to a debate. It's like they, 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 they want him to believe that he's coming on the show to do one thing, but really they're not there for that. They're just there to hear themselves so that they can say, ha, 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 we got one. We got one of these Israelites. They don't know God. They don't know the Bible. See, I would have never even went on their show. Just to be honest with you, I would have never even went there because I already know what it's about. You know what I mean? Like me personally, none of these guys could ever get me on a show. Like it would never happen. They could make a video about me, but I'm not, I'm not even going to waste my time responding. But the point is, I already know what their position is because they're reprobate. You know what I mean? A reprobate person is not interested in listening to learn anything. They are already set in their ways. If I practice polygyny and that's what I believe, there is nothing right, that the Christian folk are going to be able to tell me to persuade me to say, okay, I'm not going to uh, practice polygyny anymore because I know what the Bible says. They're coming from a position of religion because they don't know how to read. So when they brought him on, it was to debate. That's it. It was just to debate. That's why they brought him on. So let's listen back now. Let's go. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything I can say to you today to make you believe in polygyny, yes or no? Is there anything that I can say to you today that will make you believe in polygyny? Now, listen carefully to the other guy's answer. What this is going to show you guys is why you don't want to debate people. Because they're already set in their ways and they're never going to change. Let's listen to the tape. Find out what he say. Well, of course not, because there's not, nothing that you Thank can say you. is written. Thank you. Thank you. If you, if, and, and, if you, can, hold, if on, you can, hold on, brother. Hold on, 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 you asked hold me a on, question, brother. you asked me a question, beloved. I, you answered it. I got hold your answer. I'm, I'm still I got answering your answer. it. I'm still answering it. No, well, he said that was a mistake by him for going on there. Those guys are just going to argue with you. Those are Geno Jennings guys. Um, the host of the show, I believe his name is Tony. You know what I'm saying? He is down with Geno Jennings. Um, you know what I mean? For whatever reason, he he posts Geno Jennings videos. Um, I never said nothing about those guys over there. You know what I mean? I have my my thoughts about Geno, but I never said anything about Tony personally. I never said anything about him, but I know that they Christians. They have their position on what they believe respectfully. And I know based on the work that they do, the videos they do, because I'm in these YouTube streets, I've been here since 2006, they're going to bait you into an endless, endless, pointless, fruitless argument. And you're just going to get frustrated. That's all you're going to be. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be like, how did I get here? And because it's live and it's happening, you know, it's like you have no choice but to be a part of the show and hope for the best. But to be honest, when you're there, None of those guys are trying to change. They're not listening to you. They are religious, and that's what they believe. And there's nothing you can change. And it, and it goes back to what you just said. You asked the guy, is there anything that I could say that could persuade you into believing in polygyny? He said, well, uh, no. So what's the, point of, what's the point of talking? What's the point of having a debate? You get what I'm saying? Because it's like, I'm here. Yeah, I thought this was about me sharing my, my points about and I, and I seen towards the end then when uh, the guys left, you had final words or... No, no, no. Wait, let me get this straight. There was a section in the video where you called out Tony and you was like, yo, uh, I thought I was here for X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? And you even asked the guys, like, is everybody going to ask me a question about polygyny? Like, that's all y'all want to hear? Because that's, a, that's exactly what they want to hear. They just want to argue. That's it. You know what I mean? I, even Gonzalez, he was over there. Eric was over there too. Eric was there too. 
you know. But um, at the end of the day, um, they were doing the same thing with him. They were trying to say he don't know what he's talking about. People in the chat was laughing. I would have never even went over there. I would have never went over there. I mean, that's y'all prerogative. Y'all could do what y'all want to do. Y'all grown men. Y'all could go on whatever show y'all want to do. But me personally, I already know what these guys are about. Their job, they're not listening to none of y'all. <laughs> as far as they're concerned, they see you guys as going to hell. That's how they see you. I mean, think about this. Even, even with uh, Brother Gonzalez, um, one of those guys even said that. Something about, was it you or was it Rufus? Pretty much they were looking at you. I'm, I'm watching the show and I'm hearing them like, hey, you know, this could mean you going to hell. And I'm like, listen, man, why am I even wasting my time? You know, because they, they don't know what they're doing over there. And this is why I'm saying how debates is a waste of time. If, if you're around other men of truth, you got to be around like-minded men that have the understanding. When you get around uh, these Christian channels, their, their focus is not to learn nothing from you. I mean, think about this. Even if any of those Christian channels is listening to me right now, they don't like me. They don't care about me. Their job is to make videos to try to make me look like I'm crazy in order for me to make a video about them. And then we have this back and forth argument and then I'm in their chat room and I'm giving them my energy. I'm not doing that because I already know better. I already know what it's about. I already been through this in 2006. I've been through all the battles already. I've been through all the wars, real wars. I'm talking about video war, where it's clash of the videos and it's pointless. It gets you nowhere. So when Dow says, he want to have a public debate. It's not because he's willing to learn. It's not because he want to he want to grow. It's because he just want to be heard so that he can, I guess, ex, uh, talk about his position concerning divorce and remarriage to justify why he end up with Nelly. That's all he's interested in. He's not interested in in learning. That's why it's called debate, because only reprobates want to debate the Bible says to avoid these things because it only genders strife. All a debate does, it'll make you want to fight people. If you're on a panel like this and you're surrounded by nothing but Christians, you can't think for a minute that they think well of you because they don't. You know, you could be as respectful. You could be as cool as you want. At the end of the day, they're going to have their talks about you behind the scenes. You know what I mean? They're going to have their talks about you behind the scenes. You can have conversations, but it always ends up into a religious debate. And it's pointless. It's never going to work. Somebody's going to be mad. And, you know, it's just going to be nonstop. And I saw that happening during that show. I saw it happening. You know? Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Let me see. Somebody says, Tony Haven is with Gino. Yeah. That's one of his people. You know what I mean? He put the videos up. You know what I mean? He put the videos up on YouTube. Because I, I think, if I'm correct, I don't think I don't think Gino, I don't think Gino is even on YouTube. Like, Gino is not on YouTube. Gino does his thing on his website, I believe. I don't, if I'm correct, I think he does his thing on his website. And Tony set up the YouTube channel, which means... If it wasn't for Tony, nobody won't even know about Geno Jennings. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for him putting the videos out there, nobody would even know who, who Geno is. So he, he owed it to Tony for putting the videos out in the algorithm because he'd been doing that for a minute. I've seen some of his videos, so I know that he's connected with Geno Jennings. So obviously, he's going to rock with him concerning anything of any sort of... Uh, opposition. So if anybody says anything about Gino, Tony going to be there to say something about them. That's just the way it is. That's how social media work. All I'm saying is when you when you go to these particular broadcasts, these particular programs as an Israelite, you are walking into a trap where they're going to ambush you in a debate. And that's what I saw with the situation with uh, um, Rufus, and I even seen that happening with Gonzalez because he was on the show too. They were doing the same thing to him. 
You know what I mean? And I saw the frustration coming up. Why? Because that's what they do. They get the frustration and then they start saying, well, why are you getting angry? Why are you getting mad? Well, what does the Bible say about this? And you don't know the scriptures. And now it's like they ask you a thousand questions. They, you didn't even get a chance to answer the questions yet. And they, they make you look like you crazy. That's what they do to you. It's, there for, it's for their own entertainment, for their own joy. This is what they do that for. That's why I, listen, this happened back in the day. I know what it is. You know what I mean? None of those guys are learning. They don't want to learn nothing. <laughs> they're not trying to learn nothing. And they all believe they're right. You cannot change their mind. Now, if you could find something written in the New Testament that justifies polygamy. So the New Testament is greater than the Old Testament? That what you're telling me? A thousand percent. See, I can't, again, brother, I'm not going to convince you that it's anything different. I'm not. If you believe that, I'm going to let you believe that. You go right ahead. Okay. You go right ahead. My, my, my last question. You believe so much in the Old Testament. Do you sacrifice animals? Do you hear the questions that he's asking, Rufus? Do you hear the questions? It's an amb Yes, it's, it was an ambush. That's what you walked into. Um, this is why um, a lot of these Christian channels, like, sometimes, listen, I get a lot of people that make videos about me, right? I don't even respond to them. People still make videos about me. I don't even respond. I see my name in the title. I don't even look at the video. What they're wanting is a debate. That's all they want. They're waiting for their big break. So when you come on the show, man, that's like, they don't even, you don't even know what you're getting into because you might think you're there to explain what happened. Because again, even in that video, Rufus asked Tony, he was like, you heard like, you know, what's going on with me and Pastor Dow. And notice his answer. It was a vague answer. He was like, eh, I heard, uh, you know, whatever. He ain't hear nothing. They don't care. <laughs> the only reason why you're there in their eyes is so they could put you on the skillet. That's it. It's an ambush. That's all it is. It's so that they can cook you. And remember, uh, it's six of them, one of you. So they're going to, they, you're surrounded. When, when, when you try one move, they're going to get you from the other side. Somebody going to say something before you know it. You're going to end up just leaving. And then they're going to say, ha ha, look at that. He left. And now they're going to make videos the whole week. How, oh, we ran him off the show. These Israelites ain't strong. These Israelites, that, I seen this stuff happen years ago. It's the same formula. Don't have to. Why not? Jesus did that for me. All right, then. So the New Testament is greater. Notice the guy believed that the New Testament is greater. See, in situations like that, it's like, listen, guys, hey, you know what it is? It is what it is. You believe the New Testament is, good, is better, is greater. I'm out of here. Peace. And I'm, and I'm leaving. I'm just going to walk out the door and leave. Because I cannot change these people's minds. What am I here for? You get it? He believed the New Testament is greater. It, it's Listen, we got to stop talking about the New Testament, Old Testament. Let's just talk about the Bible. One, because the laws of the Most High is in the Old Testament and the New Testament. If we read the Old Testament, we know that back then we had to sacrifice animals to atone for our sins. Right? Simple reading comprehension. In the New Testament, we don't have to follow the sacrificial laws anymore to atone for our sins, to cover sins. Based on the Bible, we don't have to do that no more. But do these Christians know that? Do they understand context? No. They'll just focus on the Old Testament is done away with. Well, the laws are in there. You go to the book of Revelations, it tells you. If we don't keep the commandments, if we don't overcome... We're not going to have right to the tree of life. So to all the Christians that believe you don't got to obey the commandments of the most high no more. Good luck with that when it comes to reaching the kingdom. Good luck. Let me get that from the book. Let me get that from the book. All right. Let me see. Revelations. Right? I don't like opening these windows because it make the video it make the video drag. That's crazy. I've been on for six hours already, man. This is wow. Okay, um, let me see. Alright, let me put this on the screen. 
All right, for the Christians out there, right? Look at this, right? This is from the Revelations, New Testament. Bless are they. The word bless means empowered to prosper. That's what the word bless means. Bless are they, or empowered to prosper are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So if Christians don't believe in keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, how are they going to make it to the kingdom? And it's right in the New Testament. Explain it. This is why I don't get into these religious debates with Christians because it's pointless and it's a waste of time. You're, you're dealing with reprobates. And I say that respectfully. If you're not following what the Bible say and you just want to argue scripture all day, you're a reprobate. I'm not wasting my time. That's like me wasting my time with a debate with P. Diddy Dow. I'm not doing that because I know what the Bible say. He's a pastor. How many years? 30 plus years. Okay, he's supposed to know better. He's supposed to know better. He should not even be talking about challenges. He's just supposed to say, hey, I know what the Bible say. You're right. I messed up. I committed adultery. You know what, uh, Nelly? I got to put you away. It is what it is. Ringo proved it. I'm in sin. This is why I'm getting all this drama. I got to get rid of you. I got to put you out. You got to go back. You know, I got to get you out of straightway. You're, you're messing up my whole entire thing. I messed up big time. That's what he's supposed to do. Right? Let's get back to this tape. Let's go. Now, now listen to, as the guy continue, Rufus is going to get frustrated and be like, no, I'm not giving you nothing no more. It's like, oh, you, want, you just want to argue all day? Listen. Oh, uh, that, that's it. Uh, that no. Okay. The hammer if you want to go. Right. Hello. Mr. The servant of God, how you doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on, Express. Uh, Mr. Ham is up next. Mr. Ham, good. Mr. Ham. All right, he ain't saying nothing. All right, um, go ahead, Express. Go ahead. Oh, Mr. Servant of God, I get one question to ask you. Yeah, you can ask me. Yeah. Okay, the question is, in the New Testament, just like how you say you believe in polygamy, is there one apostle, any apostle or God sent man in the New Testament that had more than one wife? I don't know the answer to that because we don't know. And that's true. We don't know. But notice the questioning of that guy. He's asking him, you know, about the disciples. Is there any other disciples that have multiple wives? Why are these guys so concerned with multiple wives? Why is that on their mind? Here's the thing. This is a problem that I got with a lot of people. Listen, we're talking about thousands and thousands of years, man. Y'all folks be acting like the Bible contains everything that ever happened in the human race. No. I mean, why would the Bible have to be talking about everybody and all their wives? Who do you think somebody was sitting down there with a pen and a pad? Like, yeah, John had this many wives. Uh, you know, Peter had this many wives. That one had that many wives. I mean, come on, man. We got to stop this. So the whole time Rufus was there, all they were concerned with was polygyny. That's not going to make him get rid of his wives. You know what I mean? None of that's going to change anything. So why we keep talking about this? You get what I'm saying? So it's like, this is what debating does. When people debate, it's normally people that are set in their ways. Rufus asks him the question. He says, is there anything that I could do that could persuade you to believe in polygyny? He said, no. Okay, so why are we still talking about this? Because I'm not going to get rid of my wives. I'm not going to change. You're not going to change. Why are we talking? Why are we talking? What we're supposed to be focusing on are, are we getting to the kingdom? Are we getting into the kingdom? And the way the guys were talking is as if though they're guaranteed. And that's how Christians be. They talk as if though they already done got rights to the kingdom already. And, and it makes me laugh because nobody know Nobody know what they got, fam. You could be thinking you right and on point with the most high, and you end up going to the lake, bro. <laughs> That's why you got to get right. <laughs> Nobody know what it is. You could be living your life and thinking everything is good and go to the lake, bro, because you weren't really true. 
You get what I mean? The, the scripture clearly says we need to keep the commandments so that we can have right to the tree of life, to the, to, so that we can enter through the gates. What part of that don't we understand? So we got to keep them to the best of our abilities. Nobody's perfect. We strive for perfection. The Messiah said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father in heaven is perfect. So we got to try, we got to strive towards that perfection by the way we conduct ourselves and the way we live in this world to the best of our abilities. You know, there's a lot of work to be done. But the way the Christians were talking on that broadcast was as if though they know they're automatically going to heaven and they were looking at Rufus like, well, polygyny is going to keep you from going to heaven. It's going to make you go to hell. That's based, That's how they were talking. It's crazy. So you have this other guy uh, named Sale, whatever, Sale M Express. He's going to say some, some more craziness right now. Listen. A lot of them didn't even talk about their wives, so we don't know. We don't. We don't know. The New Testament mentioned Peter's wife. It don't talk about all. He asked us any of them. They don't talk about all of their wives. So we don't know. Right. It should have been end of discussion right there. This is what I mean about debates. It They force you into these public debates, and it's in front of an audience of people that are reprobates. And they all have, you know, they, they get joy out of this type of stuff. We don't know. If, 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 let me ask this. Is everybody question that's in here tonight about police? Does anybody have any other questions? I'm pretty sure that's all we want to ask because we're trying to again, understand brother, what's scripture. Again, I don't, I don't get into these fruitless. That, that's what it's not fruitless. Dow, There's no on, such brother. thing as fruitless. Hold on, brother. Hold on, brother. That's what Pastor Dow wants to get into. You don't hear me going around uh, challenging folks to debates for fruitless stuff. I don't. It's it's not fruitless because this this can send you to heaven or hell. It's very fruitful. Notice that this can send you to heaven or hell. Now notice Tony is on the other side just watching this. This is what I mean about fruitless debates how you're ambushed, the host is just sitting there like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's with it. You know what I'm saying? He know what it is. He ain't endorsing polygyny. Get what I mean? Because remember, um, Geno Jennings don't support polygyny. So, of course, his people that rock with him is going to roll with him. You see? But this is what I mean, how they bait you in a debate. They, they ambush you. The dude just said, hey, you're, you can go to hell over polygyny. Where in the Bible it says that, fam? This is what I mean. It's like you're just talking to robots at this point. Well, you know what? I don't believe that that is a thing that's going to send someone to heaven or hell. I believe a person can be polygynous. I believe they can be monolingualist. I believe they can be uh, abstinence. Okay, can you, me, can, can you give me... I can't give you anything. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Please, I cannot sir, give you anything. No. Because you, you already have, it. brother, brother, oh listen, listen. Can you, you let me finish my question? No. And then you I know why? No Hold on, brother. Y'all trying to make it frustrating. Because again, I'm not trying to make it frustrating. Y'all already have your belief system in place. And right. I'm not trying to change it. Mm. And my, you're not my changing mine. Sim no, no. I, listen, my simple question, just so I can never understand <laughs> where you come from, is can you give me Old Testament that lines up with New Testament? Uh, justifying polygamy, and if you're gonna do that, I can, again, audience. brother, brother, I can, but you're not gonna perceive it. Okay, I'll listen. No, go no, ahead. no, no, Scriptures. no, because oh, all you're gonna do is say, No, that's not what that means, no. and you're interpreting it wrong. How do you know? Again. That's exactly what they're gonna do. I'm glad that you said that. You caught on to the ambush, you caught on to the nonsense that they got you on. It's like this weird roller coaster that you're stuck on and you're trying to figure out how in the world did I get into this? Like I'm being attacked from all angles, questioned from all angles. I'm being told I'm going to go to hell for having more than one wife. Like that, it is just crazy. And they're asking you for scripture. Well, could you provide scripture for this? And you caught on. You said, no, no, because if I give you this, you're going to say, no, that's the wrong interpretation. That's exactly what they're going to do. This is why you don't waste your time debating. Why? Because everybody's set in their ways. Rufus believe what he believe. They believe what they believe. It's just like if you're a person, right? Let me say this publicly. If you're a person, you live the alternative lifestyle, right? I'm not bothering you. 
I'm not going to tell you, hey, the Bible says this. You need to repent of your sins or you're going to hell. I don't got nothing to say. You know why? Because I know what the book says. The Bible says that the Most High gave you over to a reprobate mind. So who am I to get in between that trying to intervene when the Most High said because you didn't like to retain him in your knowledge that you had a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient? He says you're filled with all sorts of different things, including debate. I'm not going to get in the middle of that to say, hey, uh, I'm trying to reach you with the gospel and I'm trying to preach to you to come out of your sins and I'm not doing nothing. You're going to stay right there. You know why? Because when you actually read those Bible verses, it says knowing the truth of God, they, they turn it into a lie. So you already know right from wrong. You just don't care. You get what I'm saying? So people know right from wrong and the most high know that. So he's not going to make you get involved trying to, I just leave people alone. So if you want to live the alternative, that's your prerogative. As long as you don't bring that around me, we good. You know what I mean? I could work around people that could be the alternative. You know what I'm saying? I could shoot music videos with people that are in the alternative. I could produce music for people that live the alternative. I could sell you a car if you live the alternative life. Just because that's the way you move does not mean I can't do business. That does not mean I can't work with you. Or uh, 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 if I'm a doctor, oh, you live the alternative? Oh, no, I can't, I, can't, I can't have that person as a patient. No, I can't discriminate in that particular regard. But when it comes to the scriptures now, if that's what you want to do and that's the life you choose, I let you do what you want to do. That's your problem. I don't care. Now, if you're a person that lived the alternative and you come to me and you're like, hey, um, I would like biblical understanding on how I can get free and do this and do that, then under those circumstances, then, then I can instruct you on, okay, this is what the Bible says. This is what you need to do to overcome your sins and X, Y, and Z. But other than that, if this is the life that you choose to be in, then you're going to go with that. Because remember what the Bible says, that he given you over to a reprobate mind. When you, when you have a mind like that, you're, you're out of control. You're on your own path. You don't care about nothing. And that's the same thing that I see when I see debates. You're, you're literally debating reprobates. They're set in their ways. And j just to be, listen, a person who is a reprobate is not just a person who lives the alternative lifestyle. You could be a heterosexual man and be reprobate. You're just stuck in your ways. Nobody could change you. You have a hard heart. Um, nobody could teach you nothing. I'm not getting involved in that. I just leave you alone. I, I, this is why I don't even make videos. You don't see me making videos about people that live the alternative life. Because when you make those kind of videos, you get in trouble. Because they got so much power within the world that as soon as you start talking about them, they say, oh, you're hating them. So I don't even talk about them. I don't even care. That's their problem. As long as you don't bring that mess around me, we good. Simple as that. Let's get back to the tapes. Brother, How do you brother, know? Hey, give, hey Tony. Give, hey, brother, give, Tony. Give hey, brother, Tony. Hey, brother, Tony. Yeah, man. Brother, on. Tony. I do appreciate you allowing me to come on. Like I said, when I first came on, all I heard out your mouth first was about the letter. Then I heard my name. I thought I had an invite. So that's what made me say send the link. You, you see? Rufus thought that you had some decent gentleman that respectfully wanted to interview him about, uh, you know, maybe something pertaining to the situation of him getting um, removed from the assembly. He probably figured, hey, I'm able to get the message out there. Maybe this particular platform have their best interests at heart. I can tell you personally, they didn't have your best interests at heart. It wasn't even about that. It was about ambushing you in order to make mockery. That's all this is about. I already know what it is. Let's go. Let's get back to the tape. Cool. That's what made, I'm just keeping it a buck with you. That's what made me say send the link. I'm not going to sit on this panel and go back and forth with guys that don't understand on the level that I understand. They just don't. They believe a certain way, and I don't care that they believe that way. I want them to keep believing like that. If that's what they believe, I got no issue with that. It ain't my job to change your mind. But you ain't changing mine either, and this will be fruitless. We can go back and forth, uh, scriptures, texts, 
uh, gospels. We can go back and forth. It ain't going to change anything. So I don't want to do that. I didn't come in here for that. He was reading excerpts from an email. I was answering those and I was answering the stuff that's been going on out here. I don't talk about a man's private situation because that's between Dow, Eric, and Nelly. I said the same thing on the one brothers that interviewed me last night channel. He, he, he just talked about the situation with Eric and them. He said, hey, I'm not involved. He was talking about the podcast with Rollo. Make sure you check out that one. That's day business. I live in Georgia. You know what? I think, Tony, you live in New York, right? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. I'm not coming to North Carolina to get in his business just because of what some person may say. If I'm not an eyewitness, I'm not testifying to what he got going on. I'm not doing it. And see, with that situation right there, Rufus said, I'm not testifying. See, I have to I have to give you some pushback on that again because it's like, you know, it's like we back at square one again. <laughs> we back at square one again because it's like you said, you're not testifying. So it's like, you know, about the situation. So, okay, matter of fact, I'm just gonna leave it alone. <laughs> I think I think we 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 dealt with that already. You know what I mean? I don't wanna keep dragging, you know, the same situation. But um, you know, the, the people are gonna have questions, you know what I mean? This is a very serious charge with P. Diddy Dial. Um this is very dangerous. Um, even if it's old, it doesn't matter how many years it is, sin is sin. And there have been many men in the Bible that have been sinning forever sinning for years, and then their sin finally came at them, you know? It ain't like, okay, somebody committed a sin today and the Most High judged them and put them to death. No, if you really study them scriptures, when men committed sin, they were in sin for a minute, and then judgment came. Get what I'm saying? If you even go back and you look at uh, the situation with David, right? You look at the sin he committed with that man, um, Uriah the Hittite. That didn't happen in one day. They didn't like, okay, he saw her, this happened, and, you know, everything just happened that quick. No, this been going on for a minute. The Most High was giving him time to repent, time to get right, and it just got out of hand, man, to the point where the man got a man killed in order to take his wife. This is an ongoing progression of sin. You see? So we're not talking about, like, oh, you committed a sin today. The Most High is upset with you. He's going to put you to death. No, we're talking about when you're in sin and you just stay there and you're unrepentant. You know what I mean? And you just refuse to change. That right there is bad, man. You know, that right there is horrible. And and that's where P. Diddy Dow is in right now. He refused to change. He don't want to repent. And he think that anybody that criticized him is of the devil. I'm doing the work of the most high right here, fam. You got to have a lot of energy to be doing this kind of work. You got to be with the spirit of the most high to do this kind of work. The average person cannot do this kind of work, fam. They can't. They don't have it in them to do this, man. I have the patience and the diligence and to be consistently doing this. That's the spirit of the most high moving. And he's trying to tell the world that P. Diddy dials in sin. He's not in a position to judge no one. He need to repent before it's too late. And he's giving him time to repent and he's being defiant and he's acting as though he's perfect. Like he can't do no wrong. No, he done a lot of wrong. And the most high is calling him to repent right now. And the longer he take, the more it's going to get bad for him. Trust and believe that straight way is never going to be the same again. I already done warned you. I already done told him. I said, look, fam, in my first video, I said, look, I don't want to do this, but I'm telling you, when I start to do this work, it's going to change your ministries. I already warn you. I'm keep telling you. I've been doing this for years. Things are going to start to happen. Things are going to start coming to pass. You're going to start to see things change. The whole straightway community is going to start falling apart. People are going to start leaving. It's going to be a lot of mess. Things are going to start happening left and right and left and right. Why? Because I'm releasing these words into the atmosphere, bringing the most high into this situation through these videos. And he's going to use these words. He's going to be using these videos to reach the world. That's how the most high does things in this earth. Listen, fam, a lot of y'all may not know this. But the Most High, listen to this, listen to this carefully. The Most High cannot do nothing in this earth unless his creation is in line with his scriptures. Y'all need to listen to that. Now, I'm not saying he cannot do what he want. What I'm saying is 
there are laws that are in place. You just can't come in and just do whatever. Can't do that. He said, if my people would humble themselves and pray, I'll heal the land. I'll hear from them, heal their land, and they'll be able to do what they need to do. So in order for things to really happen in this earth, we got to give him place. This is why the Bible says, give no place to the devil. We can either give the most high place or we could give the devil place. We can make the devil use us to kill people, kill, steal, destroy, or we can give God place to do wonderful things in the earth. So when it comes to stuff like judging false prophets, false teachers, wicked men of Yah, it takes men that's going to stand up in the front line to be used of the most high. All of you brothers that are on YouTube that might be talking about this particular situation, all you content creators that may be putting in work, maybe nobody don't even know you're doing this, but you got channels and you're talking about this situation from the heart, not for vain glory, but from the heart, not for vain glory, but from the heart, meaning this is something that's passionate to you and you're talking about it. You're allowing the most high to use you. So the more you do that, you're going to see the spirit move and he's going to give you utterance. He's going to give you the ability to think quick. He's going to make your brain sharp. He's going to make you sharp with the scriptures. He's going to give you the utterance and the boldness to do the job the way it needs to be done. Sometimes you're going to surprise yourself by your own work. And it's not you lest you boast. It's the spirit of the most high working through you. Do you understand that? That's why you also have to be humble and recognize that it's him who is giving you this ability to do this. Sometimes I'm talking and I'm just doing what I'm doing. My mouth is just flowing. I don't even know where the words is coming from. Because <laughs> I just keep running my mouth and running my mouth. And it's like, it just keeps flowing, 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 flowing. It's just nothing but truth is just flowing. That's not me trying to do that. There's a message that needs to be put out there. There's too many wickedness. There's too many wicked pastors in the world that are misleading people. You know, the Bible tells the pastors to feed the flock and not to lord over them. Dowl lord over the people and he needs to repent if he can kick a man out of his ministry that served 14 years right and you know okay rufus was with him for 14 years i mean let's just let's just be real let's just cut to the chase right if any of you would have been with dow or down with straightway you would defend him so let's just cut the middleman out let's just stop playing the games of well you know Rufus was a chair leader and all of this other stuff. Listen, if any of you were with Straightway, you would defend whoever the pastor is. Now, eventually, when things come out and you see a difference of opinion or some sort of spirit or some ungodliness and the most high wake you up, that's, that's when everything is going to change. And I think that that's what happened. Something happened. Something came up. Change happened. The leadership got threatened. Okay, we got to get rid of him. So the way he got rid of that fast says everything that I need to know. If he did it to him, he'll do it to me. He'll do it to you. All you got to do is speak against him and do anything that's negative. He'll get rid of you. That's a bad look, you know? But the same way I promoted him, the same way I shouted him out, the same way other brothers shouted him out because we thought he was legit. So... Um, we just can't say that, oh, Rufus is a cheerleader. I take blame in that as well because I saluted him. I, I gave him praise too because I thought he was a man of Yah. I thought he was true. A lot of you brothers, you promoted his channel because why? You thought he was true. You thought he was a man of the most high. You thought he was doing the right thing. But then when everything started coming out and you started seeing the truth, what, what are you to do? Sit there and just... Be some sort of cheerleader? No, can't do that. It's time to make the truth be known. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I get people sending me DM messages like, yo, Ringo, the other day you were promoting him. You were a hypocrite. How am I a hypocrite? That don't make me make no sense. If one minute a person seemed one way and you didn't see the signs of what was going on, what are you to do? How many of you ever had people in your life that was good one minute, you thought they were good, Next minute, y'all had a falling out. The truth came out. Now, all of a sudden, now it's like, wow, what could you do about that? Nothing. There's nothing you could do. You, you learn, you change, you grow. It's just that simple. And that's the same thing in this situation. I have to take personal responsibility 
for my part. So there's a lot of people that probably went to Dow just because they saw me salute him. You had probably had thousands of people that subscribe because I said, hey, support his channel. And they went over there and did that. So then when they see these videos now, they're like, yo, what's going on, fam? Like, what happened? What went wrong? Well, if you paid attention to the videos, you would know what went wrong. I can't explain everything to you. Go watch the videos. This is the 13th video. The 13th video regarding this topic. And when I do my video streams, I stream. Not for no one hour, two hour, three hours. Sometimes we at six hours, seven, nine hour live streams because I got a lot to say. Can't say all of these things in five minutes. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Anybody that was following Dow at some point was praising him, uh, lifting him up, and it put him to the point where he believed he's a king. And uh, I, I don't know the other brother's name. Um, if anybody know, I don't know if Rallo's still in the building. But if any of you guys have the other brother that was cooking with the scriptures during the live stream, do y'all have his channel name so I could put his channel out there so people could see what channel he got? Because I always like to make sure I shout people out. I don't, I don't want to keep saying his name. And I don't even know his name. Like, you know, like I'm saying the brother this, the brother that. I don't even know. I don't got his name. But I seen him. He was on Rallo's um, show. Um, another guy, he was cooking with the scriptures. Um, I don't know if Rallo's still around. If he know his name. But um, let me see. Let me see. What in the world's his name, man? I guess I'll get it another time. But I remember I seen the the thing. I could always go. Let me see. Let me see if I could do this. Hold on. Let me go look for Rallo. Rallo. Okay. Okay, where is the video? All right, let me pause this. Pause that music so it don't interfere. Okay. All right, so that's the brother channel there. Heck, how could I do this? Let me see. All right. All right. So, because on that panel, you had a, a full house. Mark the Messenger. You had New Breed. You had a lot of brothers that were there. All right. Let me take this off. And put the music back in. Okay, where we at? All right. Um... This brother was cooking on the show. So I want to make sure that y'all know who he is. That's uh, Brother Chara Taza, I believe the name is. Chara Taza. I'm not, my apologies to the brother if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. But he was cooking. He was cooking on the show. He was saying a lot of um things that as men we supposed to be focusing on and he mentioned that how we the one that create these kind of men with our words we lift them up we created a golden calf similar to what the children of israel did right after they got the commandments they were down there creating a golden calf looking for a new god to worship this is what we did so he was right and um there were some rebukes and um, I took some of those rebukes as well, you know, so to that to that brother, um, there's certain things you said that, you know, <laughs> I got hit too. You know, I got I got, got caught in the crossfire. <laughs> you know, what I mean, there was some yeah, there was some things that he said that, you know, I had to say, you know what, he's right. You know, what I mean, because I'm partly responsible because I was big enough past the dial too you know what i mean so i can humble myself you know what i mean i'm not one that hide i don't do that i can humble myself if i'm wrong about something 
but it's like it's one of them type of situations where it's like you got to go through it in order to learn. Oh, there's a lot of people that was looking at this man as of though he's on point. So it's kind of like very disappointing. A lot of brothers was disappointed to see this type of stuff, you know. So, um, yeah, I just wanted y'all to know who 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 that brother is. You know, what I mean, he got a YouTube channel in case you're. Um, and if you're on the Ringo TV Raw, you cannot see. If you're on the Ringo TV Raw channel, remember, we're simultaneously streaming on the Ringo TV Reactions channel. So the things that I'm talking about, in order for you to see it, you would have to also be viewing the other platform as well. But um, just search his name in the search box on YouTube and you'll be able to find his channel. And, you know, what I'm saying if you like his content, you know, support his work. Um, he pulled up on Rallo's show. Rallo have a way of attracting a lot of content creators. You know what I mean? Um and he he spoke a lot of truth towards the end he was he was cooking and i'm glad nobody interrupted i'm so glad nobody interrupted when he was talking and this is what i mean how we all have to listen to one another and learn from one another and then new breed um start sharing his thoughts regarding community and let me just talk about that a little bit too just because the situation with Dow happened doesn't mean that we should um, not trust one another or um, I guess not want to be a part of any sort of communal type endeavor or, or, or um, like building a community or like look at it like, man, I don't want to be a part of that. I mean, I had my words to say at the same time. I'm all for building community. It just had to be done the right way. So New Breed gave a speech about it. And I hope that the brothers actually listen. Because truthfully speaking, with the influence that we have, um, if we really, really put our minds together, we're able to really do something great. We really can. So we can't let a bad situation um i guess discourage us from it now of course beginnings are always small i know um there's a lot of things that we could do you know what i mean even new breed talked about how he had ordered a i think it's a yurnik or something along them lines from alibaba and um I took a look. I took a look at what those things are. I was wondering, like, what is that? You know what I mean? And I took a look and I see what it is. I, I know how much it costs. And, you know, you have to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. It, it ain't like <laughs> uh, houses are built up. You know, It don't work like that. You know what I mean? You got land. You have to start somewhere. And I was kind of looking on AliExpress, not AliExpress, Alibaba. You can literally get a small house literally built up for five grand. I'm talking about for five grand. I'm talking about with bedrooms and everything. Like it's not like no house house modern, but it's sort of like a house that is on the land where you're able to be at while development is going. Are y'all understanding? So it's something for all of us brothers to really consider. You get what I'm saying? If we really come to the round table, right? And have these conversations amongst men that want to see progress and kind of invest into this with, you know, understanding there's opportunities and different things. Man, we could do a lot of great things. We can. But it takes us being unified. And this is something that um, this is something that the brother was talking about. Um, Charataza, I believe his name is. He was talking about that. And New Breed was talking about that too. And although we may not all know each other personally, in spirit, we do. You know, like 
if you're a brother and you're in the truth, in spirit, we know each other. We do. In the flesh, we may not. That's why we have to argue a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and whatnot. You got to. You got to argue a little bit and chop it up. That's where you kind of get familiar with one another. Like, okay, I understand his personality. Yo, Ringo is always upset. He's pissed off with every... No, 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 no. Nah, fam. Nah, 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 nah. That's, that's not how Ringo is, bro. I know how he is. So hold up. He's not really like that? Nah, nah. That's not how he is. He's cool. He's cool. He just... That's how he is. That's his personality. Oh, I thought he was pissed with everybody. Nah, 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 nah. Yo, why new breed keep acting like that? He got a problem with me? Nah. <laughs> Bro, he don't got no problem with you, man. He's just passionate about what he believes. That's how he is, man. That, that's how he is. You get what I mean? So once you start learning how people are in terms of their personality, you won't get offended so fast. Get it? Because you'll understand that that's how that brother is. That's his personality. He's just a little outspoken. You know what I mean? It's like, if you in New York, there's a certain lingo, how people talk, how people, you'll think people beefing with you. You know what I mean? And it's not. That's just how they talk. You get it? So you just have to know the politics, have to know the culture, and 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 adapt to how people move. So in order to do that, you gotta you gotta interact with people. The problem with us as a nation of people, and I'm talking about the Israelites and you know, uh, brothers and, and sisters that kind of, you know, follow the most high, or even if you don't follow the most high, a lot of times we just don't, we don't interact with one another enough to even know about each other in order to appreciate one another. So we're always suspicious. Like, yeah, he's up to no good. <laughs> we don't trust nobody. We're trained not to trust each other. That's how it is in the black community. We're literally trained. They, listen, if I was to ask you, who do you trust more? The other nations or your own people? I guarantee you a lot of black folk would be like the other nations. <laughs> you would trust them more. And that's crazy because <laughs> why would you? <laughs> but in all truth, you would because you're trained to trust them. And you're trained to not trust your own people. So if if a black man says, hey, we working on building a community, you'll be like, nah. <laughs> but if a white man came up and said, hey, guys, my name is Todd Willinson. And uh, I just wanted to come to you today to talk about this great development we have planned. <laughs> we have this great community. That's right. And uh, we have about a good 245 acres of land. <laughs> what we're asking for is for everyone to contribute towards the gold. We set up a GoFundMe and our goal is approximately $5 million. <laughs> Oop, I believe it's $10 million. <laughs> I thank you all for your support and I appreciate everyone to have a large turnout for this event. You guys would start donating, cash apps, super chats. You'll be given everything, Vimo, everything. If the white man said that he have an initiative to build a community, you, you're ready to go. But if Tyrone came up there, <laughs> hey, yo, what up, bro? Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm working on this initiative to... Uh, you know, we're going to build this land. We're going to, you know, get some acres. We're going to build nothing but property. Uh, I need y'all to support. You know, I set up a GoFundMe for about $10 million. That's the goal. <laughs> y'all ain't supporting nothing. <laughs> I'm serious. I know us-ins, man. That's how we do it, man. We won't support. And you're wondering why the white man got all these communities. You wondering why they got, listen, you got out in North Carolina, they building houses every day, communities. There's so much land out there 
They build in communities, hundreds of houses, fam. Hundreds. They throwing these things up every day. You know what I mean? Got a lot of rich cats out there buying up land, building up houses, and they renting all them houses out, man. They renting all of them out. They, technically speaking, they don't even want you to own a house no more. They're literally encouraging you just to get a house to rent, to have the house experience. In other words, don't waste your time buying it. Just rent for the rest of your life. They don't want you to buy a house no more. They want to rent. They want you to rent for the rest of your life. So if we have opportunity to build, that's a whole different ball game, man. Let me finish up with what they were talking about and then my, do my final words. I'm not an eyewitness and I'm not going to repeat hearsay. That ain't what I'm doing. So again, if that's the stuff y'all want to talk about, like I said, I ain't ducking no smoke. I know straight way under fire right now. I'm no longer a part of straight way. I've been put out and I'm not here to defend them, but I'm also not here to bash them. I'm just not. At the end of the day, I feel like the community deserves to know the truth. So those that's been asking, I ain't ducking no smoke and I'm answering. If all y'all want to do is talk about your beliefs on polygyny, you can do that with somebody else. Now, listen to this section here. Now, Roof has already done shared his piece. It is what it is. But now watch how Tony responds. It's almost like he's oblivious to what's going on. And that's the truth. He really don't care. Check it out. You, you said that the, the community deserves to hear the truth. What, what is it that you're talking about? Well, you understand. You know what happened with me, right? Listen. Uh, I heard some stuff that you was put out after 14 years, but... You see what I mean? He just asked, did you hear what happened to me? And he says, well, you know, I heard some stuff, you know. <laughs> he don't even know what's going on. That's how you know you've been ambushed. They don't care. They don't care. They're not there to find out. They don't really care. Matter of fact, they're happy. Listen, the only reason why everybody's going hard in the paint with these videos is because they watching my videos. They watching me going in on straightway. They're like, yo, we got to get it. We got to be a part of this, man. Because remember, this whole thing about Dow and his divorce, it's not new. It's not it's not him. It's not new about him. I mean, Dow, not divorce, the 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 adulterous marriage that he have. This is not new. You get what I'm saying? This didn't just happen yesterday. You had others that talked about this type of stuff years ago, and then it went dormant. It just went hidden, and it resurfaced again. So now he's get he's taking heat for this situation and because I'm on the case now. Others already exposed this, right? Eric already responded about this. But the videos didn't really reach the world the way it need to. So now that I'm getting, catching understanding of what's going on, this is my line of work. I don't play around with this stuff. Fam, I made nearly a thousand videos about Creflo Dollar. Probably a thousand videos about T.D. Jakes. I expose these pastors every day, every single day, 20 videos a day. Cooking them for dinner. Every pastor you know. Every pulpit pimp, every wolf, every man that claim he a prophet, I expose them all daily, every day, daily, 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 expose, expose, expose. Every video they made, I'm reviewing a video. False doctrine, false teaching, lies, taking scripture out of context, cooking these men. They all know who I am. Creflo Dollar know who I am. T.D. Snakes know who I am. Benny Sin know who I am. Jesse Duplantis know who I am. Uh, 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 all of them. Dr. Leroy Tamsin, he know who I am. All of them. Joyce Maya, they all know who I am. Because I expose all of them. You understand? What's the other woman um, that had the husband that we found out he was at the gay club? Um, uh, 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 what's her name, man? The woman with the blonde hair, I believe her name is. The woman with the blonde hair. Um, and the husband was at the gay club. Y'all remember that, that woman? Is it Paula White? I'm not sure. Paula White? Yeah, Paula White. Yeah, that's her name. I exposed her a million times. Paula White. I believe it's her, right? I believe that was her husband. Paula White. I think it was Paula White. Her husband, he got caught at the gay bar. 
Paula White's husband got caught with a man at the gay club, guys. I exposed this years ago. That's right. Somebody was walking by. They recorded. He was there talking with his lover. They recorded it. They uploaded it to YouTube. I grabbed the tapes. I said, wait a minute. That's so-and-so's husband. Dude was out there with his lover, fam. On tape. There was no way to, 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 get, to get around that. And they, their marriage ended up falling apart. Because of that situation. He got exposed. The Most High dealt with him. Exposed him viciously. You had many other pastors. Prominent leaders, fam, that I exposed. Men that had a wife and children. But the whole time, guess what? He was into men the whole time. You had about three preachers that I had to expose that everybody loved, everybody looked up to. I brung the tapes and I exposed these pastors so much that they end up coming into the public to repent, to say yes. And these guys confessed in front of their church that they were dealing with men the whole time on the low. I got all the classic tapes. One particular pastor, he was dealing with the men in the church. Real messy stuff, fam. He was posing. You would never think the guy was living the alternative because when you look at him, as soon as you see him, you see, you see a masculine leader, a strong man. You, as soon as you look at him, okay, he's a man's man. There's no way that he is doing this. But he was. Then you have the whole thing with Eddie Long. Y'all remember that? Well, who, who do you think was at the forefront? Who do you think that was at the forefront of exposing him? Hello. Yeah, that's right. When he was messing with the boys in the churches, putting meat inside the men, the young boys in the church. Y'all remember that? Then I warn him. Those of you that have been following the videos all them years, then I warned Eddie Long in the videos. If you've been watching the videos, then I warned him. That was the most high. The most high was warning Eddie Long from back in the day. We, we have this all on camera. I made a thousand videos about the case. And I said, the most high going to deal with him. He's going to take him out. See, we hear this type of stuff. Oh, the most high going to take you out. The reason why it's serious is because you're a pastor. You're a man that's supposed to know better. And you're willfully misleading the people. Remember, Eddie Long was like this, used to wear the muscle shirts. And then what happened? In like a course of a few months, your boy got ultra skinny, ultra skinny, literally shriveled up. I don't know what the most high hit him with. It was bad. That man got ultra skinny, fam. He used to be like this, wearing the muscle shirts. Y'all remember? He start withering away, fam, till he's out of here. Why? Sin. These pastors and these leaders, the most high would let you sit in your sin for 20 years, giving you time to repent. Why do you think we have time? Why do you think we are born and then there's a time and then we die? You know why? For us to get the opportunity to repent. We got time. So you could be a pastor and be living in sin for 10 years. And the Most High been dealing with you for 10 years to repent. But you don't want to. And then eventually, your number comes up. He's looking at your file. Okay. It's time to take you out, man. You don't want to repent. You prospered. You got fat. You made a lot of money. You ain't going to repent? No? Okay take you out i exposed creflo dollar years ago years ago and i warned everybody he's a false prophet false teacher i told you the tithing doctrine is false i warned you about it what did what did uh creflo dollar do a year or so ago what did he do coming to the public what did he say hey everybody all my teachings and my videos on tithing throw it away why it's not biblical He 
he he said he he said that he changed his heart regarding tithing, but still he don't. He haven't really repented from tithing. And I'm talking about Creflo Dollar. He said, yes, tithing based on, um, you know, bring you all the tithes to the storehouse, all of that. Yeah. Remember, Creflo Dollar is the one who said that if he had it his way, he would kill people in the church if they didn't tithe. He flipped it and said, well, yeah, you don't got to tithe, but God want you to still be a giver of offerings and everything else. <laughs> so if your heart is led, he's still trying to pull the same game. You know? And remember, P. Diddy Dowell believes in tithing. I did my research. He believes in that, that stuff, fam. He even said that recently in the video where he was judging Rufus. Let me tell you something. The video where he brung all of those witnesses talking about uh, Rufus was taking all the money and Rufus did this. In that video, he was telling the people to make sure that you tithe. And then he said, I'm a Christian now. It's in the video. That video didn't do justice because in that video, he exposed himself. He, he tried to expose Rufus by saying Rufus was taking all the money, but Dahl was also taking all the money too. So if you're going to expose him, you got to expose you. That man said that he gave Dowell his whole paycheck. How many of you brothers, at the sound of my voice, would go to your nine to five, uh, uh, work and work and work, and then all of a sudden now, you giving the pastor your whole check? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Your whole check? Fam, when I was on a nine to five and it came around time to get our check, man, Yo, that was the best time. <laughs> See, I, I don't forget. I don't forget, fam. When it was payday, fam, I ain't giving you my check. <laughs> I got bills to pay, fam. And y'all know how it is. Before you even get your paycheck, your money is already gone. <laughs> y'all remember that? As soon as you get your paycheck, it's already gone because you got to pay the bills. <laughs> you got to pay your rent. You know what I mean? Some of you, it take two of your checks to pay your rent. <laughs> Can I get a witness? It takes two of your checks, bro. But the pastor saying, give me your whole check. Nah, man. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that, fam. Because what Dow was doing, he was projecting what he's currently doing on, on Rufus. And... This is why I was saying that when it comes to the Rufus situation, you're going to catch smoke in this ordeal. You're going to catch smoke because Dow set it up that way. That's why he made you a pastor. So that when the time come, you take the smoke, he could cast the blame on you and say the reason why X, Y, and Z happen is because you. And what that does, it elevates him to God's status. I've seen this happen in churches already. Matter of fact, even, even this brother, he said the same thing. He said he's seen all this corruption already. This ain't nothing new. It's the same spirit. He said it himself. He said he's seen this as well. I, I, I don't know this brother's background, but um, I believe Kabar Gabar knows his background, but... He kind of recognized him and whatnot. See, that's the thing. In these streets, we recognize one another because we all been putting in work for the most high over the years. And the spirit brought this brother to Rollo's page. That's the most high's work. So this is nothing new. You know, this is nothing new when it comes to these kind of spirits that, that are in these churches they do these things and then somebody end up taking the heat. So that was his plan. Blame Rufus for everything that's going wrong. And now that elevates P. Diddy Dow to God status. In other words, hey, I'm the God here. Y'all going to listen to me. It was that guy's fault. He did it. And in the process of this, while he's trying to crucify Rufus, 
the most high made me see P. Diddy Dial's adultery. And I turned the heat up on it to the point where it's almost like we got off the whole subject of Rufus getting kicked out the church. And now the focus is Dial's adultery. You see how the most high work? In other words, while you're doing evil, he focused the mirrors on you. Now the people watching you now. And that's what's happening. You know? Um, I know, I know Gabar's background. I know Gabar's background that he was with GOCC. Back in the day, back in the day, GOCC was good. In today's day, they went down another path. You know, um, credit to, um, the brother, I believe his name is Ricard, I believe his name is, you know. I got to give him credit because back in the day, I learned. I learned from him. You know what I mean? I did learn from him. I can't lie. I learned a lot from him. They were different back in the day. They went down another path. I don't know what's going on. Every man takes a different path. They're against polygyny. They're against this. They're against that. But I still got to give credit where credit is due. I learned a lot from different brothers. You know? And the sad thing is that you have a lot of guys that been in these streets putting in the work for the most high. And to me, the most credible that I would say from back in the day would be GOCC. Back in the day, in my opinion, some of you might say, well, nah, it was GMS or it was, you know, ISUIP or it was this one. To me, it was GOCC. Because they had a balance of the truth. It was more balanced. It wasn't sort of like the white man is the devil and just going after white people and hating and all that other stuff. They, they came from a different angle. And to me, the truth was more easy to receive. You know what I mean? Not really easy. It was more balanced. It didn't have that anger to it. You get it? So I don't know where they, they went with their message, but... Hey, it is what it is. Every man is on his own path. I'm just on my path. I don't, I'm not putting no man above the Messiah. You know? Because every man got to gotta break off from the tree and, and grow his own roots to develop himself. Because you never know what the Most High have planned for you. Like if Rufus separate from P. Diddy Dow, you don't know what his purpose is. That's for him to figure out. But at the same time, with these videos, with the rebukes, with the instructions, with the questions, with the criticism, all of this type of stuff, what that stuff is supposed to do is sharpen a person to develop and go where they're supposed to go and do what they're supposed to do. Because you never know what your purpose is. <laughs> your purpose is to do this work. But at the same time, the people got to see you. And see that you're not afraid. Meaning you're not afraid of criticism. You're not afraid of real talk. You can stand your ground. Um, not debate. But stand, your, stand on your own. And acknowledge things. You know what I mean? Humble yourself when it needs to be humble. Be bold when it's time to be bold. Uh, fall back when it's time to fall back. You know? Adjust. To some people, they don't know how to do that. Some people are not humble. You can't even talk to them. You can't. They don't humble themselves. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. You know? There's no middle, middle ground. It's like, right is right, wrong is wrong. Which one? You know? And in this situation, I am very passionate about this subject matter concerning Dao. And the revealing of the adultery. I'm very passionate about this. Some of y'all probably like, could you please move on to another subject? No, you can move on to another channel. I'm going to talk about this because people are interested. 
you know, and I'm making a lot of key points and it's about making sure that the people have the information they need because just like how I was at one point promoting P Diddy Dow's channel, promoting him to you, you folks, some of y'all probably like what's going on again, watch all the videos. We can't be playing these little games of what's going on, what happened. Go watch the videos. You know what I mean? I can't explain all of this. The Most High uses me right now to do this work. I can't explain why this is that and why does that. Ever since the Rufus situation popped off, it's been a domino effect. And it shook up the Israelite community. All the people on, listen, all the brothers know about this story. All the camps know about this story. All the brothers on the street corners know about this story. Even one other brother that's on the street corners, I saluted him in one of my videos. I'm, I saluted the brother. <laughs> I went back and I looked at his video, brother disrespecting my locks. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> y'all remember that video when I was talking about there was a brother on the street and he was preaching and he mentioned my name. I saluted him in one of my videos. Y'all remember that? Next minute, I said, let me go back and watch his video, see him, you know, work, do the work of the most high. He started disrespecting my locks, talking about, oh, you know, boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Locks is just for the Nazarites. And I'm like, my goodness, bro. Like the religion, man. It's like, it just don't, it don't seem to change with us as men. And this is why we can't get along, man. It's crazy, man. So if a man have long locks, he's a problem. What about if a man is bald? Then he has a problem too. So if a man is bald, is that like, is that a problem? Remember the Bible says, don't cut this and don't cut that. Don't round the corners of your hair and your head and X, Y, and Z. So now what? We're going to get scripture for that too. Come on now. This is crazy. Let me finish up. This is about two more minutes of this. Nothing too solid. Yeah, I, Pastor Dow trumped the Bible, trumped the way we do things at Straightway, and had me put out of the ministry. Never went before the saints, never went before a full ecclesiastical council. He did some hand-picked stuff. It was just some shady stuff. So the, the people of the community, the Hebrew community, were pretty upset about it, very upset about it. Because it's like, why did this man get treated the way he got treated after being with you for 14 years and help you build all these communities. Because again, when I came to Straightway, they didn't have any communities, just Straightway. I was the first established community, Straightway, Georgia, out of Straightway back in 2011. And we've pretty much averaged a community a year since then, because it's 2024 and we got 14, they got 14 communities now. I was very vital in developing and getting those communities started. So a lot of saints wanted to know what really happened. They never let me go before the people. Straightway presented a case out there when they had their meetings without me being there, but they never let me go before the people. So a lot of the people wanted to hear my side of the story. That's what I was talking about. Okay, cool. And that's exactly what took place. That was one of the things that triggered everyone in the Israelite community, even the Christian community, because you have Christians. And here's the thing. Whether you're a Christian, Israelite, we're supposed to be following the Messiah, man. Like, we gotta, we really gotta stop this, man. This, this madness is, is sick. Once we heard this story, it got everybody's attention. Because in my mind, once this happened, I was pissed. Because I didn't even know what was going on. When I first heard about the situation, um... I didn't even know, right? I was just doing my regular videos. And you know how when you're just going through the algorithm, you get recommended a video. I see a video where Dow is talking. He's like, yeah, get off my porch. Boom, boom, boom. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, who is he talking about, man? I don't know. Who cares? I don't care about that. Then he made another video. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And then he mentioned the names. And I'm like, what? Hold up. Rufus? Nah, say it ain't so. So I go to Rufus' channel. I'm searching for videos. I see him and um, uh, what's the other guy? I forgot the name. Another brother. Um, 
I believe it's another elder, I believe. Um, I forgot the name. It's not that important, but I see them in a video talking about the situation. So I'm listening to the video and I'm shaking my head because I'm like, what? Nah. So I, I'm chopping it up behind the scenes with some of the brothers. I'm like, yo, did you see what happened? Nah, what happened? I'm like, yo, Pastor Dow kicked so-and-so and so out the camp because of some differences or whatever the case is, but the way he did it, he didn't go before the congregation. They were supposed to handle it based on scriptures and they didn't handle it that way. In other words, uh, it's like if Dow just said, look, forget handling it by the procedures. I'm going to vote. We getting him out of here. And that was it. So if a man put in 14 years, first of all, I would be pissed off. I'll be ready to fight. I'm just letting you know me, I'm fighting. I don't care. Call the cops. I'm fighting. We're going to fight. You understand? I'm throwing hands. I don't care. That's me. You understand? Because if I put 14 years in, and you're just going to come through and say, yo, you out of here. What? First of all, you disrespected me. So we throwing hands. And we're going to get that on tape. I don't care if I get arrested. I'm going to handle you. Because you violating. That's 14 years of my life. You just throwing it away? All them years I've been here doing this, all them years I've been supporting you, bigging you up, doing this, putting in all my time, leaving my family, doing this and that. Erased? Nah. It ain't going to go down like that. So for me to see that, I was pissed off because I'm promoting this brother's channel. I'm telling my subscribers, hey, yo, go subscribe to Pastor Dow, one of the best pastors, one of this, one of that. Man, putting the work of the most high, building communities, this one. And you know how that pissed me off? That pissed me the fuck off. You understand? Because when I saw what happened to that brother, I looked at it that that can happen to me. That can happen to me. If he did that to that man who served 14 years, 14 years of his life, fam, that's a long time. And established one of the first communities. Like I said, we throwing hands. We fighting, bro. Over that situation, we fighting. As soon as you come on the land, we fighting. I'm going to punch you in your face. We going to fight over this one. Call the cops. Matter of fact, we supposed to fight like men. Forget the cops. We going we gonna to hash this thing out. Because that was disrespectful. The video that he made, get off my front porch, X, Y, and Z. Fam, I helped build the porch. What are you, what are you talking about? Stop making videos on my front porch and you put it on camera disrespecting me in the public. We going to see each other. And that would have been it. Yeah, I'm going to leave, but we're going to fight first. We're going to fight. I don't care. It's just the principle of it. 14 years. All right, cool. And if anybody get in, my people here going to be there to take care. Bring all y'all guns. Do whatever y'all got to do. We fighting. That's just going to be the way it's going to be. Because the way they did him was dirty. They did him dirty. That's why everybody was upset. Because we were looking at straightway as a community that had the examples of family, peace, the most high. Come to find out, it's not even that. It's not that. It's a community where it's controlled, where the people don't, the people are under control. The pastor is the boss. I'm hearing word. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm hearing. That Pastor P. Diddy Dow is currently building a 13, correct me if I'm wrong. 1,300 square foot house. 1,300. This is what I'm hearing now. <laughs> I'm hearing this. 13, wait, 13,000? 13,000 square foot, I believe it is. 13,000. Because 1,300 is pretty small. <laughs> A decent... A decent house would be around like uh, 55, 
square feet or whatever the case is, then that yeah, that would be, you know, that's decent. Thirteen thousand, bam, that's a mansion. That's a palace. So basically, Pastor P Diddy Dow is doing the same thing like Creflo. At Straightway, he's living like a king, while everyone else is in a tent. That's bad, man. That's real bad, y'all. Uh, Rufus just put it, 13,000 square foot home. Man. Yeah, 5,500 square feet is a mini mansion. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why I said, for me, what's decent is like 55, you know, square feet, you know. I did my little calculations. That's good enough. Like, I'm good with that. With that, I'm happy. I'm all right. But 13,000? What? Say it ain't so. I'm going to have to Google search this one. I'm going to have to Google search this, fam. I'm on, I'm on Google search. I'm going to look at the aerial map. Because, you know, the aerial map updates everything. I'm still, listen, I'm still trying to figure out the technology that they use. <laughs> I don't know what kind of satellites they use in fam. Have you ever thought about how amazing that is? How Google map is able to take you on a tour around the world. Like How? What kind of technology is that, bro? Somebody said it's on Google Maps. You can see it. Say it ain't so. <laughs> say it ain't so, fam. Please say it ain't so. Please say it ain't so. If, if anybody have the info, just send it to me at Ringo TV Raw. So we can talk about that, too. Because I'm trying to figure this out. The pastor has a 13,000 square foot house in the making while the people are in tents and pissing in buckets. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the video from somebody named Hayes. If you're watching the video, if you catch the replay, I'm still waiting for your video, sir. You said that you have a video that uh, you're going to make. I'm waiting for that video. We need that tape. Um, again, if you have like the Google map of like the link because maybe I might search something wrong but uh I got the address so I can always search that address and see whatever the case is but if anybody got that info you know it is what it is you know this is sad man 13,000 square foot yo you know what's that man That's a palace, man. That's a palace. Guys, I don't think you understand. Listen, let me shut the music off for a second. Listen, 13,000 square foot. Do you understand? 13,000 square foot. You understand? Think of a square. 13,000 square. One foot. 12 inches. 13,000 feet. Square. Think about that. <laughs> Bam. If that's true, I'm talking about it. Because I want to know how is it that he's putting that together for himself. So that's where all the wives are going to be in. <laughs> Man, yo, this is crazy, bro. No, don't tell me you young brothers are out there building that house for him so that he can move in 
and then y'all not getting y'all houses built. Like, this is what I'm saying, bro. Like, all is construction, but it's him benefiting. Y'all not benefiting. That's crazy, man. That's absolutely crazy. You know? Let's get back to this tape. Understandable, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you said, man, I mean, on on your perspective, you said it's deep and whatnot, and us on the outside looking in, whatever the case may be. It, it is. I'm just being honest about that, man. I, I'm, I told you, I'm actually taking it on the chin because most people in the Hebrew community want me to just flat out say, I believe God is in adultery. And I tell them, well, that was the scripture, show you go with that. That's what I say. That's how it appears. But I know the behind the scenes thing, because again, I, I've said this publicly and I'll keep saying it. Pastor Dow, Nelly, nor Eric Gonzalez, her ex-husband, none of them came to me. I was an elder in the ministry. They all could have came to me about this. None of them did. They didn't get me involved in their affair. So I didn't get involved. You see what I'm saying? Did other people that had involvement with one of those three come to me. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I know about that they are not none of those three. I've heard this for 10 years, y'all. This stuff started 10 years ago with that. This ain't new. This stuff started in 2013, 14. They talked about it for 10 years. None of them three have ever put that information out there. So I'm not. Okay, so we got that there. Um, I'm not going to continue to go back and forth with the um, situation with um, Rufus regarding his um, situation. We already done chopped that up in this video already, so I'm not going to continue to keep on dragging that situation. He shared his thoughts. Um, that's that on that. Um, um, what I'm going to do is just focus on the fact of uh, P. Diddy Dow's adultery and... Um, I'm not done reviewing Rollo's tapes because there's a lot of stuff in those tapes. The it was a it was definitely uh an epic live stream, one of Rollo's um best work. You know what I mean? Definitely. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a lot in that video. So I suggest y'all check it out. You know what I mean? Go to Floridine Rollo, let's go. And um, you can check out that full live stream that he did. Um, you had a lot of heavy hitters on there. A lot of content creators was up on there um, sharing their thoughts about it. It was a full house. Um, Eric was there. He was sharing his testimony, his parts of whatever. Rufus was sharing um, his situation. I got to um, check out that parts too to kind of review anything that is necessary. I only wanted to talk about that particular clip because I wanted to address the situation with Dial and the adultery and all that other stuff. Um, his position is what it is. So from here forward, I'm just going to leave that alone. I already done shared my thoughts. I already put my info out there and what I believe on it. If he don't want to say this, he don't want to say that. I'm not touching that no more because I already addressed it in this video. All I'm my all I'm here to do is test spirits challenge people, uh, criticize, um, speak truth, and try to see what people are going to say in response to whatever it is. That way it can bring other brothers to the, to the forefront so they could chop it up and kind of clear up whatever differences they have so that, okay, all right, we got all the issues out of the way. All right, everybody cool? All right, cool. We, we good? All right, all right, all right cool. That way we, we're not looking like we crazy. You know what I mean? Because I'm getting called a hypocrite behind the scenes. Listen, y'all don't see the DMs that I get. I get people calling me hypocrite. Who are you? You trying to expose him. You was bigging him up. So, hey, the same criticism or uh, uh, pushback that Rufus might get from people in the comments or wherever the, ca the case is, I get that in the comments too. Maybe not as severe as his, but, you know. <laughs> uh, I get my criticism, and I get people that hit me up via Instagram calling me a hypocrite, saying that I'm this, I'm that. I'm like, look, believe whatever you want to believe. My job is to speak the truth. You know what I mean? If somebody turned out to do something crazy, what could I do? You know what I mean? Any one of us could get caught up in some sort of mess. I could be doing something today. Next minute something happened. I'm on the news. You know, most high forbid. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I could be on the news. 
something can happen, and then y'all look at me like I'm crazy. Oh, Ringo did this. He got arrested. Now everybody's talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Rollo make a video. I know the first one that's going to make a video is Reg the Bad Guy. <laughs> Reg the Bad Guy. Shout out to Reg the Bad Guy. <laughs> Reg the bad guy is uh, the guy that anytime any sort of drama happened in these YouTube streets, I don't know how he find out about it, <laughs> but he always have a video about what's going on. You know what I mean? He, so he, if anything go down, he's going to expose what it is. And he does it in a comedian way. He probably is not, he probably not trying to do it to be funny, but you know, the way he do his videos, it will make you laugh. You will bust out laughing. Um, there's one particular video he made. I'm not going to talk about the video. <laughs> but I bust out laughing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I bust out laughing. And it's really, really funny, fam. But, um, yeah, he will definitely expose you if something happens. So, guys, don't get arrested. Don't get arrested because he's going to make a video about you and Elda is going to make a video about you. Um, the brother, I think, as is um, Rashan, he's going to make a video about you, the Elder. He's going to make a video about you if you get into any sort of drama. His heirs is to the street. So um, don't get caught up in no drama because you're going to be on Front Street. I'm just letting you know from now. So um, I took care of what I had to take care of with that situation, so I don't need to make no more videos about uh, Rufus regarding what his thoughts are on this. I'm done with that, bro. We I already done hashed that out here. That's it, right? I'm not talking about that no more. My point now is to focus on um, witnesses regarding the situation with Dow and what's going on at Straightway. If there's any witnesses that's coming forth, I'm waiting on Brother Hayes to share his testimony he said that he has a video that he want to bring out i'm waiting to see what that is about shout out to irene for the support appreciate you and everybody else everybody else that supported the show i, I know i didn't shout everybody name out <clears throat> right and also there was a person the other day that was upset with me because of something regarding a uh I'm not sure what it's called, a super sticker or something. They was like, Ringo, how come you didn't shout out my super sticker? <laughs> Look, my apologies. I'm streaming. You know what I'm saying? I, listen, ladies and gentlemen, when you support the shows, right, all of your support goes back into what I'm doing here. Understand that when you support, I appreciate you. I cannot shout everything out at every single time. I'm working. You, you, ha you have to understand that. If I see something, I'll salute you. I'll shout you out. I may read your super chat, but I cannot shout everything out. That's that's virtually impossible. Imagine if people are super chatting every five minutes. I'll never get through a show. You know, this is why I say support the cash app, because at the end of the show, I'll read out the cash apps and, you know, shout out your name. You know what I mean? Um, it is what it is. I used to read out how much people gave, but because people be pocket watching... <laughs> I don't do that no more. You know what I mean? I just shout out your name, you know? Your first name, not your full government, in, if that's the case. But um, nonetheless, um, my job right now is to keep you posted on um, whatchamacallit, what's going on regarding this situation. Is P. Diddy Dow going to repent? Um, is he going to come clean about his adultery or what? Because... We're going to get more witnesses. More people are going to come forward. Um, also, to those of you that have info for me, if you got videos, send them to my Instagram. Don't post links in my chat. If you post links in the comment section under my videos, I am blocking you. That's it. Automatically. Because when you do that, what you're doing is you're promoting. You're spamming. If you got something for me, send it to me on my Instagram. DM Ringo TV Raw. Send a video and explain it. Don't just put put a link because I'm not going to click on it. It could be a virus. It could be some sort of mess. Put a link. Brief info. Hey, Ringo, check this video out. So and so and so. Boom, boom, boom. 
clock, such and such, timestamp, such and such, so and so said, said, whatever. Boom. That's how you do it. But if you put a link in my comment section on my page, you're spamming my page and you're promoting somebody else. And people tend to do that because they're trying to get some clicks, figuring if they put a link is going to make like the audience is going to go there. That's not going to work. It doesn't mean they're going to go there. I keep telling people, stop doing that. That's bad. Don't don't do that. You know, so if you do that, just know if you got blocked already, hey, that's your fault. I block people like that all the time. I don't want to block anybody. I want you to rock out. But when you're doing stuff like that, I got to regulate the situation. I'm not going to give you no warning because I do that all the time. I tell people all the time, stop putting links in the comments. You know, if you if something is for me, why is it in the comments for everybody? Send it to me, because what you're doing is you're also exposing the person who said whatever they said. Use some discretion. Send it to me. Direct. Instagram. Ringo TV Raw. All right? So we're going to keep you posted regarding the situation. Um, we're going to continue our investigation. Again, ladies, if there's any ladies that have been the straight way, you've been hurt, you've been um, anything compromising went on, uh, Somebody said something to you that was inappropriate. You never had a chance to, to share your side of the story. Uh, make a video about it. Upload it to YouTube. Make it an unlisted video. Send me the link on Instagram. Hey, Ringo, this is my testimony about what happened with me at Straightway. You know what I mean? You can use the video. Um, just do what you got to do. But this is a real story of what happened to me. You know what I mean? I've been silent for 10 years. I've been silent for five years. I felt bad. I felt degraded. I felt disgusted. I couldn't believe what happened. I lost my marriage. Bro, I lost my wife. Here's my video. This is my story. Again, if you need help on understanding how to make a video, go on the platform. Look for the video that Jeremy made, his testimony. One of the best testimonies, um, the best breakdowns I've seen thus far. Um, he did that video with one take over an hour testimony. And I apologize for the blurriness on um, the Ringo TV Raw. It's because I'm not looking into the camera. So the camera's not seeing my eyes. Um, he, just look at that tape for inspiration on how to make a testimony. You know what I mean? Just be yourself. You don't have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to put on the best clothing or whatever the case is. Like, stop all of that nonsense. People just want to hear the story. At the end of the day, the people just want to hear the story. That's what's the most important. The story. That's it. Right. So, um, yeah, salute to everybody in the building. Um, it is what it is. Um, you know what I mean? Let me see. See what's going on. And again, to all the brothers, iron sharpens iron. Um, truth is truth. As long as you're willing to stand. You see how in my video, I'm talking, I'm exposing, criticizing, but Rufus is still there. I appreciate that because most people run. You don't run. You're still there and you, 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 you respond back. You don't hide. That's a good thing. That's a good sign because... What it shows is that, okay, people calling you out, you know what I mean? Ringo's cooking. <laughs> but you stay there. You, 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 you didn't run. You didn't. See, that's what testing the spirits is about. Now, I understand your position on X, Y, and Z. I'm not even going to talk about that no more. I believe I covered that already. I don't want to keep wasting my time with that. It is what it is. That's your position. That's your personality. We already done talked about it. Um, I believe I gave the people ample amount of time to share their thoughts, to, to criticize, to do whatever. You probably responded to them. I ain't see every comment, but I believe we were able to clear whatever we had to clear up. Um, will Pastor Dow respond to the videos? Will he admit his guilt? Will he confess? Will he come on camera and say, you know what? You're right. I did X, Y, and Z. 
I'm wrong. I did this. I did that. I'm going to repent, get my life right, clean up. I did a lot of people wrong in the ministry. Is he going to do that? Or will he um, continue to believe like, oh, I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm good. Book of Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4 says I can do what I want to do. After that, there's nothing I can say. You know what I mean? I'm just going to move on, do what I got to do. We're going to keep our radar, you know, on what he's got going on. If there's anything else, we're going to cook him. Just that simple. But the messages are out there for the people so that they can learn and stay clear from that situation. What he did to Rufus was murder, in my opinion. Not physical murder. It was spiritual murder. Because like I said, you take me off my post, uh, destroy my name, criticize my credibility, name call me. And I was even accused of communicating with, with Rufus behind the scenes via email to plot against Pastor Dow. In, in case Rufus is in the building and surely nobody's going to believe anything because that's what they believe. But I seen a video clip from Kabir. He said that me and you have been communicating behind the scenes, plotting <laughs> against Dow. I've never communicated with Rufus behind the scenes. Never did that. But this is what Kabir did. So that's bearing false witness on his part. But he said, look at his Instagram. Look, see, he was communicating with Rufus behind the scenes. That's what he said. You know? And that's crazy. You know? But this is wild, man. This is wild. That people would say these type of things in order to justify, like, oh, the reason why Ringo's doing this is because behind the scenes, him and, and Rufus talked about plotting. This is what they were saying. Now, I never talked with this man behind the scenes, fam. There's no evidence of that. There's no evidence of that. But this is what they said. You know? And this is to make the audience believe that, oh, that's why he's doing all these videos. Because Rufus paid him to, to do those videos against Dowell. Oh, it makes sense now. They plot it together. This is what they're saying. Pure lies. And that rate that made me know that Kabir is um one that bear false witness because that's that's not a fact and i know that so it's like wow he said that on videos with so much confidence and people bought into it so when people lie on you it's like <laughs> hey believe what you want to believe at that point you know um let me see all right, so let me let me read off some of these cash apps and we're going to get up on out of here, man. Um, I am hungry, hungry, very, very hungry, man. I got to slow down with these videos, man. <laughs> Wait a minute, eight hours? <laughs> wow. Yo, we've been on for eight hours. Hey, shout out to everybody at the 9 to 5 that I helped get through the 9 to 5. You know what I'm saying? We were on the shift together, fam. Y'all, I was there from when y'all started your shift. Yo, this is crazy, man. Eight hours. I know the brothers at Straightway mad right now. This man did another eight hours. What is this, a job? Let me see. Um, the Yam <laughs> says, I just clocked out at 612. Wow, that's crazy, man. Yeah, I thought it was, I didn't know it was eight hours, man. Last time I checked, it was six hours. Now it's eight, man. This is crazy, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
I mean, how many hours worth of work that I've com- accomplished thus far? Um, it got to be more than 100 hours. Got to be. It got to be, definitely. By now, got to be more. <laughs> Eight hours and three minutes, bro. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Anyway, y'all, man, we're going to get up on out of here. Let me read these, these cash apps. I got to charge my phone. Okay. I only got 20%. 20% left. Um, again, to the brothers, don't waste your time with the debating with these Christian platforms. I mean, y'all could do what y'all want to do. Y'all grown. Y'all do what y'all want to do. All I'm saying is you're walking into an ambush. You would never see me on those platforms respectfully because I know how those guys move. You know what I mean? I've been through this with Christians on their platforms and and just having pure debates and, and wars back in the days. You know what I mean? Because we would literally be debating scripture through video back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it got really crazy. It was literally a war, a fight. It was unfruitful. Nobody learned anything. You know what I mean? I would never get involved in that type of stuff, ever. You know, it's a waste of time. Okay. Um, shout out to Trey, I believe it is. I'm not sure. That No, I think that was yesterday. Trey. Shout out to Trey. Shout out to Rallo. Make sure y'all subscribe to Floridine. Make sure y'all subscribe to Floridine Rallo. Let's go. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Um, Brett, Brett, shout out to Brett for the support. And shout out to brother Rufus for the support. Now, if Rufus was pissed off with me, I don't think he would support nothing. <laughs> if he was pissed, he wouldn't support anything. I know if I was pissed with somebody, I wouldn't support nothing. <laughs> but uh, appreciate you, bro, for supporting the work. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Rufus' channel as well. Um, iron sharpens iron. Um, again, during that stream, there was a section... And I think that's Gabar's people. I think Rallo made a video addressing the situation <clears throat> because I <clears throat> I had wrote a comment about it because I was upset when I saw the brother cut off Eric mid speech. He was cooking. Eric was and he was flowing. It was getting very interesting. Matter of fact, what Eric was saying, it was very interesting. I wanted to hear it. I'm like, wow, he's getting to the nitty gritty. And then the brother came in and says, if I can interject. I'm like, why? And then I looked at New Breed's face, fam. New Breed was like, go look at it. <laughs> go to Rallo's channel. I post a comment. I think Rallo pinned the comment. Click on the little number thing. Click on it. Watch the guy speak. Look at New Breed's face. <laughs> New Breed got pissed, bro. I ain't, I ain't never seen him get pissed like that, bro. <laughs> New Breed is normally cool, calm, collected. But if you look at his face, he was like. <laughs> like he wanted to go, <laughs> he wanted to go off. <laughs> I listen, I started, I started cussing at the computer monitor when that happened. <laughs> I was like, bro, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> because, and, and again, to the brother. You know what I'm saying? I'm not roasting you or anything like that, man, even though I am. <laughs> For future references, bro, 
right? Because I don't know you. I don't know where you come from. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be a little respectful at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, when you have a guest and he's the star witness, right? Because to, to be honest, the star witnesses on that broadcast was Rufus and um, brother uh, Gonzalez. They're the star guests. Even though you have the heavy hitters in the building, you got the new breeds, you got the Mark the Messengers, you know what I mean? You got the Rallos, you know what I mean? And the other brothers, respectfully. The main guest is Rufus. Matter of fact, Rufus was the main, main guest. He's in the thumbnail. So whenever those guys are speaking, everybody got to just stay quiet. Don't even speak. You know what I mean? Just let them cook. Let them say whatever they got to say. Don't interrupt. Don't. It ruins shows. Listen, learn from the Cat Williams interview. Learn from the interview. You remember how it was where, um, what's this guy? I forgot his name already, man. Um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Sharp, Shannon, Shannon Sharp. <laughs> See, came to my mind. Shannon Sharp was letting him cook. He let, he let Cat, Cat Williams cook. And by him letting him cook, it made a great show. See what I mean? I mean, he was interrupting a little bit, but for the most part, he allowed him to roast whoever he wanted to roast, speak about whoever he wanted to speak about. He just let him have freedom. That's what you got to do when you have a guest. You can't interrupt them. But they cussing, Ringo. Bam, whatever that guest say, you got to let it rock. <laughs> I'm glad. Listen, I ain't going to hold you. I'm glad Rallo let them rock. Now, if it was any normal uh, conversations, he would have said, bro, no profanity, keep it clean. You know what I mean? But when you have guests, let them cook. If they if they say some cuss words, let them rock. Let them cook. Because that's what's making a great show. What you guys have to understand is this. When it comes to content creation, people want to see. They want to hear. They want to they want to know. They want to hear from the guests. So if you just let the guests cook, you're going to have everybody tuning in like this. <laughs> They're going to be tuning in. Look at the views on Rallo's video. That video. I believe that's one of his highest viewed videos. I believe he had like, I think a thousand people was in the building. Rallo had a thousand people on his show viewing at one time. You know what that did to his platform? Rallo's channel is now in the algorithm. I don't know if he knows know that, but his channel is in the algorithm. That was a very, very good thing. So if I were Rallo, listen to me. You ready? I would take that same live stream that you did, chop them up into like 30 minute segments. 30 minutes a piece. Put a nice title that is similar to whatever the topic is about. And then post it as a premiere. Post it as a premiere so the algorithm can take it and run with it. In other words, the sections where Eric was talking, chop it. Put it up. The sections where Rufus was talking... Upload that section only and title it based on what the subject was. Because remember, some people may not want to watch the whole stream. They may want that one section. And watch what happens. It's going to help the channel grow even more because remember, the people wanted to see it. That's why you had over a thousand people in the building. So double down. Double down on what you did and expand and be consistent in doing that. Make some YouTube shorts. Hey, YouTube shorts with X, Y, and Z. And, um, but hold up, before you do that, don't make the YouTube shorts. Cross that one out. The reason being is, um, 
If you're if you're doing YouTube shorts, always make sure that you're in it. YouTube shorts algorithm is different from the regular video algorithm. YouTube's shorts have different rules and guidelines. So if you post a clip, even though it's from your show, right? If you're not seen in the video, the AI will look at it weird, like you're using somebody else's video. It's really complicated to explain. Just stick with the video section and that's it. If you're in a YouTube short section, make sure it's you on camera. Hey guys, uh, my thoughts about last night's show is X, Y, and Z. Here's a clip of Rufus saying this. Here's a clip of Gonzalez saying this. Check this out. Yeah, I try tell her, man. She don't listen to me, puppy. I try tell her. She don't listen. Right? And then you come back in and you wrap it up. That one minute, that's a YouTube short. You see how that works? Because you're in it. It's like you reviewed your own video. So that's the best way to do it. If it's a YouTube short, be in the video. So the camera, you can see yourself in the video and you review your own video. Do that. And you'll be good to go. But uh, all in all, um, appreciate everybody coming through. Um, I got to get me something to eat. I got a lot of things I got to do. Hey, they came out with a new battery, y'all. A new battery. <laughs> oh, man, bro. Let me show y'all, man. I'm excited about this, man. They came out with a new battery, man. Let me see if I can show y'all this. Y'all probably like, what is that? What are you talking about? Let me show y'all, man. Um, you camera guys, you would you would be excited about this too. You know, you would be excited about this, like I am, man. Definitely excited about this one, man. Oh man, check this out, guys. New battery, fam. Now I bought one already, but I hate. I hate the fact that I bought one already and now they came out with a new one. <laughs> right? Check it out. Let me see. So, this video, this, um, what this woman said. Let me see what she said. Woman respond to me. Let me see if she responds. She's upset. I don't know why these ladies keep getting upset with me, man. Y'all keep responding to me, and I respond back. Uh, let me see. Dear beloved Ringo, yes, I am married. <laughs> married to the same man for 33 years. Uh, but I am ashamed to say I have slept with more than one man. <laughs> However, the Most High has forgiven me for all past sins. <laughs> Between me and you. My husband is a wonderful man, hence the 33 years marriage. Peace to you, Ringo. <laughs> Still doesn't answer my question. You know, the point is, and I'm speaking to that particular sister. I mean, I could always make a video about this, but I'm not even gonna waste my time. I'll just leave it alone. I don't really got no time to waste with that. <laughs> my point is, she was saying something in regards to polygyny and X, Y, and Z, and I made it very clear a couple of things. You know how I normally do. But she had to confess her sins. So being that she confessed her sins, I'm just going to leave it alone. She said that, hey, she's married. It is what it is. She said back in the day, she did some dirt. She confessed her sins. All right, I don't got no problem. With you. We good. <laughs> I just wanted you to admit your sins. That's it. You know? Okay, so uh, let me hold on a second. Let me do this. Let me do this. So, hey. Let me see. Where is the um, thumbnail? Okay. That's the thumbnail for the video. <laughs> All right. And it's so crazy. I didn't do that. That's That was his face on his own video. And it shows a spirit. That was his, That's his face. I didn't make that. I just used his own image on his video. And it shows a lot of anger and frustration. You know what I mean? But, hey, that's okay. All right? Let me take this off the screen here. All right? Okay, what else I going to do? Oh, 
the camera battery, right? So this battery right here, guys, the small rig VB212. Man, bruh, I'm buying it, man. Bruh, that battery, because I got, I got this one. I had bought that one, which is great. That one will last you all day too, right? I got that one. But this one, this one? Man, yo, I'm buying that battery, bro. Matter of fact, I'm getting that battery today. I'm getting that battery today. Oh, but hold up. I can't get it today because it says new item coming soon. I can't go get it. I could I could order it from the small rig website. I could do that, but I don't want the battery coming in the mail. You know what I mean? I don't want the people handling those type of batteries. I, I, I'd rather go pick it up at the store and whatnot. Um... Nah, I could do that. All right, so it is what it is. Uh, shout out to William for the support. Says, great show. Hold on, I heard a chime. Um, <laughs> yo, you wouldn't believe this, fam. This is crazy. You wouldn't believe this, fam. Um... You wouldn't believe this, fam. Hey, I appreciate that, brother. This is crazy, man. Now, y'all remember, y'all remember when, um, y'all remember when we had that conversation in one of my videos and it was something regarding Rufus and Jamie. Y'all remember that? And I was like, don't it was something along the lines of he said something and I, I was like don't mess up your blessing let him say whatever that is well Rufus just did something here I really appreciate that this is wild bro Rufus just did something here that Literally is wild. Now, the last person that did something like this was another lady. Um, and she left me speechless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was like, whoa. You know? And this brother just basically paid for the battery. I kid you not. Listen. Wait, hold on. Salute to Brother Rufus for that. I really appreciate that. That will definitely go and buy that battery. I am going to put the order in right now at small rigs website because you can order it direct from small rig normally i like to order it from bnh because bnh is right in the city i could go pick it up myself but you can buy it from small rig website i'm not sure if it's pre-order or you can get it direct because normally you get first dibs at the main website but um i really appreciate that um i'm i'm literally speechless you know what i'm saying because you 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 just finished supporting and then you um literally paid for the battery even after I just finished roasting you. So it's like, man, I really appreciate that, fam. That That's going right to this work. I really, really, really appreciate that. You know what I mean? So, hey, um, the Most High is definitely going to take care of you, fam. Now, this is the way you do things. When somebody bless you, 
and you come into public to tell the people that that to me, that's how it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Because he ain't he 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 did what he did. That was then secret. But I'm overwhelmed with joy and I have no other choice but to, you know, what I'm saying talk about it. You know what I mean? So it's like the most high is going to bless you for that, fam. He's going to take care of you, man. Man, I'm, I'm still like, like, wow. That's that's something else, man. That's definitely something else, bro. It's like you see the video. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting the battery. I'm getting the battery. And he just supported and got the battery. Man, I'm going to always remember that. Never going to forget that. Never gonna forget that, bro. So, hey, um, I got an order I gotta go make. <laughs> I got an order that I gotta go make, fam. Um, let me see. Uh, it says, Yah has blessed me and family through this entire process. It's been incredible. You know what I mean? And, and only the Most High knows what He has done for you in the process because. I'm going to tell you, man, um, you know, again, shout out to New Breed. You know what I mean? I, I, I talked about this with him behind the scenes when I was going through what I was going through with the job when, you know what I'm saying, when they had terminated me because of the, I didn't take the potion. You know what I mean? I've been talking with New Breed behind the scenes and I was like, yo, and I've been telling New Breed this for a minute. I was like, yo, I want to do YouTube full time. And, um, but I got this job and I had a great job, great career, you know what I'm saying? Making good money, you know what I mean? And I really loved the job, but I didn't want to bounce, but I knew I cannot do YouTube and do the job at the same time. You know what I mean? Those of you that is in that position, you know what I'm talking about. Your job might pay you decent money. It's, um, it's a stable job or whatever the case is, good salary, good benefits. Everything is great. And I was on my way to being promoted again because I wanted to be a supervisor. And I remember I was like, yo, I'm going to I'm going to bounce one of these days. And um, he kept encouraging me like, yo, just do what you got to do, man. You, you, you know what to do. You know, you do YouTube. This is what you do. Hey. Take the leap of faith, you know? And I was like, yeah, but, you know, it's like you, you, you're you in that transition. It's like, think about you, you have a job that is literally paying you with overtime, over six figures, and you're going to leave that to go do YouTube full time. I told him, I was like, yo, I'm going to leave in two years. Most High said, nope, you're going to leave next week. <laughs> Literally. I was telling New Breed, yo, I'm leaving in about two years. Most High had a different plan. He started to rock the cradle. Next minute, they were like, yo, you got to take that or you're fired. I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> I'm walking around the job. I'm looking at everything. Because like I said, I love the job. Those of you who heard my testimony, I love the work that I was doing. Loved my work. I could go there. Listen, I could go to my job and I'll work for free for the whole week. I wouldn't have no complaints. <laughs> I love the job that much. I, I, listen, I'll work for a week. No pay. I'm good. Because I just like doing the job. It's, it's, it's cool. Got the buddies. We hanging out. We doing the job. It is what it is. But because of a lot of the encouragement from New Breed saying, hey, just, hey, just do what you got to do, man. Most high going to take care of the rest. What I'm trying to say is when you're at the end of the road, when you're at the rock bottom or when you get cut off when something happened, it's like if the most high open up a whole door. It, it's true. 
he opens up a door. I can't explain it. You would have to be in it to understand. You can lose everything. Everything. And he'll open up a door right when you're at the end and you have nothing and say here and you're like what in the world just happened turned everything around for you and when I tell you um it been how many years I haven't been at that job I, I can't even remember like what when was the last moment of the pandemic? I don't even know. I think I haven't been there in like what? Uh, three years? Like three years or something? I don't know. It was 2022? Like two, three years, somewhere around there. And that just goes to show. And when the most high put you where you need to be, you're going to be better off. So I can understand when he says, ever since everything went down, the most high opened up doors. I don't know what doors, but he, he knows what the most high did. Only you would know. And when he opened up a door, he opened a door. And you're like, I had brothers that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't want to, I don't want to say their name because they did what they did in secret, but I had brothers that even when I was at the job, you know, one particular Israelite brother, he know who he is. All I got to do is say that he know automatically who he is. Israelite brother hit me up at the job. He was like, yo, bro, um, appreciate all your work that you've been doing over the years. Here's this thing right here. Boom, boom, boom. I go look at my phone, look at my cash app. I'm like, yo. Brother, bless me, bro. And that was around the time when everything was going crazy. He didn't even know. But he just, he blessed me and didn't even know what the circumstances was. It just came out of nowhere. And I'm like, because he already done told me. He was like, yo, what's your cash app? What's your cash app? Because I don't want to, you know, I'm sending something to your cash app. I want to make sure it's you. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? You know, he did what he did. Boom, boom, boom. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm at the job. I'm, I'm telling my partners. And I'm like, yo, bro, you wouldn't believe this, fam. Yo. They're like, yo, what happened, man? I'm like, yo, man. Yo, man, brother, bless me, man. Yo, that's what's up, man. That's love right there, man. And um, <laughs> the other guys was like, yo, man, can I get $5? <laughs> I was like, nah, bro. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Um, But it's wild, man. Like when when things like that happen, man, man, you have you have to give praise to the most high, man. So, hey. Um, all glory and praise to the most high, man, for the blessings, man. Appreciate all the support. We've been on for eight hours and 32 minutes, man. Eight hours and 32 minutes? <sighs> this is crazy. <laughs> right now, my kids is getting ready for school. <laughs> I know. I know. Their mom is up. She's getting them ready right now. I know. <laughs> Probably like, you still up? You still doing this to YouTube? <laughs> you know? Um, man, to all you guys out there, all you ladies that have plans and you're, you're contemplating taking the leap of faith, you got to take the, you got to take the jump. If you don't, this is what's going to happen. 
the most high is going to do it. Did you hear that? Um, now, I don't know if this happened in Rufus' situation, but before you got cut off from straightway, the most high had to have visited you to tell you that something was coming. Either he was doing something or something was going down or there was going to be a major change and it was going to affect you <laughs> because that's what happened with me at my job. Before the pandemic happened, before the whole thing happened, before there was even a virus, the most high already told me, he said, you're not going to be here no more. And I'm like, how? Why? I like this place. He said, no, you're not going to be here no more. I'm like, well, I'm not going. This is what I'm telling the most high. I'm like, I like this. I took too many exams. You know how many exams I had to take to have that, that job title that I had? How many, how much studying time, how many hours I had to train to learn different things in order to take exams, civil service exams. I dedicated everything into it. This is why when you're at a company and you've been there for 15 years, 20 years, and they let you go, that's not no joke, fam. That was my case. So, for him to put in 14 years at straightway and then they booted him out. That's crazy. He says he did. And I tried to prepare the saints that lived on the land with me. And that's another thing. This is why I'm in preparation to leave New York. Because the most high already done warned me. I don't know what's coming to New York. I ain't trying to fair manga. I ain't trying to say nothing. But for me, he told me to get out. You know what I'm saying? And after that little earthquake thing that happened the other day, some of y'all might think it was no big deal. Oh, it was a big deal, all right. <laughs> it was no joke. You know what I mean? Like everything shook. I'm talking about everything. It was not a cool, I joked about it. Y'all remember, I was joking about it, but it was not a joking matter. That was my way of getting through um, the situation to not panic. You get what I mean? You got to joke about it because you can't control it. But when that earthquake thing, that four point, I think it was 4.8, right? 4.8. It was a minor earthquake in New York, 4.8, and everything shook violently and I'm in here everything is shaking I'm like I just had to stand still I was like oh snap this is it and then right after that I flew put on my shoes got everything together and I was ready to be out I was waiting for it to happen again I'm looking at the news I said you know what let me go live man to just calm my nerves you know what I mean so that's what he told me. He normally comes to you and talk to you first to tell you to leave or tell you to do this or tell you to do that before it happened. So before the pandemic, he already told me, he said, uh, leave the job. It's over. And I was like, nah, I put in too much. I invested too much. How am I going to leave? And I invested so much. You know how many exams I took? You know how many plaques I have? How many awards I have? I put in everything for this job, man. And then the virus came out. And I figured, ah, it ain't nothing. And I remember one of my partners, I don't know how he figured it out. He said, yo, you know what? I was like, what? He said, I think they're going to come out with a vaccine. <laughs> that was the most high. <laughs> one of my partners, I'm serious. If he's watching right now, I'm pretty sure he's probably laughing at me right now. I got to head over there and see how everybody doing at the workplace because I always go over there every now and then see how everybody doing. But he said it. He called it forth. He was like, yo, I think they're going to have a vaccine, bro. I was like, come on, man. Don't say that, bro. Next minute, they started having talks. We saw it on the news. They coming out with this. I didn't think nothing was going to be about it until the job gave us a memo. We had memos because we had work phones where we could communicate with everybody that they gave us. And the email came in. It said, hey, effective immediately, uh, all such and such employees have to take 
the pointy thing in order to keep their job. If you don't take it, you will be terminated effective immediately. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, man. Damn. And if you go back to my videos where I was exposing uh, Pastor P. Diddy Dow, remember when he tried to act like he didn't know me? If you go back to the tapes, I proved to you that me and Dow communicated via email because I reached out to his church. I reached out to his church. I got the emails. Go back and look at the video. I showed the documents. I reached out to Dow for a letter so I could be exempt from taking that, that thing. You see what I mean? So when you look at that, um, it's very important to understand, you know? It's very important for you to understand what's going on. Let me pack this person up real quick at J. Um, time for you to go. You spam my chat. You got to go. Simple as that. We don't tolerate none of that foolishness. Be an adult. You post something. You post it one time. You don't come in here posting like you're crazy. You know, you like you screaming to be seen. Right. So I reached out to straightway. These are these are facts. That's why. This whole ordeal is sad because I looked at this ministry as if though they were doing the work of Yah. And I reached out to Dow for a letter so that I could be exempt. And he set up a letter for me, boom, 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 because you had to get a letter from a church or uh, a doctor's uh, note or whatever the case is to be exempt. I turned in the info. They rejected everything. They rejected that. All the other brothers that I was working with, they identify as Moors, and um, they had their documentation. All of their letters were rejected. They basically said, look, F your letters, you taking it. I was like, I ain't taking nothing. So they gave us time. They bought us about three months because they had, once they rejected the letters, we got threatening letters telling us by next week, you have to take it or you're fired. So another email came in and says, you can, um, what is it when you go to court and they, they sentence you, meaning there was a ruling on you, but you had a, you had an opportunity to go back to court again. There's a name for that. Um, like they pass judgment, but you're like, you know what? Forget that. I'm going back to court and reopen the case An appeal. There you go. An appeal. Thanks. You had an opportunity to appeal it. So when I appealed their decision, that was them given the opportunity for the big boys at the top to go to the round table and decide what they want to do with me and the other guys. So we appealed it. That bought us about three months to kind of get things in order. And once the appeal came in, they were like denied, denied, denied. They denied all of us. <laughs> so that was the most high. Even though it looked crazy, that was the most high kicking me out because he already told me to leave. Sometimes the most high tell you go and you don't want to go. He's like, you know what? I'm going to make it uncomfortable because I'm trying to get you out. You don't want to go. OK, cool. Things are happening on your job. Things is happening in your family. Weird stuff is happening all over the place. You're like, what's going on? Most High, is he's, he's moving. He's trying to get you to move. He's trying to get you out. So me having that experience with the earthquake, 4.8 on the Richter scale, whatever the case is, that's the Most High saying, get out. Now, a lot of times people don't understand. I got a family. Just getting up and getting out of New York just like that. You just can't do that. You know what I mean? It takes time to prepare and get things in order. You know what I mean? So I got the message. And you should get the message too. When the Most High is doing something and he's trying to remove you from a place, he warns you first by telling you. And then if you're not moving, he's going to move you. If it's out of a job, if it's out of a church, if it's out of a community, whatever the case is, he's going to move you. You know what I mean? And... Like I said, 
I love the job. I appreciate the job. I, I, I had good relationships with a lot of my coworkers. I had some, some crazy relationship with coworkers too, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, we were still family, if that makes sense. I argued with a lot of my, my coworkers, you know what I mean? Nearly got into fights. But at the, at the end of the day, I still respect the brothers, you know what I mean? That's why I still go up there and I see how people are. We, 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 we hang out, you know what I mean? And, and whatnot. I don't supposed to be there now. Don't tell nobody Ringo still goes up to the job. I just do that because it keeps me balanced. I like to go back and see the peeps, see what's going on with them. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? But the most high moved me out of that place. He did it. Before I can make a decision, he just said, you're, you're done. I'm taking you out. So when he take you out, he's going to also put you somewhere else. That's what he's going to do. I noticed my light went out behind me. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, um, take that as a word of encouragement that you might be in a situation where you're trying to figure things out. Um, just know when the Most High is talking to you. Just know when... Um, it's time to move. It's time to, uh, I guess, you know, you know that the most high is saying it's time to go. Maybe you're a person who don't even follow the most high. You look, look, Ringo, I don't follow the most high. I don't understand what you're talking about. Could you explain? It's simple. You feel it in your heart that it's time to move on. It's time to start that business. It may be time to sell that car. It may be time to move. You just know in your heart it's time to go. Maybe you got to make a move that you're a little reluctant to do. You might be a little nervous. You never stepped out. You know what I mean? You got to take the risk. Just do it. You get what I'm saying? The Most High is trying to take you to the next level. It's not just about you following the Most High. You could be a person who don't even follow the Most High and he's still directing you because he has a purpose for you. You get what I'm saying? You might be a person that got to meet up with another person for a purpose. And he's trying to set you up for that, that big break you've been looking for. And it's going to take for you stepping outside of your comfort zone, because that's typically what happens. We get comfortable where we are and to step out is kind of like, man, I don't know what it's going to be like. I don't want to do it because I'm comfortable. You know what I mean? I, I Listen, fam, when I tell you the job that I had was perfect, most of you guys, if you had that job, you wouldn't even, you would never quit. You would stay. You would have fun coming to work every day. Had a great career. You know? But I wanted to be a supervisor. I wanted to be a supervisor because there was a lot of drama going on and I felt that I have the leadership qualities to lead the workers, not to be an a-hole, but to lead the workers, to give them the education, teach them you know, how to do things the right way. And that way we can have an efficient work staff that will be able to uh, uh, do their job to the best of their abilities so that we can have um, a better public image when it comes to the news because the agency was always on the news with a bunch of drama and a lot of nonsense. So in my mind, I wanted to change all of that. And I felt that if I get that title, if they put me in that, that particular title, I'll be able to lead the workers. You know what I mean? with some sense of, of leadership in, in being a supervisor. And um, things change, you know? But it is what it is. You know, all things work together for the good, you know? And that's it. I'm doing better now than before. All praises to the most high. You know, and that's not to brag, but I'm doing better. Way better. But I still respect the job. I still respect the workers. I still visit everybody, still salute everybody. Um, when I go there, I don't think I'm better than anybody. That's not how I am. I go there, I'm humble, same old guy, cracking jokes. You know what I mean? Same thing. You know? I find out what's going on with everybody, see how everybody's doing, um, chill for a bit, laugh, giggle, salute everybody, 
going to the office. Hey, so-and-so, how you doing? Everybody okay? You know what I mean? That's me, you know? Because when I was there, it was more like a family. You know what I mean? Pretty much like how it probably be at your old, your workplace. You probably have, it's like a family, you know? You know, at least I don't have to punch the clock, you know? <laughs> I mean, think about this, guys. I literally did eight hours and 48 minutes. So I did a day's work, right? <laughs> and I did some OT because I stayed 48 minutes extra. This is what I mean. This is my work ethic. I kid you not. When I was at the agency, it would be time to clock out. I'm dressed, ready to clock out, ready to leave. Supervisor would hit me and my partner up. Hey, guys, I know y'all about to leave. Man, everybody's clocking out. We have an emergency at such and such plant on such and such. Really need you guys help, man. I'm like, what do you need, man? Hey. We good? We, we, what's going on? I need you guys to stay to about 10. Remember, we clocking out like around 4, 4.30, 4, 4.30. Yo, I need you guys to stay to 10. I'm like, I got you. We got you. That's OT for us. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we chilling? OT? And what? We ready to rock. And we used to always look out for our supervisor. That's the, that's the way we move. We always look out for the supervisor when it comes to work. You know, I think the, our old supervisor, I think he retired. If I'm correct. Yeah, he retired. He retired after I left. It's interesting. Right after I left, the very same supervisor that we looked up, you know, we, we supported and we served in the military of that particular job title. He ended up retiring right after I um, left that particular agency. And what's so funny is he had to give me the bad news. But the thing is. Um, when on, on my last day, I already knew what it was because two of my other coworkers that were let go from the company, um, they had the supervisor call them into the office and was like, yo, y'all got to go clock out. They were like, what? He's like, yo, y'all done. He's like, I don't, I don't want to do this, man. I don't want to do this to y'all, man, but... I got orders, man. So once that happened to them, I already knew I was next. I already knew I was next. So when I came back to the office, one of my partners, he was like, yo, don't worry, man. That was just them. They're not going to do that to you, man. That's you, man. Like, why would they do that to you? I was like, nah, man, they did that to them. They, I'm next, bro. So the next morning, I didn't come in because I knew the letter in the email said, don't come back in. You're, you're terminated. You know what I mean? So I get the call from the supervisor. He's like, yo, yo, you at work? I was like, nah, I'm home. He was like, oh, so you know already, right? I was like, yeah, it's all good. He was like, look, man, um, hey, <laughs> this is not my doing. Um, you know what I mean? You're one of the great workers that we had. You know what I mean? I wish you well. Uh, he was he was like, you can, you can hear the pain in his voice. You can hear the pain in his voice. He knew it was wrong what they did to the workers. They did this to a lot of people. A lot of you folks out there during the pandemic, you lost your jobs during the pandemic, and they, they let y'all go, and um, it's messed up. You know what I mean? Some of y'all bounce back. Y'all doing even better now. You know what I mean? So salute to you folks that literally was sacrificed, fam, by y'all companies, and you were able to bounce back. You know? So yeah, he was he was saddened on the phone. And um, I was like, hey, it ain't nothing, it ain't your fault. He was like, I don't want to be doing this, man. It's like, but I gotta make these calls, and I know you guys got families and kids, and the, the, what they're doing to y'all is, is bad, man. They literally just kicked us out, fam. Like just like no joke it's crazy you know but um it is what it is um shout out to hold on a second let me see let me make sure i shout everybody out bum, ba -da -bum, bum, ba -da -bum, bum, ba -da -bum. hold on a second um let me see <clears throat> okay um, 
Shout out to Jacqueline. Shout out to Jacqueline. Matter of fact, I believe it is Jacqueline that literally shocked me the other day. <laughs> um, I'm still, I'm still overwhelmed by the support the other day. I am very grateful and very humble for your support. Shout out to Jacqueline. Man. Very, very grateful for your support. Wow. I remember. <laughs> Trust me, I'm never going to forget. That's something that you don't, you don't forget stuff like that. Because people come through and it's like, like wow. You know what I mean? It's like you, you, I lose my damn words. I don't even know how to speak anymore. But um, I appreciate you supporting the show and whatnot, you know. But, yeah, man, that story with me at that workplace, man, is something else. It's definitely something else. Um, um, let me see. She says, appreciate your wisdom and love. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Um, shout out to Sean Sean the navigator Moderator for the support bro Appreciate you Shout out to Angie For the support on the super chat And everybody else that supported via the super chat I appreciate everybody I know I didn't shout everybody else out My apologies I'm all over the place Um I just hope that these videos, these stories resonate with you and somehow give you some sort of encouragement. When you think it's over, it's not over. It's not. When you're at the bottom and you think like you're done, that they got you, you it's not over. The Most High knows he's there. It may not feel like he's there, but he's there. He's there. I know he's there. I've seen this happen many times. Don't doubt. He's there. He have a way of, of opening up those doors, man. You could be at the end. I'm talking about you're at the end of your last breath. And you're saying to yourself, I'm about to give up. I'm, I'm giving up right. And he opens a door right there, right at the end. He opens a door. Sometimes I'm like, why, why, why at the end, end, end like that? It's almost like he's stretching your faith. How many of you ever been there? You are about to quit. You're at the end. You're like, God is not with me. There's no way. There's too much going on. Nobody cares. Nobody this. And you're like, and then all of a sudden a knock at the door. Bam, I remember days. <laughs> this is true stories, man. You know, RIP to my mom. But um, one thing about my mom is that the most high used her all the time. There have been times, you know, we may have had some financial trouble back in the days when, in my early days, when I was in my um, 20s, right? When me and my wife were living together. You know, we we're, we're young you know, you, you make a lot of mistakes and um, you might get caught up in a jam and whatnot. And there have been times, man, it was either, you know, you in your early 20s, it was either the rent or groceries. Yeah, it was either rent or groceries. And it's like when we thought we were at the bottom. When we thought it was like, look, we got to pay the rent because if we don't pay the rent, we in trouble. So we would pay the rent. It'd be nothing in the refrigerator, fam. No cap, no jokes. Here, and my mom. Now, we never told her our personal business because, like, I wasn't the type that would like, oh, yeah, you know, we struggling, this, that, that. and that. I didn't like doing that. I didn't want her to be worrying about me because even though 
I got brothers and sisters. My mom always kind of favored me. I don't know. It's like, you know, like how you have a parent, they have their favorites and whatnot, even though it shouldn't be like that. But that's the way we, we do have that. Even in the Bible, you had Joseph and Benjamin, you know, they were Jacob's favorites, you know, but I never really told her certain things because I didn't want her to, to worry. You know what I mean? So we pay the rent. Ain't no food. For, no food, bro. No food. We don't got nothing. My mom knocked the door. Bags of groceries. The Lord said, come through. No cap. No cap. My wife would tell you this. this. These are truths. These are facts. Not only would she give the groceries, but she'll put a few dollars in my hand. And I'll be like, man, how in the world she knew this? She says, oh, the Lord told me to come over here and do X, Y, and Z. These are true stories. These are facts. Many times she did that out of the blue. And I knew it was the most high that was doing it, you know? So that's the same way it be in your life. Your blessing, your time comes in a different way. You know, just know it's not over. When you think the most high is not there, he's there. He's there. He's watching. So, hey, my suggestion for everybody is be thankful. If you don't follow the most high, you don't know what the Bible says, just be thankful. You just be thankful. You get up in the morning, just say thanks for the day, most high. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, thank you for the day. If that's all you know, just say that. That's it. Get it? Get it? Be thankful. That's it. You eat lunch at work. Thank you most high for the lunch. You get it? Just be thankful. If you don't know nothing in the Bible, just do that. Just be thankful. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my health. Thank you that I'm able to walk. Thank you for my limbs. Um, thank you for my sight that I'm able to see. I'm just thankful. Thank you that the road was clear. I was able to drive to work. I'm just thanking you for that. If you can just have that type of spirit, just being thankful to the most high, just for the provisions and the things you have that is sufficient for the day, that will get you through. Because he's going to always be there in your time of trouble. If you're the type that is thankful, practice that. That's the best advice I could give anybody. Even if you don't follow the most high, maybe you have different belief systems or whatever the case is. You might be a Muslim, whatever the case is. Hey, just be thankful and don't complain. You get it? Be thankful. Don't complain. And things are going to happen. You know? So, hey, we're going to get up on out of here. Um, shout out to Revolutionary Loss for the support. Appreciate you. Shout out to Sherelle. I see you in the building. Fam, I got the best moderators in the building, you know. The best moderators on YouTube. Y'all you, didn't know that? I have the best moderators on YouTube. And I'm telling you. Listen. I'm telling you, you know what I mean? With where I'm going, when I get there, most high willing. All of the people that are moderators on this channel, I ain't never forgetting you. Because y'all been there. Y'all been there supporting. Y'all been there encouraging. Y'all been uh, removing the trolls. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Sherelle been very instrumental and encouraging a lot. You know what I mean? A lot of behind the scenes stuff. She been encouragement. Ringo, go do this. You bugging. You better go do that. You better do this. You better do that. You know, ah, I don't want to do that. You, <laughs> you better. All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll go get a patron. All right. 
Ringo, what? You don't got a cash app? What are you doing? I need a cash app? <laughs> you better get a cash app. All of those things, that, that's, that's Sherelle. Listen, back in the day, I wasn't even monetized. Who do you think said, go get monetized? <laughs> That's her. She's the one who said, go do all of those things. I was not doing none of that. I was just doing YouTube just to do YouTube. She was like, nah, nah, you, you bugging. You working. You know what I mean? And so to V-Dub, man, man, that brother know who he is. He know what he has done. Um, that brother have supported this platform so much, so much, man. And that's not to say if you support it and you support it less that you're, you're not important. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just acknowledging people. You know what I mean? Because it's like, man, that man has been diligently supporting the show for a very long time. And I'm not talking about, you know, here and there. I'm talking about major support. So I just want to let y'all know, as I do what I do, when I get to where I got to get to, I'm not forgetting y'all. I'm not forgetting y'all. That's my word. Never going to forget y'all. You'll see. Because that's one of the goals I always had. Now, certain YouTubers, they already reached a level of success where they could take care of their mods. And I know this. I'm not. Listen, there are some YouTubers, right, that have reached a certain level of success that they take care of their people. They do. They just do it in the background. Nobody really knows about it. But they take care of their people. I know, I know they're not selfish like that. They, 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 they're so well off, they could take care of their people. There's moderate, there's uh YouTubers that have reached that level in their success. You know? Never forget where you came from. Because with all the people that support, you know, I appreciate that because that's what keeps me going to do what I do. And um, like I said, to all the brothers, be mindful about the, the initiative with New Breed. I know New Breed, uh, you speak, you speak a lot. You probably wondering, you know, what's going on with Ringo? Trust me, brother, I'm down for the cause. Just give it time. You know what I mean? I know that I want to say that publicly so that you can hear me. You know what I mean? So you can see me say that. I'm with you, brothers. Just, you know what I mean? It is what it is. I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of things behind the scenes, but I'm with you brothers. Just know that, you know, trust and believe that you're going to see just when you least expect it, you won't know. Right. Um, and salute to brothers like Rallo. Rallo is what I call a survivor, a man that the most high been dealing with for years and he keep him afloat no matter what he makes sure that he always have food money shelter he's a traveler he been encouraging the brothers i made a video where i roast rollo one time <laughs> you know what i'm saying um i'm never going to show that video obviously but um there was a time when I had roasted him and um, it's like now today he's flowing with the most high. He's doing his thing. I seen him do a video the other day. He went and bought a microphone. I was like, wow, man went to B&H photo and bought a professional microphone, fam. That's what's up, man.
That man went to the store and bought a professional microphone for his show. Once I saw that, I was like, you're on your way. You're on your way. When you see a man buying a microphone, you already know he's serious about business. You know what I mean? So I hope that, and, and what's crazy about this thing is, and make sure you guys support Floridine Rollo Let's Go because I don't know how his channel got demonetized. I'm still trying to understand what is going on. You know what I mean? So make sure y'all support that brother's channel. Make sure y'all subscribe his, to his channel. You got 700 people in this building. Give Floridine Rollo Let's Go a subscribe, fam. Do that for me, fam. You know what I mean? And salute to Rollo for the support. All right? His channel got demonetized. I don't know why. I don't know how. I think it was a mistake. Um, I have my ideas of what's going on. But um, I, I don't know, man. This is why with social media, it's like one minute things could be good. Next minute things could be bad. You really don't. You really just don't know. This is why as a people, we got to build businesses that are sustainable, that we control and nobody else have total control over how we earn money. You know what I mean? It, it's like I said, YouTube, big business. You can make a lot of money. You know what I mean? But it's it's a good business, but still you got to play by the rules. I mean, as long as you follow in the rules, you good. But it's still, you know what I mean? You want to be totally in, independent, you know? Um, Let me see. Shout out to Kingdom Mindset. Kingdom Mindset for the support. Appreciate you. Did I shout out Angie? I don't know if I did. I just scrolled up and saw another super chat. I think I did. But shout out to Angie again. I don't know if I, if I shouted you out. I don't know if I did. Yo, fam, we've been on nine hours and 10 minutes, bro. Nine hours and 10 minutes, fam. That's amazing. This is crazy, fam. Let me see. Uh... Shout out to, I'm just going to say Sean O. I don't want to say your complete um, name because I don't know. That's your, probably your government. But shout out to Sean O for the support. Right? And shout out to Katina. Katina for the support. And again, those of you that are on the Ringo TV Raw channel, we're simultaneously streaming on the Ringo TV Reactions channel. So on this channel, it's two different, two separate channels, two different visuals. This is the vertical, the other one is horizontal, right? We already done pretty, pretty much did the stream already. We've been here for nine hours. So we already done, we're just kind of giving our final words and whatnot, kind of just chopping it up. I got to get something to eat, you know, got a, a whole day to do a lot of different things. Um, let me see. Okay, so, all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go play my music video. You know how I do. I'm going to go play my music video in a world, and then we're going to come back and wrap up the show. Hold on a second. Let me do this real fast. Let me see. Turn this off. Um, let me see. Okay. Let me mute this. Because that's the video, right? So let me see. Okay. So we already done, did the video stream. So make sure you check out Rollo's channel again. This is a classic video stream that he did here with a lot of the heavy hitters in the space. I think the most high was in this particular stream. Um, there was definitely purpose there. It was a very fruitful um, video. If you listen to it with an open ear, um, even though there was some interruptions, all of it was within reason. Um, the most high was definitely there and, um, make sure y'all listen to, um, each man when they speak, just listen to the whole video from that live show. There's a lot of information in there that you can get about the situation regarding Rufus and Dowell. 
Um, you had Mr. Gonzalez. He came on to speak. You heard his side of the story. There was a lot of stuff that he was sharing. Um, New Breed shared his thoughts. Uh, Mark the Messenger was sharing his thoughts. Um, there was one particular portion of the video um, that it, it made me bust out laughing because um, I guess it was, um, I think it was Mark the Messenger. He was, he just came off, he just took the gloves off and I think he asked, he was asking Rufus something and um, he did one of my numbers. Like, I don't sugarcoat, I just say things straight. You know what I mean? It was funny the way it came off, but I appreciate the realness of him just saying it. And I think um, Rufus responded and gave him an answer and it was done. So I, I like the fact that he asked a question straight. He didn't sugarcoat it. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times we do things and we don't want to offend people. And I get it. But sometimes we have to be real so the other person can respond and we can all know what's going on. Because remember, it's about public perception. If the public think you're down with something, they're going to be looking at you a certain way. So when you are able to answer the questions and clear the air, you clear your name completely and you earn the respect of all the people. Everybody respect you because you answered, you responded and they like, I can't really, I can't judge this man no more. I already done judged him already. I criticized him already. He's still standing. What more could I say? Can't say, I can't say nothing to him no more because he already answered all the questions. So regarding the situation with um, uh, P. Diddy Dow, um, I don't got nothing further to say about um, Rufus on that matter. You already done answered all the questions. We already done hashed out what we had to hash out here. And um, that's that on that. Um, I still got to look at Gonzalez's section of the video. I didn't really focus on his. I was more or less focusing on Rufus. So I got to look at what Gonzalez was saying. I didn't go into full detail. And then I got to find out what happened on those other channels. Because like I said, they ambushed Rufus on the other channel into a debate about polygyny. I already knew that. I knew that. I knew what they were going to do to you as soon as the video started. I didn't catch the beginning. I caught the section. I walked into the stream when you were telling those guys, are y'all going to still ask me questions about polygyny? That's when I came in and I started, I rewinded back a little bit to find out what was, what was the commotion all about. And then I saw that they, they, they ambushed you into a debate, you know? So, um, let me see what's going on here. Let me see who's this. Somebody's ringing the front door and it's not for me. I'm monitoring three locations on this phone. You know, you could do that with a ring cam, right? You can monitor other people's locations to keep, you know, eyes and ears on, you know, what's going on. Just in case they're not home, you can kind of peep game. I don't know if y'all do that, but sometimes you might have a neighbor who um, they might be leaving to go on a vacation and they might say, hey, um, you know, you could watch my house for me. This is the, the system. And they'd kind of leave you with the camera for the front door and whatnot. You're able to see who came to that door and whatnot. You know, I don't know how you is with your neighbors or whatever the case is, but some people, they they do that. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, you said Gonzalez came across as very credible. Uh, Eric definitely was having problems with his wife. But see, all of those things he admitted. All of those things he admitted in videos. That's why I really can't judge. See, here's the thing. If everybody come out and and just come clean, nobody won't be, nobody won't, nobody won't be judging you if you come out and judge yourself. Matter of fact, there's a scripture. There's a scripture in the book that says if you judge yourself, it, I don't know exactly what chapter it is. There's a scripture that talks about if you judge yourself. You won't be judged. Like if you if you literally look at your own walk and be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm a hypocrite. Yep, that's right. Then who's going to call you a hypocrite if you judge yourself? If everybody gathered around to stone you about something and you come out and be like, hey, everybody, I'm guilty. I slept with that guy's wife. 
they're going to all stop with their stones and be like, so you admitting? Yeah, I'm guilty, bro. I did X, Y, and Z. Oh, because we was coming over here to stone you and so you acknowledging, yeah, yeah, I did it. I repent. I, I ended the relationship. I got rid of her. Everybody got their stones in their hands like. <laughs> they can't do nothing now because you judged yourself. Once you judge yourself, nobody ain't going to judge you. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm still cooking, man. It's a nine-hour barbecue, fam. You know how it is. Um, okay, so let me see what we got. All right, so I'm going to play my music video. Let me see if there's anybody else I need to shout out. Um, shout out Quentin for the support. Quentin for the support. Is that Chef, right? That's Chef. I know the name. Shout out to the chef for the support, right? Appreciate you for the support. Um, so, hey, let's go into this video, man. Let me play this music video, and then we're going to come back and pretty much wrap up the show. I always have to play my inner world video, and the reason being is because I know where I am going, and I know one of these days, one of these days, fam, it's going to be a totally different situation and it goes back to this particular music video you don't understand it i understand it i know what i'm dealing with i know what's going on and i just can't wait so hey check out the music video in a world only on the ringo tv reactions if you're on the ringo tv raw channel and you can't see the video you'll only hear the audio right let's go help me please help me help me somebody please help
Nine hours and 24 minutes later, another world record. So, hey, we're going to be back later on. I'm going to go get me something to eat and possibly take a nap. <laughs> so, hey, enjoy your day at work. You're probably on the road already. Maybe you're coming back home. Um, I don't know, but just be thankful and be motivated. And um, that's about it, man. So, hey, peace and blessings to everybody out there on the 9 to 5 grind. You know what I mean? Everybody at Lowe's, Home Depot. You know what I mean? All the home improvement stores. All the beauty salons, the barbershops. All of the malls and department stores. All the cashiers and the supermarkets. The plumbers, the carpenters, the cabbies, the Uber Eat drivers. The doormen, the security guys. The truck drivers, the policemen, the fire department guys. All the brothers and sisters, sisters that work for New York City Housing Authority. Salute. You know what I mean? So look to all the hustle and bustle guys, all the brothers out there on the highways and byways doing what they got to do to survive. You know what I mean? Even the homeless guys that change the bottles, even they hustlers at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So. Can't forget all of the chefs, fam. Shout out to all the chefs, all of the guys and the, and the ladies that's into pastry, all of y'all out there and it's in the restaurants, all the Caribbean restaurants, the Trini restaurants, Jamaican restaurants, the Chinese restaurants, whatever restaurants, Italian restaurants, everybody out there that's into preparing food and dishes for the people. Salute to y'all. Can't forget about y'all. For real, for real. You know what I mean? It is what it is, man. Hey, you can't forget about the restaurants, fam. For real. Man, some jerk chicken, fam. Are you kidding me? Some roti, man. <laughs> man, oh, man. You can't forget about that, man. Man, I'm hungry right now. <laughs> Go to Utica and get some food, man. You know? Going to the Trini, Trini spot. Man, get some good coconut rice and all them thing, them. For real. I feel like going there right now, man. Nah, I'm just kidding. But, uh, hey, let me close out the uh, Ringo TV Raw channel. Salute to everybody here. Appreciate everybody rocking with the show. I feel like I did a concert or something. Feels weird. Like, like I did a whole concert. It's wild, man. It's like a movie. Man. But, hey, again, I appreciate everybody's support, you know, rocking with the work that we do over here. Shout out to Anna. Shout out to Anna for the support. Anna. Shout out to Anna for the support. Again, shout out to everybody on the Ringo TV Raw channel. You know what I'm saying? We're growing the channel. Um, we're going to get the Ringo TV Raw channel to 100K. Um, we're going to do what we got to do. We got to get that YouTube plaque. Um, salute to everybody that been rocking with the show from the beginning. If some of y'all probably, maybe y'all don't go to work today and y'all just like, look, I'm rocking with the show. I don't care because the average viewer duration for this live stream is 32 minutes. That's a long time. I ain't going to lie. 32 minutes to watch a whole show. That means the average viewer watched 32 minutes. That's a long time to keep somebody's attention for 32 minutes. It's a long time. So that's, we're doing good, man. Even though I've been here for nine hours. <laughs> Trust me, there's some people that have been here the whole time. Some of y'all watched, went to sleep, got back up. <laughs> and we still on. You know, so hey, salute to everybody out there, man. Um, on the Ringo TV Raw channel, I'm going to sign out here. And then I'm going to um, log off of the, uh, the Ringo TV reaction channel. So let me turn this one off here again. Salute to everybody on the Ringo TV Raw channel. Appreciate you getting the likes up and whatnot um come on over to the ringo tv raw channel if you want and um let me sign this out over here so y'all take care on the ringo tv raw channel salute to y'all over there
Okay. Yeah, at Chef. Um, I'm reading the comment. You said some nice plantains, for real. Damn, I'm hungry now already. But, uh, okay, guys. Um, on the Ringo TV Raw channel, we're going to sign out here. Um, again, y'all have a blessed day. Um, be thankful. Um, man, uh, I'm literally overwhelmed by the support the people been given, man. You know, when you just don't know what to do, you don't know what to say. You're just like, you're just like, you're just grateful, you know? And it just makes you like, man, here's another one. You never know who is who. You never know. Did you catch that? You never know who is who. You never know what the most high is going to do and who he's going to do that through. You don't know. Be very careful. You don't know who's who. Sometimes, sometimes it causes for you to do something in order for it to trigger the reaction for things to happen. If that makes any sense. Put it like this. Whatever the most high tell you to do, do it. If that makes sense. Whatever the most high tell you to do, do it. Remember in the Bible, the most high would tell a man, hey, all of those people, destroy them. <laughs> I can't do that. Lord, there's kids. What did I say? Everybody must go. But there's elderly. Everybody must go. Now, I ain't telling none of y'all to go do that now. I'm just saying. In the Bible, there were men of the Lord, the most high told, to execute judgment. And it was up to them to do that. Right? So, do what the most high say to do. Because sometimes in you doing that, that is how the blessing come. Through the obedience. Remember? Remember when David got rebuked? Remember? I'm sure the man of God didn't want to do that. He didn't want to do that. But he had to do it. You know what I mean? So, do what the Most High told you to do. Don't leave nothing out of it. Don't do it partial either. Do it completely. There's actually scripture for that too. That if the Most High tell you to do something, don't do a little bit of it. Do it all. I don't know exactly what the verse is, but it's in that book somewhere. You know? Do it. Because that's how the door is going to be opened up for you. So, hey, we're going to get up on out of here, man. I don't want this to go to 10 hours now. <laughs> Not today. Maybe another day. 10 hours, man, they're going to be talking about me on YouTube. Yo, this dude Ringo, man, was streaming for 10 hours, bro. 10 hours. Like, this guy, what kind of energy this man got? This man was sitting there talking for 10 hours. 10 hours, man? I try to tell her, papi. She no listen to me, papi. I try to tell her. You know? Me and mana, I try to tell her. She don't listen to me. I try to tell her. You know? Hey, hey, don't hit me, you know, no. Hey, no me pegue. Sueltame. No me pegue. Repetame. No. Hey, hey, hey. No, hey. De, de, de eso. Vete pa' allá. I try tell her, papi. She don't listen to me. I try tell her. She don't listen. You know, I come to the country, my madre, she tell me in la casa, and she don't listen to me. I try tell her. I try tell her, papi. She don't listen to me. I try tell her. <laughs> Yo. This is some crazy stuff, man. 
I don't know. I got to clip those little clips and I got to put them as shorts, man. I got to do that, man. But dang, nine hours, how am I going to find the clips? How am I going to find the clips in a nine hour video? I try to tell her, papi. She don't listen to me, papi. I try to tell her. Hey, me and Manu, I try to tell him too. He don't listen to me too, papi. I try to tell her. He don't listen to me. You know, I try to tell her. She come in the Superman carro, and I try to tell her. She don't listen to me. She take in my bicicleta, and she ride it in her chancletas. Anyway, y'all, we're going to get on out of here, man, before I start another comedy show or something. And in, the, and in the next minute, it end up going to 10 hours, man. Let me just let me just bail out, man, before it end up going to 10 hours, man. I don't want to do that, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For real. Some of y'all was watching the beginning of the show. Y'all went to sleep, got up to go to work, and I'm still on. Y'all like, what? What you talking about, Willie? This is crazy. Ringo's still on? You, What? This is wild, man. But, hey, it is what it is, man. So, hey, y'all take care. We're going to get up on out of here. Ringo TV, reactions. Salute everybody in the chat, all the mods. Sherelle, Tracy, Sean the Navigator, V-Dub Man, Show Shao, Rebel for Almighty. You know what I mean? Salute to all the mods in the building. So, y'all take care. It is what it is. Right? All right. Peace and blessings to the mods in the chat. Ringo TV reactions. The number one reactionary channel on YouTube. Ringo TV, number one in these YouTube streets. Nine hours, live streams, cooking. You already done know what it is. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next stream. We out of here. Y'all take care. Peace and blessings to the mods in the chat. We out. We out. If you like our content, consider supporting via Cash App at dollar sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on Patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at paypal.me slash RingoTVRaw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at RingoTVRaw. This is Ringo TV Reaction. The only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth 100% raw and uncut. I'm out. Peace.